PKA 614 guest Tucker Taylor. This episode of PKA brought to you by BetterHelp, Wonky Weeds, Death by Gummy Bears, and of course, Lock and Load, the premium cum pill that everyone should be taking if you're not a bitch. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good to be back. <laughs> I I am in a woody tier hotel and <laughs> it is you know, it really it makes me respect Woody's toughness, his mental <laughs> toughness more. Mm-hmm. Because here I'm I'm out of town, as you can probably surmise, Tucker. And that hotel is I was he's like a, a David Goggins type character to <laughs> Yes, yes. I was uh, I'm on a trip with my wife's family and all they have a lot of she has a lot of siblings all their significant others like 14 people we're in this big mountain place up in gatlinburg hiking whitewater raft and a bunch of outdoorsy stuff and the whole week i'm like planning around doing the show and i'm like trying to influence people to be like and i had the i had the plan set where it was supposed to be everyone was gonna fucking leave tonight for almost all of it. And I'd been encouraging like, this can be everybody's like leave night. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. So I can like stay and do the show. And then it was like this morning, like late morning, early afternoon, my wife's like, yeah, no one is doing that anymore, but I'm sure no one would mind you just like doing the show there. And I'm like, so not only am I, do I have 13 people like on how many times mic, did you hit her? potentially, but I'm also going to be that dickhead, like loudly announcing one portion of an inappropriate conversation to people. Like, it's not just my vacation. That's mind numbing. That would be so rude of me. And so my wife's like, we'll find you a place. We'll find you a place. So we we're like, all right, I bet there's a hotel real close. There wasn't. And so <laughs> we find a hotel, the closest one. I drive 45 minutes into, into Gatlinburg. I get here. It's a fifty-five dollar a night hotel, and I, I get in. I gotta give you the name of that place because it looks nice to me. Yeah, I, I was telling, I was telling fifty-seven. I think it was. I was telling Kyle that I'm pretty sure all of the labels and placards here were surplus from the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers because all the room cards, all the room numbers, they've all got a Pittsburgh Steelers logo on it. I don't. There's, we're in Tennessee. So I don't know why that would be. But the first thing I noticed when I got here. <laughs> oh, was, my God. <laughs> not that bad. Not that bad. But the first oh. thing I noticed when I got here is I'm like, all right, desk. It's really janky. It's really happy. And there's no outlets near it. And so I have to unplug the refrigerator to find a working outlet to plug my laptop in. Hotel. in. There are no working outlets. <laughs> to have my phone charging, I have to have it in the bathroom. I had to lean the Bible up underneath where my plug is in the outlet so that it wouldn't fall out like that. This is a shithole. There's, there's red stains that, on the Taylor? floorboards. <laughs> it's gross. It's gr- yeah. There's so much shit. There. I guarantee there's bud- bed bugs. Zero, it's a hooker motel. Why. It's Dude, a hooker motel. It has to be. I, I haven't told you guys this. I have a related story. I, maybe 10 days ago, something like that. I wanted the new motorcycle. I told you guys I was I put a down payment on a new bike, but you buy so many motorcycles that I've kind of lost track. It's like that's fair. That's <laughs> fair. I don't expect you to keep up, but I was in a bad mood, so I figured I'll just buy a new bike. And yeah. um they got a call a little while later and they're like, Woody, that bike we said was coming in mid-September. It's not. We're looking at a ship date of end of November from Japan. And I'm like, Well, it gets cold here, so you're kind of telling me I'm gonna get this bike next spring. Not cool. Well, this bike is hard to find. There's a reason it wasn't in stock here. It's not in stock anywhere. So I just hit the internet and I start looking everywhere. I find one in the glorious town of Ames, Iowa. Mm. So I'm like, Iowa? Fuck it. Count me in. So I buy a plane ticket. I grab my helmet and I fly out to Iowa. And uh, now I'm on a you know two or three day ride back. Like this is how the adventure begins. We go there, we buy a motorcycle, and we bring it home. In Cincinnati, I had or in Iowa City, I had a uh, I didn't have like my first hotel figured out, and I'm tired. You know, it's been a long day between the flight and the buying of the motorcycle. You know what it's like to buy a vehicle with all the freaking paperwork and everything. I eventually arrive at this hotel, and it seems nice, but not outlandishly nice. And they say six hundred and ninety nine dollars. And I'm like, that's a lot to me. I was like, and I just said, can you do better? Like, that just seems expensive. Like, can you do better than that? And she's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can do $3.99. What? And I'm like, <laughs> holy shit. 
So I said, look, I, I acknowledge that that's better, but that's still a lot for a room, $399. And I just spent like $12,000. So. <laughs> it was like 30. And uh What did you buy? <laughs> so, what he's haggling over there, $699. I don't have $500. Uh, yeah. $350. What are you talking to, 99? So, so, so uh um and i had, i just complimented the guy the the woman's tattoo she had this like uh ah. a saying like you know it was something about being beautiful on her collarbone that her grandmother had <laughs> had told her when she was a kid and it was in her grandmother's handwriting and i just genuinely liked the tattoo i'm like that is beautiful i like that so anyway now after this after i've established my connection i'm like what, what? what can we do on the price and so she like calls up her manager and she's like i got this guy here and he seems like he'll be no trouble like what's the best <laughs> price we could do a hundred and ninety nine dollars down from 6.99 art well, of the deal baby well, art of the my, deal <laughs> where woody where were you staying that yeah. had that flexible pricing and also like eight hundred dollars is like prime ho like the nicest hotel that you should mm -hmm. probably ever be like like a four -star. i've been yeah. to cincinnati Okay. Yeah, there ain't <laughs> shit in there. This was Iowa City. I know I said Cincinnati, but I got the the place. Iowa City. Oh, Iowa, City ooh, la, la, I, Iowa City Hotel. I could, could say that. Look it up, but we'd ruin the flow of the uh, of the show. But yeah, that, all these prices. Oh, this is all true. Yeah, and uh, the hotel well, was nice and had a restaurant on the on the roof. If you guys want to like, if that helps you find which one it was in Iowa City. But uh, yeah, it was cool, and I was proud of myself for for knocking down the. Price. Um. Yeah. Yeah. L l like. Good for you. I think. Now let me ask you this, because because in my, I don't know what the place looks like. So like I was expecting a hundred dollar a night hotel, like you're yeah like, a step above the Holiday Inn maybe, um but 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 like were you shocked to hear six hundred or were you like I knew it was gonna be six ninety nine? No, I was. I, I thought it was gonna come in at like three eighty or something. The and it's one room nice. or two. Now Woody, I can't even find one There's that one has nice room. I can't even find one that is more than a hundred and eighty dollars on in there. Iowa City. <laughs> yeah. Like I like the the casino and a is scam two hundred. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll recognize the name. All the way down to yeah, because like I, I like I mean I was just curious. I was like that's so crazy. Yeah, yeah that's an expensive hotel room. That's that's crazy. Um, I know. I think the most expensive one I ever bought. We got that that suite one time in uh, in Austin. They did come down crazy on the price of that. Come to think of it, from like five thousand to like I don't know two thousand five hundred or something still exorbitant and absurd but we, we wanted to stay in this crazy suite and, and it's fucking cool but anyway there was another time when how much did they come down on the, oh it was during one of those la trips it was like probably e3 and there were no hel hotel rooms because it's like during e3 yeah and i want to have sex with a girl but i'm mm. sharing a hotel room with friends and so i'm like with this girl in her car in LA looking for a room to fuck in, <laughs> driving <laughs> around. And we ended up at like I, I was like, we'll find a holiday and of course we will. Let's drive 20 minutes. And we ended up seeing like an LAPD like scary crime scene type situation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, take us back to the fancy part of town. I'll get the expensive one. And I think I spent <laughs> maybe seven hundred dollars or something. <laughs> Must but, have been good pussy. It was like a yeah, sure. But I mean, you know, it was about the experience too. You're having a good time. It was but, about the experience, yeah. <laughs> but at that late in that case, I want to say it was like a corner suite. Like we had like a corner of the building. Like it wasn't so, that that's crazy. I don't know. Dude, in this room, I, someone stole the things that you use to screw on the top of lampshades. <laughs> Why? What do they like, do what's with the them? point? They're gone. I had to Wait. put all the lampshade tops back on. I, I the first thing I did when I got here, I'm like, I need to take a pre-show shit. Yeah. I go to sit on the toilet and I get Whoa. a rock back. An act the, the toilet is barely moored to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I go to the phone here because I'm like, you know, they took my card for incidentals. I don't want them thinking like I destroyed the toilet, like and because it was already rocking when they you know sit on it. Toilet. And then I go to call, the phone is disconnected. No, you're getting, there's not you're a connected. All right, that's here. a new one. I've never seen the phone disconnected. It's plugged in, but you've lifted up. There's no dial tone. That's there's no worse. buttons. It's not on. That's even worse. Is um, it not? Is it not plugged into the wall outlet? I barely had enough toilet paper here to wipe. I didn't look before I started. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. I didn't have to duck walk back. Oh, I, I couldn't go to the actual check-in place. I Wait. go to the actual check-in place here, and it says go to a different hotel. 
So I had to drive to a different hotel <laughs> nearby to check in. And I'm like, I'm trying to check in for the fucking Pittsburgh Steelers in or whatever <laughs> the fuck. And they're like, yeah, you're in the right place. And I'm like, well, don't be pissed about that. Like, Dude, yeah, there's, I hate that. I, it, ridiculous. I stay in some shitty places, but I do expect someone to be working in the office. That's mm-hmm. kind of a hotel thing. I just, when I get there, there should be someone nearby. When they're like, call my cell and I'll get up and come in. It's no problem. It's like, you make me feel bad. I thought you'd be oh, working. I've never gotten that before. Neither have oh. I. Where are you mm-hmm. staying? So oh, usually... yeah, the shittiest motels where the door leads directly to your room. Oftentimes, yeah, if you get there yeah, at yeah. night, there's no one working there. No, but okay, there is I've someone on call. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, like, I've gone to hotels plenty of times. It's an interesting job. And I often, because I, I, I've often had this problem, not to sound like too much of a sleaze, but where like I want to go have sex with someone, but I've got people at my house that I don't want to like wake up and mm-hmm. weird out. Like it, it happened for. When we lived in that lake house, I there was like not an, in, enough privacy. So like mm-hmm. Kitty's in the basement and I'm up in a loft, but like there's nothing but air if you like drew a line between us. There's no doors because she's got a fucking spiral staircase. So I'm fucking chicks in hotels all the time for years. <laughs> and uh, so like sometimes you you roll up there at midnight, 1 a.m. and you have to like bang on the the like slidey door. And then some some guy comes out like sleepy eyed out of the back. And I'm like, dude, you you sleep back there? It's like, yeah, man, catching some Z's. And I can smell the weed. So I, I know what kind of job this is. I, I, I usually have a little chat with those people when I roll in there late at night for whatever oh. reason. And it's Dude, all I was, I was asking just for like basic tips. Like when I was like checking in, I'm like, so I may not be staying here tonight. Uh, what do I, is there a drop box for the keys? Is there something like I should do? And one guy said, yes. And the other guy said, yeah, but you don't have to worry about it. And I was like, all right, well. <laughs> is it a well, key card? Just, just Yeah, it's a key card. Oh, and so I it's like, never do anything. Why, if it's- why would there be a sign that says you have to return your keys or you get charged $10 if it's a key card? If I'm in a good mood, I leave the key card in the room when I walk out. That, that I take them with me that. because if, you, if you're ever locked out of your house and it's not a deadbolt, they work great. You don't you don't fuck up a credit card for like breaking into your own house. Ah, so I keep one of those in my, in my in my in my wallet. Yeah, they're cheap. Nice. I keep one. I, in I have just I in like case I ruined a debit pool. card one time. <laughs> I was locked out. I was locked yeah. out of my house one time, and I I think I had to shit too. And I wasn't alone. Like there's people behind me. Like can we go inside now? And it's like and I'm just like ruining my debit card breaking into the house. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen the pool in uh, Leaving Las Vegas? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a dirtier, shittier version of that. Okay, with no water in it. That happens a lot. Yeah, they don't. I I stayed at a place. Remember a while back, I sent you that picture of the microwave in my motel, and it had Mm -hmm. like a turn knob to set the timer, and it was Mm -hmm. that old plastic that yellows. Yeah. Speaking of old plastic that yellows, Putin had this big speech where he's trying to like he's mobilizing the fucking troops. Right, he's calling up all the active and retired personnel. He wants like a quarter million men to take over the Ukrainians. Meanwhile, I've heard there's people. I saw an accountant get drafted. He's like, "This is my paperwork. My name is Alexei Kumanov, and I'm a fucking accountant. I've never <laughs> like, seen a gun before." Yemen. And they're an sending me to the Dunbass. Kyle, <laughs> I don't think Jesus. you understand. You're thinking attorney. These are badasses. These seats, the certified <laughs> public accountant field. I, I'm a little offended. You just said that. <laughs> <laughs> he has no military experience. Is what I mean. He's uh, like Call of Duty. The they number. took it, anybody it who has Counter-Strike better. installed. <laughs> this guy can work an adding machine. Is he a... Is the, is, aren't like... Uh, like they're intentionally trying to draft like anti-war people, like people who speak out against the war they're trying to draft up? I think they really lock those people up, but they are recruiting... No, Putin prison. said that. All right, Putin so I said saw... that anyone who's protesting the war will get conscripted to serve in the war. In the war. I thought oh, I heard something like that. Yeah. They're that also recruiting for prisons. Up. Uh, that is... I'm I'm on both sides of that. On one hand, it's my – look, I'm not a subject matter expert. But if you recruit from prisons, you probably get tough guys. I'm guessing, right? You know, like just a tougher than the general population. Sure. Most general people think if they go into prison, they won't be the toughest guy there. We want the toughest military, though. We want the best organized, right? (laughs) That's the other thing. I've heard they're more likely to desert and they're more likely to steal. You mean to tell me that if you're going to get somebody who's in – let me tell you about one of the guys that they that, that's confirmed been like released from prison. They put okay. his mugshot up. In his mugshot, he's given like a double thumbs up. And they're like, this is Kukulov Mumilov. And <laughs> he's the cannibal of St. Petersburg. <laughs> he ate four people and he was caught 
eating the victims of a car accident he happened upon with with a with a with a companion like him and a buddy came upon a car accident and started consuming people so that's I'm how they finally caught crime. the cannibal of saint petersburg victimless and they're crime. sending him to ukraine with a rifle <laughs> I, I, do I don't like think that, that guy's going to be a net positive yeah. to the people around him i think he's going to cause problems i don't <laughs> if i'm if i am that accountant and i get conscripted into war I'm going to like hope that it's a bunch of other accountants over that guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't yeah, want the, the butcher of kill of Yev, like, yeah, no, not watching at all. your back. No, but in Putin's speech, like, if you look behind him, he's got those old phones that have turned yellow, that old plastic. And, and I, I, I was like, I got to read Reddit comments. I bet they know. And a lot of people were under the impression that because those were older school phones, that they couldn't be hacked from afar. The way that like digital mm. devices could. Oh, but then somebody landline. was like, "Nope, that's a VoIP." F oh, thank you. Oh, I thought you were gonna show the phones. But uh, mm. he's got three phones behind him, and they all look like they look like the phones from early two thousands that like businesses would have. They've got like the the one with the little digital screen that flips up mm. and all the multi lines. Oh, but then he's got two phone. of those plastic, ugly yellow phones. It's like, come on, we posed this scene we're in, right? We picked that wallpaper out, this desk. We, we fucking got his makeup looking just right. And we left those phones in the shot. That's those are ugly phones. That's your grandma's yeah. phone. That's grandpa's phone who used to run a hardware store. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> inspired by Putin. Every time Putin speaks, I feel like he's annoyed. He looks like he's about to fart. He he, I get the vibe that he's annoyed that he has to be doing this. Like when Zelensky mm. speaks... It's inspiring. And he talks not about himself, but about his country and the heroism and the bravery and all this like inspiring shit that he's trying to rally around. Putin is like, we're doing this. Fuck you. I'm like, enough of this. I'm tired. Always. It's Looks always like he's, he's gained some weight. If that's a very he's looking picture. a little puffy. He's getting a little puffy in the face. He's getting a little, a little steroid weight. puff. Yeah. yeah. He's like, this you can always sure see, you can see world leaders gain <laughs> weight when it gets bad for them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, you think he's think, see I now? Think Jericho he's thinks he's on, on. like oh, I was thinking he steroids. Was on, yeah. Taylor yeah, thinks he's on uh, stress. stress eating. I, I bet he's stress eating. <laughs> I it's think just it's like it's steroids. both of our personal biases. I'm like definitely <laughs> yeah, stress yeah. eating. <laughs> like, someone's projecting. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a telltale sign. He's you know, I bet who can't put the cheese nips down. That's the real problem, not the Dunbass. Just throwing darts at the board here, but maybe uh, Big ZD. <laughs> the Dunbass isn't the it's only okay, ass you got to write. <laughs> My blood pressure's not great either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, <laughs> he appears to be losing that war. Um, I, I saw uh, someone break down like like what's been happening over the last week or ten days, and I guess there came a time when the Russians had to choose a place to keep and a place to give up, and the Ukrainians moved to the place they gave up, and now the Russians are in danger of being encircled in the south. Mm. Like it, it's it's looking like a real war now, oh. um, where the you now the Ukrainians have pushed back a little bit, and then winter's coming, right? So they don't know what kind of winter it's going to be, though. It could be like a sloggy slush fest that would yeah. favor the Ukrainians, or it could be like, or it could be ice cold, which I don't I, know I who may that have watched favors. The same video that that I, I, I watched I, a, I watched bunch, a yeah. YouTube video that were that had the same information that you're just giving, so I heard that. Mm -hmm. One thing I didn't hear though was about the encircling. I heard the opposite that. Russia couldn't hold all these fronts because they were too stretched out. And as Ukraine takes their space, they're naturally not stretched out anymore. More, I don't yeah. know dick about war. I saw the exact but, same video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it seemed to make sense to me. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I watch it from, from Reddit, so it's it's just entertainment, I suppose. But I can't imagine having to fucking live there. Um, like, like Especially if you're not some quasi-neo-patriot. You're just Jimmy the Baker. And your mm. wife's pregnant, and you're you're not going to go fight in a war and leave your pregnant wife. You're gonna stay right here and make sure she, she's safe. But every now and then a fucking rocket hits hits the street, or like you, you know, like like the bakery's closing, like because mm -hmm. like like I don't know, like how do you live your normal life? That would be you, so you crazy. Can't. The you're pandemic's the closest. The pandemic CNN was the closest guy. first world has come to like, uh, you know, dealing with shit like that, or like this, our version of the first world. This is CNN guy. Fahid Zakar. How close am I? Can anyone do better? I don't know. I've never heard no. of those words. No idea. Okay. You probably recognize his face. And uh, he, he's a pretty sober, smart, white guy, right? Guy at CNN. No. <laughs> and um, anyway, he went to Kiev and he was talking about his experience there. And he's like, 
Okay, first of all, getting there was a nightmare. It's not a normal fly-in. They had to like go to Poland or whatever. But he's like, once you're there, on the surface, it seems kind of normal. The place isn't war-torn. And he's showing like all the candies and goods you can buy at the store. Like these people almost seem determined to live life normally in Kiev. But he's like, right under the surface, there's a kind of stress, a worry, a concern. There are soldiers out and about that you wouldn't normally have just walking the streets. And so that to me is the living experience that I'll just trust CNN. I'm, it's always a good policy <clears throat> tale will back me up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but yeah, so I guess it's not wildly different in Kiev anyway than it is normally. I'm still service. willing to take uh, any bets on the length of the war. I think we've still got mm. 12 more months of war going. Um, I don't count yeah. at an. I, there might be a ceasefire along the way, but like not a lengthy one. So I don't count that as a loss. The war won't it won't be over for at least another year. They'll get they'll they they, they, they both sides want to see how winter goes, right? <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, that it's, thing uh, about I, what did I, I heard two things. If winter's cold, it makes it easier for the troops to move back and forth. So mm. Ukraine or Russia might make more moves if the ground is nice and frozen. If the ground is soggy, then you can expect the lines not to move a lot. But it's to Ukraine's advantage in that Germany has like doesn't need the same heating problems that it wouldn't have the same heating problems that otherwise would if winter was warmer. Ah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that, that was a, a part of it as well. The the yeah. the the oil. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really cool to watch this thing go down. It's like a, it's like the plot from a movie or something. How long will it be until there's a movie about this? And will they have Michael B. Jordan play Zelensky? Asking the real questions. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Michael B. Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> he's, the think... black, he's that young black guy who, who's a really good actor. Who's the guy that played Andy Apollo Putin. Creed? That was um, Michael B. Jordan, right? Oh, okay, yeah, he'd be perfect for Zelensky. I don't see why you choose yeah, well, else. Well, yeah, he, the young Smith. Kid, yeah. Let's, recu let's recuperate. Will Smith. <laughs> let's bring his career back. <laughs> I'm the only one that was on Will Smith's side. I, I don't... Dude, Will Smith... I'm on I an island get... by myself. There. <laughs> yeah, you and Will are there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not his wife, just Will and I. <laughs> she threw him under the bus, the bitch. Oh, God. She, uh, it's worse than that. It's like, like when you get into like the nitty gritty of that stuff, it's it's real embarrassing. Like, Jesus Christ, Will. Like, you, you need to tell us your side of the story. I need one of those Terry Balt Barbara Walters interviews where he, where he explains himself to me because because I can't figure that guy out anymore. I want my friend T-Mart to lend Will Smith a golden retriever. It's a lab. <laughs> Help him make his was apology video. Yeah, it was a gold. Okay. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> it's like, I am sad. No, what he just, he's signing. You don't want to like, make oh, Mr. Bigglesworth this? sad, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I want to have Trevor back on the show. Oh, I really like was, Trevor. That was like uh, the South Park where he's like, the, the, Rubbing his nipples like we're sorry. <laughs> oh, we have one. your CSGO money. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, they're like adding onto the house in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I think that dog passed, which is really sad. I, but I, I think I saw. I totally about forgot that. about that. I, I remember when that like drama was going down and everything, like Trevor made a video. And I'm pretty sure Syndicate was just like, he was just like, new video with the zombie train today. And it's like, oh, that, that may have been the right move. Just forge ahead. I like, remember this really well. Trevor was taking it on the chin pretty hard. And Syndicate, I think, was already on vacation. So he didn't see any reason to like insert himself in the line of fire. He just continued to enjoy his vacation, if, if I recall correctly. Oh, Kyle's having tech issues, I guess. But... um. Yeah, so in the hindsight, and I, I feel like Trevor's famous for that controversy, and people forgot Syndicate was even a part of it. Uh, people forget that. I think pe that's definitely like memed, right? To the mm -hmm. high hell is that photo, but um, I definitely think people tie both of them to it. People definitely okay. forget the other, like the there the amount of actual like um, I'll call them like run less than safely Counter Strike gambling sites, among other things, that were rampant in the streaming world is insane. Like there are so mm. many streamers, both current and past that did all mm. of that. And then some, so it's just like the internet's got a short mind, right. Or a short memory. And so if you, it is literally the truth about being canceled is you can't get canceled. If you just don't let it happen. So like, if you just 
don't do it, then like it's okay. Like that's eventually people will forget, move on, whatever. Like there is a time limit to that. So I I I mostly believe you. I'm not sure who's the red pill guy who just got banned off everything. Oh, Andrew Tate. I'm sorry. There's a different. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying genuinely awful people. I just mean like. Uh, I just mean, like, for the most part, you can really survive anything that the internet throws at you if you just don't care. In but it's hard sense, not to care. A yeah. lot of people self-cancel. They do yeah. it all the time. I, I on the on the highest levels, like Al Franken. This is a long time ago, oh. but he like gave up his Senate seat because mm-hmm. he touched a f- woman's flak jacket boob. Hover. Or, ho- oh, he didn't even touch. He might he have just... touched a little. We've actually went back and forth on this whether he touched or hovered. Okay. And uh, and the age of the photo, it was just a bad look for a senator to like have have an unconscious woman, and then you're like mock groping her at best. Hundred yeah. percent agreed. <laughs> Having for said a that, photo op. If he know? was just like, like shit. look, Don't, I get like, it. Okay, do it, but no pics. <laughs> <That'd> <laughs> he been okay. was like, at the time I was a comedian, I was a bit of a dumbass. I apologize. Let's move on. And if he didn't self cancel, he'd probably still be a senator. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I agree. you're right. I agree. Yeah, it's bad luck. Again, I'm not 100% sure if he's touching. I'm not either. And that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I know he I know he shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I, yeah, there's, there's one thing I'm certain on. This isn't a good look. So yeah, see, this is something look, he should be doing with you, no pictures just for the your, love of the game. If you there's, put if any of us put a loved one in that like black jacket, we're all immediately upset. Yes. Also, <laughs> the thing I didn't realize at first when this happened, that's kind of a political opponent. She is a conservative reporter ah. that has been no friend of Al Franken's. And now that she's in a vulnerable position, he's kind of mocking her. And you know what would have been and okay? That makes it more evil to me. You know what would have been okay? If he did this instead, like, I'm going to strangle you. That's okay. <laughs> if he raises his hands up five, six inches and rotates them outward like he's going to strangle her, nobody cares. It's kind of like a why I ought to. What if like, he did one of these? Huh? That's okay too. <laughs> oh, he could have been like, he could have, he could have like, mo- like, like photoshopped a black eye and like posed like he was boxing. He'd what I'm hearing out. is you're okay yeah, with violence, but not acts of love. You see, the yes. world is, the world is, is, is much more okay with like some silliness uh, as far as, vi- I mean, look, we, we had the three stooges where these guys would goof around and make violence funny, but we never had the rape version of the three stooges where they just yuck, 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 and like fuck someone forcibly. Like, that never happened. There's a big difference. Rapey. That does get rid of the levity of it. Yeah. 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 Like, whoop, 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 as he's like grabbing a woman's breast and she's not uh-huh. enjoying it. It's like, yeah. come on, like, like curly, she's trying to get upsetting. away. She's trying to get away, but she's. She's sp- she's like Jesus. spinning her feet yeah. in oil as she tries to escape. She's and slipping in oil. Pulling it back on yeah. the leaf. Actually, maybe this is a good idea. Yeah. There's yeah. a semi-interesting piece of Trump news. So Trump was accused of sexual assault of some sort. I think he like forcefully pushed on a woman and kissed her Allegedly. or something. Moved Allegedly, on, move, whatever. Moved on her. Moved on her. I forget her name. I wish I could get it right. Anyway, he's the one that she that She's the one where he famously said, really, me, her? She's not my type, right? That was his mm. defense, that that this woman's not his, his type. Mm. Having said that, she totally was. At the time, she was young, pretty, and blonde. Nice. But um, So she's not anymore. But at the time, this is a long time ago. And the statute of limitations, something happened in New York that enables her to sue him for this sexual assault from a long the statute time of limitations. ago. That's yeah. What so now she's suing Trump mm. personally. And he's going to be deposed about it, I, th- mm-hmm. I think. But if- and he's going to. By the way, she has the physical evidence. I don't know what it is. Is it come on a dress or something? Oh, Trump could provide a DNA test and clear his name, but he hasn't for years now. She's been doing this. She dogged him through his whole presidency. She mm-hmm. dogged him through his campaign, the first one. Best not um, to give those things any credence at all. But I see. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I think he knows what's on the dress. So. Is it a dress thing? Or I guess we don't know. Maybe she's got a it condom. A it's like it's like yeah. Heinz ketchup that has his spit mixed in it. He's like, I <laughs> this was you. his KFC family yeah, bucket. Literally. <laughs> I just think it's <laughs> interesting. He pissed on her. Yeah. Right? And it's just like, I hope it's pee. pee. So I hope so it's good. pee more than anything. Dude, I hope I it's really like hope a, it's a pee. fork from a oh, KFC because he's the only person who's ever used a fork with KFC. Not even a spork. It's like, where did you even get this from the back? Carol said he knocked her head 
head against a wall, pulled down her tights, and briefly penetrated her before she swiftly pushed him off and ran out of the store. That's worse than my memory had. What a did store? he fuck her? Like a woodpecker? Like, like he was just on her that fast? Like, uh, briefly <laughs> penetrated. I, I got the impression she, he didn't finish from reading that. But I, Well, you never don't. She don't, makes it don't sound ever. like he like, like l- attacked her cock first. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> look, I, um, maybe he did. I don't fucking know Donald Trump. But uh, I, I it seems like politicians in, in particular get uh, uh, accused of this stuff a lot. And there's a lot of money to be made on both sides of it, like the accusation and books and all that stuff. So mm-hmm. I hope he it does get deposed, though, because anytime he ha- he gets forced to speak, it's fun. And yes. uh, I hope he gets cleared of it, though, because I have a lot of money riding on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love I mean, that you just the first doubled down. president. Do we have a bet? What's our bet? Ah, who, who can say? Which one? I feel like every time I'm on here, there's a new one. Kyle either said he would be president again or he would I be the, the competitor. So I, I don't, dude, I'm more, I saw a poll that got me all excited. They're like, Trump dropped five more points in public approval or whatever, some rating. And I'm like, dude, that's a significant drop, et cetera. But it wasn't like he was at like 35%. And DeSantis, his second best, was at 19. Like, yeah. He's still nearly oh, double. Exactly I don't think, yeah. I don't think, yeah. DeSantis is like everything Trump is, but like wetter, like a more, like a shitty, somehow less charismatic and shittier version. Like, I, huh. I don't know. Maybe I don't, maybe I don't, I don't pay attention too much to, to DeSantis, but like, at least I could conceptualize how like my dad would get into Trump in general, right? Versus like DeSantis, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, DeSantis isn't even funny. Yeah, I he's, really he's not funny. <laughs> he's not, not at all. I, I no time. Like, I like I like that they're they're flying and bussing those migrants up north though. That's really funny to me. Um, I I, I like it a lot. I saw that's that, the other guy though, right? That's both not, of them. That's Rick Scott uh, and DeSantis and the governor of New Mexico, I believe, or Arizona. I don't know which. I, get I, I know up. how the. So here's what happened: Governor Abbott from Texas had these migrants. Oh, that's who it is. DeSanta yeah. sent a Venezuelan to Texas to do what's called bird dogging, which is to say, hello, my fellow countrymen. Why don't you get on this plane? I have a better life for you. And he tricked 50 people into getting in a plane where they took them to Florida. And then they tricked them again, saying, we're going to take you to Boston, where they had the facilities, the jobs, et cetera. We're lining you up. By the way, these people are in Texas legally. They're not illegal ignorance. That's still in question. Okay, I've been told that they're legally. Look, I, I'm only as good as my you sports. Have. <laughs> but apparently they're <laughs> asylum seekers. So their status is they're currently legal, but they might get kicked out later if asylum's not granted. But they're currently legal. So they take these... They're on probation. Pro- they're fine. I'll accept, yeah, I can, I can line up with that. <laughs> but they're not like on line to get deported or anything. Like they're just seeking asylum and they're there legally and they're going they're to... They're at the, the place legal- where it happens. They just haven't gotten in line yet. They're They're... <laughs> They're there. They've seeked asylum. They're going for their stuff. They're not like it's not like they snuck in and got jobs and living under the radar. That's not what's up. They're there legally trying to hopefully the process works for them. All right. So anyway, they take them from Texas. They put them in Florida. They take them from Florida. They tell them that they're taking them to Boston, but they don't. Instead, they fly them to Martha's Vineyard, which is a net positive in my head. Like, I think that's a better place to end up. You know, it's very nice. That's a better place to live. live. Yeah. Better. Like, you know, huh? The rich people in Martha's Vineyard got that turned around in no time. They they're were like, like, "We love immigrants. We love them." I'm told they like deported all like, in Martha's Vineyard, and they're like, "Bring in the military and get them out of Martha's Vineyard." No, I thought that was like, I thought that was the Republican uh, uh, governor or whatever. But like, I just no, think we it's... wanted this for border towns, not our <laughs> multi-million dollar mansion neighborhood. Yeah, it depends who you listen to. Like the the people. More. The left is like, look, they greeted them with open arms. They gave them food. They gave them shelter. They gave them the supplies they needed. And then they moved them to a town, which I think was Boston, military still in base, Massachusetts. At first. Say that again? It was a military base at first. They like housed yeah, them. They had in, the National Guard. Like, remote. They like they got them the fuck out of there. Well, they did get them out. But the left tells the story as, then we moved them to a place that was more able to accommodate them instead of this small island with 15,000 people on it. This yeah. isn't prepared to receive 50 immigrants. Cool, cool. The right is like... Oh, they you know they're these hypocrites. Immediately deported them to somewhere else in the same state. I mean, I like I I, I said on PKN, I thought the whole like shipping people around was performative and, and embarrassing and stupid. Mm-hmm. But like 
No, like that that point seems salient to me where a bunch of rich people in Martha's Vineyard who don't actually really connect with the outside world are like, yeah, bring in more people, more people, more people. And then they end up in their neighborhood and immediately, literally the military, the National Guard is called in to remove them. So, yeah, that they're right about that. Like that is hypocritical. Like yeah, a border town with working class people is better equipped and has more resources to support these people than Martha's Vineyard. Like, come See, on. There's not a politician for us, though. See, what I want is a Florida governor who ships illegals to the north, but via high speed rail. Okay. Ah, <laughs> boy, <laughs> high speed rail. That's, I, why that's, how, that's a, how Japan would do it. God that's how it. that's how the Germans would have done it. It wouldn't have costed fifty million dollars or however twelve million dollars or however okay. much it cost. So the twelve so, so million I was baffled I by that number. Put that's him on a the gray fund. Hat. That's the fund of money he has to keep doing this. I don't know <laughs> yeah. what it cost to send fifty or eighty or whatever he sent. Or he, I do. He sent, but that's like a drop in the bucket compared to his twelve million dollar like illegal shooting business. Mm-hmm. He and spends by shooting, something I mean, like, like twelve thousand dollars a person to ship them up there. An outrageous yeah. amount, but mm-hmm. nothing like the twelve million that is the whole fund. Yeah, he can send a thousand at that rate. Yeah, well, yes, you well, can send a thousand people to Martha's Vineyard with the money he has set aside for this. Population's only fifteen hundred. So DeSantis is taking. It could be sixteen. <laughs> it's actually fifteen thousand. Um, but we'll arm them. <laughs> there's no guns uh, up there oh, oh oh so desantis is being sued personally for like uh, human trafficking well apparently it's a it's a not clever idea to ship illegal immigrants to like lawyer island we have a bunch of virtue signaling attorneys in martha's vineyard now who are defending these poor people pro bono i'm sure I, 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 what if they charge I poor venezuelans all right what do you guys got <laughs> <laughs> what are you, what are Mr. Goldstein got? doesn't work for pennies. Give me those teeth. <laughs> like, 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 it's a vineyard. It's like a piece guys. of string. Yeah, it is parts. a vineyard. <laughs> Get to this work. Is, these grapes aren't going to pick themselves. Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I still think it's funny. I, you know, I don't care that he gets sued. Uh, you know, what, what, it's not like they're going to lock him up or something. He's going to keep keep doing it. I think it's funny. I just think it's funny. Um, and I hope it keeps happening. It's the same thing as Trump, right? Like, I, I just think it's funny. I don't think it matters who the president is, really. I think there's enough people who are out there to, like, you know, be checks and balances that it just doesn't, really doesn't matter. We're going to get the same bullshit. Where you want to be is, like, head of the CIA. Yeah, where that guy just, probably gets to make your decisions. Is. Yeah, I don't know. Is that, that guy's does, probably is that who's stressed. running the ship, after all? Zach, show us a picture of the head of the CIA. Taylor wants to call him out real quick. If he's if he's fat, (laughs) (laughs) I mean that. Think about like think of all the goodies you get being the head of the CIA. Does anyone ever say no to you? Ever? He would have got out of room for one ninety or one fifty. That's the guy. That guy owns the hotel. See that. That guy gets to do whatever he wants. Yeah, he does. yeah. He he looks like he he looks like he sits down and deeply sighs at least a couple times between meal bites. Like he's he looks very <laughs> tired. I'm not sure he's he's thrilled to be the head of the CIA. It's not like all <laughs> I don't know like how many perks he can't like walk into Costco without a card and be like, no, guys, I'm the head of the CIA. I'm gonna shop here. Like, <laughs> I bet you know. I bet that would fall under his purview. I bet he could go and get a dollar fifty hot dog. No. With no Nobody's membership gone. card? I don't know. If he walks in with a couple guys with earpieces, black sunglasses. Oh, I'm sure, on. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be uh, flanked by eight of those guys 24-7. Uh, we we, oh, we don't need to look day. at him for that long. <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 Where were we before we went down that weird avenue? I don't know. I don't know. We're talking about your bet on Trump. Oh, no, that didn't happen. Uh, yeah, I bet a bunch of people. Um, uh, basically, I took Trump to win the presidency against the field before he'd even said he was going to run. Um, and, and I still think it's the best bet, the safest bet. Like, like, what do you pick? You wouldn't pick anybody against me, like one individual. There's no one mm-hmm. else who's more likely, even with all this legal stuff, than Donald Trump, I think, right now. Yeah, um, I, I don't think there's anyone who's a bigger favorite than Trump, mm-hmm. unless you count the field collectively. The field collectively. Yeah. The idea of a second person, a person is what yeah. he's running against, really, because, um, you know, I, I really think of Biden as a as a weak, weak candidate at this point, like doing it a second time. And we've seen like it was it's difficult for a young man. It was difficult for Obama. You know, it, it's such a 
Although last time he hid in the bunker and, it, and, he, and he won, maybe he could do that again. Trump beat himself. And I wouldn't be surprised if Trump beat himself again. <clears throat> like I think if I gave Trump a mic right now, he'd just talk about me, 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 me. I won the election. I'm the greatest. I'm uniquely qualified for this. Show. I'm me, 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 me. Not, not a word about what he's going to do for you. Just about the shit he hates and about how people are treating him unfairly. And I don't think that wins elections. I mean, I don't see much from him anymore because he's like he's doing his rallies he's doing his rallies media. again but like the main thing i see from him every time is like the election was a lie it wasn't true and it's like like you gotta fucking get over it man like you're you're coming off like a loser a like you're coming message. off like a sour yeah. grapes loser like that doesn't play well or i watched I, some of his rally the other day and um shit i don't remember him oh. directly talking about it. i think he brought up hunter's laptop at some point that's a good topic. That's a good way. topic. I feel like that yeah. topic can work. We talked briefly about Trump on Hannity, and you're like, he's right, he's right. I think you were talking about declassifying documents, but here's what else he said. The way the FBI came in so aggressively, Trump has a theory. He's like, they wouldn't bring in all those people. They wouldn't come in so hard, unannounced, that the way that they did, with the aggressive tactics, unless, and this is what people are saying, People are saying they were secretly looking for Hillary's emails uh, <laughs> at mar a -Lago. <laughs> What? <laughs> I swear to God. I you read can't the quote. disprove that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, I my God. He's like, right. That's, that's why they did it. They wanted so that, Hillary's. This explains it all. So we don't <laughs> That's need to a worry genius about... play. Duh. <laughs> well, yeah, I like, what the fuck? Did, did he reveal if they may have found? Did he have them? <laughs> what nonsense and Hannity's like wait are you saying that you have them no 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 just people are saying that that's what they were looking for That that's how it goes back he, and he might as well have said the holy grail or something even more ridiculous like, like right. I might have believed that <laughs> I love that what, there's, what, the I love there's like denial. physical like a physical data drive with like a terabyte of just text files of emails and there's just like getting passed around by like Jason Statham oh, in the back of an Audi. He added that. He's like, it's out there somewhere. That it exists. They're just looking for it. Like, I don't know. Definitely I, McGuff, Holy Grail. There's some MacGuffin out there, some like <laughs> full of Hillary's emails. <laughs> well, shit. I don't know. Um, I, yeah, I it doesn't I, seem I, likely. I'm gonna I I'm gonna go out on a limb and say unlikely. I look forward <laughs> to the campaign because um anytime you've got that all those powerful people in those millions and billions of dollars like moving around and it's time to pick a new head poobah it's fun to see what what they go with because so often it's it's like bad it's like oh they don't know they thought sarah palin was a good idea a whole team of people got together and picked sarah palin and it, and everybody was like oh you know she's real dumb eh like like, mm. like, like well that they needed someone nice to pair with mccain because McCain like always sucked. Well, then she wasn't the answer. She wasn't I, the answer. McCain was losing clearly. So they were like, do we choose someone who's kind of status quo and hope for the best? Or do we roll the dice? And they rolled the dice and temporarily it worked. When people first met her in the mm. whole hockey mom, Rottweiler, mm -hmm. lipstick joke the, and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. Like she killed it. Uh, yeah, right, she it did. was Pitbull. And McCain briefly got a boost out of it. But then over time, she didn't really do a good job and, and it yeah. dragged him down. I think I, I don't I, I didn't remember it as a partner up a nice with a bad. I remembered it as, hey, we're losing. Let's try something. And I like the move, you know, like it, don't just keep doing what you were doing and lose. Yeah, I look forward to seeing to the campaign. See what Trump does. I hope there's lots of nonsense. I hope there's more accusations and. And I hope Trump continues to fucking curse at his rallies, which is great. I'm gonna go to the next one. I gotta see. I don't that think shit. Biden's running. I don't think he should. I don't think he will. Um, I don't think. I think right now, if they, if you, I, I'm pretty sure if you just look at it on both ends of the spectrum, it is first place is Biden or Trump, and then, or I'm sorry, first place confirmed I'm voting for is Biden and Trump. Remove mm -hmm. that, and it is first place literally anyone, anybody at all, and then. Biden and Trump in second place. And uh, like that is like uh, mm -hmm. a prevalent thought. It's Here's my dumbass. I think Gavin Newsom goes up against DeSantis, and that's the next two nominees. Is Gavin Newsom very popular? That's he's the, my, he's the California that's my governor. governor. Do you he, like him? I don't know that he's I, real super he, popular. No, I mean he is more pop he is more popular than uh people who don't live here think 
he is. Um, a lot of people think like, oh my God, he's running that shit into the ground. Uh, like from, at least from most people around here, he's just a really safe, moderate, like read okay. cent- centralist, uh, like character, but he's still a Democrat air quotes. A lot of people mm-hmm. are pissed off because he did the whole like uh, dinner at French Laundry during lockdown type shit where, you know, he's like, you know, going to parties and stuff. So that definitely pissed people off. But he's he's more popular than like Michael Bloom or whoever the hell it tried to run for a uh, governor here. Yeah, that guy who like put in billions Rick of Caruso. dollars of yeah. his own money and it, everyone's like, we don't like you. Yeah, it was <laughs> the funniest thing. He switched to Democrat like two two months prior and then was like, mm. I'm going to spend $100 million of my own money to campaign. And he did not win. So that was, I what a loss. It's cool when someone has $100 million to blow. Like, right? They were just like, you know what? I'm going to take a flyer on this. I'm going to drop $100 million into a hobby of mine. It is. It's also like seeing like Trump, Bloomberg, like billionaires running. Being like, I need your money, folks. It's like, you guys don't. Like, <laughs> uh, you really don't. Like, donating to Bloomberg. Like, isn't Blo- well, I, I guess comparing Bloomberg and Trump are bill- both billionaires in the same way that someone worth $100 million and someone worth $1 million are both millionaires. Because I'm pretty sure Trump's like $3 billion, which is like low-tier billionaire. And Bloomberg <laughs> is like, what, like $80 billion? Like real deal, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But Bloomberg, I think, is the wealthiest person in New York. Yeah, he could like he could buy and sell Trump, not even notice. I like, I would imagine. Yes, yeah. So, I guess bad comparison. Bloomberg doesn't need money the way the way Trump needs it. A lot of Trump's wealth, I think, is not very liquid. I mean, he owns real estate, which is so it's, he's wealthy, but mm-hmm. you know how much can he put his hands on? I'm not sure. But um, oh, I forgot. I don't remember Bloomberg taking a lot in donations. I think he's self funded, if I recall. But I, I saw this tweet that was like, one of the things I like about Joe Biden is he never asked me to pay his legal fees. I'm like, oh, all right, true. We have to pay his medical bills. <laughs> we pay all their medical bills. <laughs> That's true. And all these people have a lot of them. Um, I don't know if you guys have been following some of the, the stuff that's been going on with the educators in our neighbor to the north Canada. Nope. But um, I, the there, there's, there's two great images, one that we can show and one we can't. Um, I linked one of them there. Um, this is a teacher, uh, a T- TDSB teacher who identifies as an other Ken Furry, uh, is photographed here teaching in their f- fursuit. The Toronto <laughs> District School Board is facing backlash over the, the incident just days after photos emerged of a Halton teacher wearing enormous fake breasts. Um, now, that's a picture I can't show you, unfortunately. But if you guys want to, you definitely want to Google that picture. <laughs> so what do I Because have to that Google is a here? shop teacher. How is a sh- teacher huge boobs? Yep. yep. Okay. So this. Oh teacher, my! I yes. have seen this picture. I didn't realize. So what? she's been teaching shop class with those nipples like fully exposed, like through the the cloth, and they're huge. Like like if you're if, for those of you who are dumb enough not to have already Googled it, <laughs> each one is as big as a small child. And 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 there's video. The kids will like sneak their cell phones out as anyone would because yes. it's got to be a huge joke. And that and then like there's a video of her operating a chop saw and and she she has to like move her tit out of the way. She's like, you gotta be careful with these. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say they're a shop hazard. <laughs> they're a they're huge shop problem. hazard. <laughs> no, I, what is in there? It's not these human, are right? actually it's- anime boobs. No, they're made out they're silicon, they're like silicon. Um, they're they're specifically if they're really high quality, they're specifically made to just basically sit on your chest, kind of like a body plate almost. They're molded to you. And I know it's because I literally I uh, was at a place where somebody was like, "You want to feel my tits?" I was like, "Hell yeah, let's see what these things are like." They're you never know. say no. Yeah, yeah, never say no. And How then, they feel? Uh, they felt like you'd expect like silicon fake tits, <laughs> like you know. <laughs> but like, but like they were just you know, I I don't know. Those are those are so. Uh, like, what's the point? That's like, dude. Those that's are a insane. Yeah. Like that's a, it, number one shop hazard. Kyle's right. Number two, like those are so absurdly <laughs> big you, and out there. That's like, that's like just a form of exhibitionism, like yes. like what oh, the totally fuck is. like like it, yeah it's it comes off totally as exhibitionism like you're just wanting everyone to look at that all day like what the fuck like that, no that... no 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 I have the real answer okay I think Fill me in she's pulling a Mister Garrison she's being as ridiculously <laughs> awful as she can while not breaking any rules until <laughs> they fire her so she can sue them. 
<laughs> you might be right. In Canada, they cannot fire her. They Genius. can't. Okay. Genius. If they do, she can. She's pulling a Mr. Garrison. <laughs> I hope so much. It's a Mr. Garrison. And, My and goodness, look, Mr. Ham, what do I have to do to get Canada? fired? I'm sucking dick up here. Like, <laughs> 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 uh, do you remember that episode kids. where he's like, oh, yeah. like all the parents are clapping and he's like, I'm a proud gay man. And that means I like to get my dick sucked by other man. Sometimes in front of your children, like he's just like <laughs> saying all these things and he's just trying to get them. And, and they everybody's just, like, like, keep applauding. Beautiful. Really <laughs> like, beautiful. Uh, what the hell's going on? I'm being a fucking perv in front of their kids and they're clapping me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it, it's become reality now. Um, unless like this is just a big troll, and I've been bamboozled. But no, those both appear to be real stories. Could be a big they troll. seem like joke yeah. stories. Um, I, I I thought the furry was pretty hot. I, you know what? I'm more like, okay. How are you supposed to talk? The furry to is not even a sexual saying? thing. Like if for the don't for, you judge me? Like I, you know, I, I'm like I, in my head, I would it be distracting? Yeah, it would be distracting. Both of those are distracting, especially but also, in gym like, class. <laughs> he's like leading he's leading in a game of fucking dodgeball yeah, that guy that, that guy in the furry suit smells Popping like shit up. you can't understand what he's saying guaranteed it's, that's what i'm saying if you can't understand what he's saying and he's not mic'd up then it's a learning it's a learning <laughs> issue <laughs> like, what, what the, dude take your fucking wolf head off you lunatic like <laughs> then he starts gr- you're t- he starts growling at you <laughs> <laughs> then you have to go to the principal for upsetting him <laughs> you have to approach your teacher with an open palm <laughs> is it in a closed you're close right. ball. That's right. why he attacked you. <laughs> you, you, you spooked him. Uh, <laughs> dude, we haven't talked about Brett Favre yet. Oh, oh my God. What a he's, he's my a, champion. He took I heard money. a take on this. It, it, so here, if people don't know anything about Brett Favre, I have his thing. So I what guess he mean? worked with the governor of Mississippi. Mississippi mm-hmm. has something called the Department of Human Services, and they are to take care of like basically poor people. They call them at need residents. Cool. Two payments went to Favre or payments supported by Favre. One was speaking fees of $1.1 million. And you might think like, all right, well, maybe it seems like a lot. That this better be a really good speech for $1.1 million. Nay, nay. It was a no show speaking fee. So never he went didn't have to give the speech to get the $1.1 million that would have otherwise gone to poor people from Mississippi. Yep. Straight into Brett Favre's pocket. The other thing was $5 million. And that went to his daughter's school where she plays volleyball. Brett Favre was under the impression that she needed a better volleyball facility to show off her talents. And they donated, uh, donated uh, $5 million that was supposed to go to at need residents Instead, it went to Brett Favre's daughter's volleyball court. Yep. And, uh, now been a nice volleyball court. Cause I'm thinking oh five million God. can do that thing. Better be state of the art. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I thought 5 million was just the, you know, a starter fee. Five what does a $5 million is... building look like? Why generally? are they not doing in, it in the it's, basketball it's gym? It's $5 million in, 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 in Mississippi. Mississippi. Yeah, true, and true, so true. you're not Good like, point. it's Mississippi, all... not Afghanistan. Right. No, I'm... <laughs> but it's not California I'm... either. Yeah. I'm saying it's like land value is not a, is not a problem. Right. So it's all material costs. $5 million material costs and labor is like, that's, you're, Nowadays, you're that'll get you. That's like what my bathroom renovations cost. I mean, can we I'm find out? Yeah, I'm sure Bali, we'll picture Bali, of oh, our yeah. daughter's volleyball facility. In any case, the dude stole six million dollars from poor people, and he's in these text messages with the governor where he's like, "Hey, uh, <clears throat> the media fund. Nobody's out. gonna know where this money came from, right? Because it would, you know." And the governor's like, "Hey, I understand why you'd be a little concerned about that." No worries. Nobody will ever know. And I'm sitting here like on my toilet reading that message like, y'all fucked up. <laughs> like, uh, that's the outside. Zach, if you can go to my picture, it'll show the holy inside. Holy shit. Unless what? Unless you have one. And Did he they won a temple to volleyball? Dude, the inside looks dope too. That's a Photoshop, dude. That, that literally dope. looks that literally looks like somebody said, How do we spend five million dollars on volleyball? Not here's five million dollars <laughs> worth of volleyball stuff. You know, look like, at that court. Oh my god. That now look at that. Three. Okay. It's oh three man. Wide. No money went to the volleyball um imagery. 
here. Dude, that is a, that is. A <laughs> I didn't really. Really it looks nice like I found the rendering. I thought it was real when I showed it to him. Yeah, it's a rendering, but but still, like I'm sure it looks like this more or less. That's how much is Brett Favre worth? And like, how did he? It's it's shocking to me that this man. Like it's not that it's not that he can't afford the six million dollar donation. Instead, he was like, "Well, I don't actually want to do that, but I would like to flex, you know, my my pull." Because what other like what other reason could you have for siphoning money from that specific group of it's people? Free You're money, like, like 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 he has some sort of fucking illicit deal with the governor to get free fucking welfare money. He's worth a hundred million dollars, and he had to get another million for his own pocket. It yeah, and and so the thing I mentioned about him saying. Are we going to get caught for this? Basically, I'm paraphrasing. You know, are people going to find out? Is his defense is I had no idea where the money was coming from. Mm -hmm. I, you know, like I thought it was a speaking fee. Like I don't know. I don't really pay close attention. But it turns out he was personally texting. Like, what if people learn about what we're doing? So he knew exactly what he was doing. Mm. Yeah. This now, is the guy who's making seven million dollars a year and he's making it eight. Yeah. Through fraud. Yeah, ESPN not is <laughs> barely covering this. I haven't even seen it on the news much. I see it on Reddit a little bit and it hit me, but it's not like getting plastered wall to wall. When Michael Vick ran dog fighting facilities, right? Mm -hmm. And he's personally responsible mm -hmm. for like seven or eight dogs dying and he kind of funded it. He wasn't, you know, nothing. He was the guy. It was wall to wall coverage. It was everywhere. ESPN mm -hmm. was talking about it. ABC, NBC, NBC, whatever. I mean, that, that makes uh -oh. sense to me. To because be like fair, one, though, Michael... one story is like very easy to spin to make the public care. Like it's harder to get the public to care about like a misappropriation of funds. Cause this shit happens all the time. Like, Cause if there's, if there's photos of abused yeah. dogs, that, that, that's going to, that's going to sell. That's going to fly. Also, like, Michael Vick was at the peak of his career. He had just been on the cover of fucking Madden 2004. He was killing it. We, we the Falcons, were very proud of him. He <laughs> was so fast. The dude yes. was like benching 500 pounds. It's like running a running back that could animal. throw. He's faster than a running back. He was incredible. He was so, he was, he was, I don't remember what his 40 times were, but they're yeah. absurd. Faster and, than the pit bulls. And that not quite, um, that caught <laughs> up with him. And, and, uh, and, and like they, they, they started showing all the like war, they showed it warts and all. Like there's ways for media to cover when a person that they kind of like does a bad thing. And then there's ways to like throw somebody, they're like, these are the rape stands. They're a big part of, of, of this style of underground dog fighting where you, tie the female down and and have her raped repeatedly by the male and it's mm -hmm. like that has nothing to do with that's like just a part of breeding dogs whether you like it or not i don't i don't like breeding you know that whole industry but like i think it's a legal thing i don't think it's animal abuse but they're like zooming in on these things and somebody's like standing next to it the poor dog would be placed here <laughs> <laughs> and like breaking down dog rape and i'm sitting there like man this is they're going to kill this guy by the time it's over. They really <laughs> threw him under the bus. They I've had that good. thought too. Like I, I've wondered, I, like I'm wondering, I've, I've, I've had the thought that you did. Look, misappropriation of funds, a guy who's been retired for, I don't know, 12 years more, yeah. uh, is not the same sexy story that mm -hmm. dog murder is. But I do wonder, like, is it not? It's, it should he's get that, more he, attention than he's, it has. He is it's a the, shitty story. I, I hate it. it it, it, it makes me know that he's a piece of shit because mm -hmm. I think there was a thing a while back where he was like sending dick pics to other women while he was married or something. Reporters. Like he got a reporter literally canned and like blacklisted because and denied all the allegations and stuff that she came out on it. So, that. yeah. Right. And, and, and this you requires know, a trip to Bing. I want to see what it did. And, and so we know he's a bit of a piece <laughs> of shit already, but, mm -hmm. but this is, this is really scummy. It, it's Mississippi, right? Like, 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 I want to say I've seen him in his Wrangler commercials, like repping that, you know, his hometown and stuff and talking about all that. And like, man, to be like stealing you're... money from the poorest citizens of your home state, the people mm -hmm. who like need to eat. I don't know. It's it's going it's yeah. food out of poor. As far as like mouths. actual. I heard it called impact. welfare money. Like, yeah, as far as like actual yeah. negative impacts, Brett Favre did a lot more negative. It's just like yeah. as far as the ability to get people to care about it, like people care so much about abused animals. Yeah, I don't like, like it either. I mean, I'm glad they people, got him. Yeah, I'm. I, I you know, it's, it it really, you know, ruined a couple of years, the Falcons for a generation. Really, like 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 we're we're on. We still haven't recovered from those. Brett, Brett Favre was responsible for destroying the Falcons for a long time. Uh no, Michael Vick. <laughs> oh, Michael Vick. <laughs> yeah, Michael yeah. Vick. Brett yeah, Favre didn't do the Falcons any favors either. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember us having any real issues with with the with them ever. Uh, but uh, but, but no, it. 
I just remember, I think he had killed several of the dogs with his bear, like drowned them in a bucket. I want, I think that was a thing. Michael Vick Sounds had familiar. been drowning dogs in buckets, which is ghoulish. Like, why wouldn't you shoot them? Mm-hmm. Um, like some people might like be like, that's ghoulish, but like, I don't know. That's, that's how you put animals down when they're like broken and sick and dying. Yeah. You get them out of their misery as quickly. I as would possible. rather be shot than drowned in a bucket. Oh, one hundred percent. Oh, you're gonna die on that pick. hill, huh? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> easy pick. <laughs> Is that really Brett Favre's dick? His dick sucks. Oh yeah. my yeah, god. Yeah, I saw it too. That dick sucks. But when I binged it myself, I got some better dicks. But I wasn't hundred percent. I remember sure like I, I remember seeing the pictures of his dick and being like. Dude, mm. the the potential ROI here is not good. Like you're yeah. you're getting ladies because of your arm, my friend. Yeah, not because of <laughs> not because of what you got here. Dude, okay. send him a picture of Keep your bank mystery. account, not your penis. Like, yeah, yes. like literally. What are you doing? <laughs> show, show that you have an extra million, million dollars, dollars? That you didn't have before. Like, like like show her a fucking like pool at, at another country that you're sitting at. Don't show her your your little dick. I mean, in his case especially. Yeah, he's got. It. He can get you to a pool in another country. Keep that. Red Favre seems part like a dumbass to me. That's that's so that's so scummy. I don't like that he's stealing money from poor people. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. not do a good white collar crime. You know, like like steal money from corporations, not or from yes. the government. Yeah, dude, I oh, used to be in from the government. accounts yeah. payable. <laughs> no. and you you have to understand Shit. when you're in accounts payable, there are invoices coming to your company constantly, just yeah. raining in invoice after invoice after invoice, and you are measured. By how quickly you turn these around, like you've got to pay these invoices on time. I've always wondered why don't more people send invoices to companies? Just I've, be like, you know what? Facebook, I've heard stories of it. Working, I've heard stories of people doing it. Yeah. yeah, it works a lot, and apparently that's a fraud. That's fraud. Yeah, <laughs> little, little Wait, Indian that's Indian fraud. Indian. Who knew? <laughs> apparently, they, apparently they keep track of this sort of thing. It's it's like a profit margin. They're like, where's this money? <laughs> I was I like. Know. 19 when i had maybe 21 when i had this job if people just sent me random invoices you might you might have made some money (laughs) i wasn't very good i think it's true of a lot of companies i think if you send them an invoice and like you make yourself look like a vendor that would be Mm -hmm. in there like if it's a construction company and you call yourself woody's tile woody you know woody's greek tile They'll be like, oh, 1800 for Woody's Greek tile. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're doing those condos on the east side. Sure. Clickety click, clickety clack. Like $1,800 a drop in the bucket of some. You know what I bet would work well? What I bet would work well for that is like a fake pest control company. Like you just send people pest control invoices, like to, mm. to random hotel chains. No, but you need to do it. You need to do external only because then they're like, well, I didn't see them. Oh, yeah, we just did routine spray around every three months, you know? That's Smart. the service this you is, signed up for. We got to remove this part from the show, guys. Yeah. No, we <laughs> Let's, <laughs> we're joking. We can tell jokes. <laughs> we, we all go to jail over like $800. <laughs> I'm not going to jail. <laughs> I can't. Kyle's like, they'll never take me alive again. Well, Tucker, Woody, and Taylor all agreed it was Kyle's, Kyle's idea. idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's already familiar with, with that wonderful facility in, in Alabama. Oh my god! Oh, so I was thinking about I'm gonna I'm gonna get my uh, my girlfriend a uh, an Xbox for her uh, birthday, okay. nice. and uh, I had to like Amazon has this thing where it's like, hey, you wanna you want an Xbox? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Asked nicely, and I was like, what the fuck? And I like click the button or whatever. I'm like, all right, we'll get back to you. And it's like like they're up. I think they're gonna weigh. Maybe I don't know what they're weighing right now, but they're, but they're deciding right now whether I get one or not. They're literally really? going to, that's so. And they do for like, everyone. I'm not special. Like, I think it's just a thing. Like, if you want to buy like an Xbox, they're like, yeah, we'll see what we can do. What's the Xbox you know what? I wonder nowadays. if it's, I, it's the Xbox Series one, Series it's, X or something. It's the, I, there's an X and an S. One of them's white and cheap, and the other is black and, a, and like a tall. That's the one you want, the big black one. Okay. Uh, $775 <laughs> for this thing. 500, so, okay. 500 on Amazon. That's what you want to pay. So I'm, I'm wondering if they're like checking your loyalty. Find the $500 one. You know, that is like, a loyalty it's thing. It's like buying a Porsche. They're like you or Ferrari. Like you have any Ferraris in your garage before? No. Well, fuck you. All right. Let's yeah. get this guy over here. He's got <laughs> nine of them. I'm, I'm hoping with Kyle. Though. I went to it. And by the way, you'll have a hard time finding a more loyal Amazon customer than me. I get Amazon packages six days a week. Yeah. And, uh, on a slow week, <laughs> and, yeah. and uh, it says request invitation. Yep. So, right, so it'll be interesting to see if they give you one and they don't give me one. Um, you can just pass it on to me. That'll be great. <laughs> but here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. 
I want to play Xbox games with my mouse and keyboard because you can plug that shit right into that thing. And that thing does 4K 60 FPS on like AAA titles. Uh, so I'm sure it'll do, you know, lower those things down, playing a 1080p monitor. I'm getting 100, I think it does 120 or 130 for frames, maybe more. It's like a mm-hmm. cheap gaming PC. That's and As far as consoles fun. go, it's apparent. I have the black cube one and it's yeah, yeah. pretty powerful. I'm going like, to um, play the new COD a lot, and I think I might do it that way. I might use that thing as like a gaming PC and shit on console kids with my mouse and keyboard. You should. Just have fun just teeing off on kids, getting used to the control. I got, I got inspired by somebody's YouTube video where they were like, if you use a mouse and keyboard on Xbox, you are literally a cheater. And I was like, <laughs> really? <laughs> they were like, it's, it is a easy, massive huh? advantage, and you are going around the way the game was even designed. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so like, we're going to see. If we're, You're I'll not dissuading stop. Kyle at all. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, I would imagine you would get, is it called auto assist? Aim assist. Aim aim assist. I'll turn yeah, that off. Plus a mouse. You won't get aim assist if you plug in your Xbox or plug in your shit to it. It's not true one to one. Like it does, it acts as if your mouse is now a controller and not as if you are using a mouse and keyboard. So I know it sounds weird, but it does not feel as good. It's the same shit with okay. when you're using like the Zim. <laughs> so, uh, which was that like plug in your keyboard or your keyboard and mouse that everybody used for years. So you think yeah. it feels worse? I, I had it this does. imagination that I'm it would try. be a mouse with aim assist, that it would suck no. you on target. What do you, why would that ever happen? Everybody because would a controller use that has then. aim assist. And that's what Kyle's saying, that everyone yeah, uses but it. Yeah, nobody would do it. No, it doesn't but, work that way. I maybe promise. Xbox has a different differentiate no. whether using a controller or well, no. it's not how it works. I promise. <laughs> but well, I look I forward want to, it to work I that. Way. I know, <laughs> I know you do. It's not going to be like playing Halo on PC, and you're like, "Wow, I'm incredible!" It's like <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want it to be. That's exactly uh, what no. I want it to be like. I want to be like, how do we get that? And everybody's yeah. goofing around with this jiggly ass thumbs. Yeah, I want I want everyone else to have to play with a Guitar Hero controller. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I have a. I saw a guy, pl- dude. I saw. I a saw guy that flute clip COD. too. <laughs> I saw a guy playing COD with a flute. <laughs> okay. Dude, that, sniper. A kill. He's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like slowly moving the crosshairs to shoot the guy. <laughs> really awesome. crazy. I like like back in the day when people would use the Guitar Hero stuff. I, I thought that was ridiculous. But a flute might be the the weirdest way I've seen somebody do it so far. A flute is the coolest. I like that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that new COD. Um, I've seen some like pro, I don't know pros and cons to it. Like like people don't like there's no dead silence. People don't like uh, the way dead sounds. I saw in Field Upgrade. Field upgrade. What is like, that? You just, you argue just with Tucker. It. He really seems to know. No, what I want to. No, I, <laughs> no, I, I want to know. Uh, you, I was just, I was just playing it before we got. But you get it. You get it every, uh, like you earn it over time. So it's like every like two and a half minutes. But you can get upgrades. Get you, you can get perks to give it to you faster, whatever. But yeah, you get it like once every like minute, two minutes. It's not bad. Okay, because I That's saw a long time were tweeting alive, out though. something yeah, like we're you don't not have to stay alive. Dead silence. It's it's just perpetually earned like throughout playing and completing objectives in games. So um, as far as I know, so it's just yeah, it's uh, it's, so it's can still I, a thing. Can I repeat what I and tell me if I have it right? So about a minute or two into the game, you get dead silence for the rest of the game. No, you get it for you get it, and then it's a like fifteen or twenty second activation that you use specifically for like ah, finally oh. I can flank now. You can oh. save it up in search. So if you play search and destroy, you don't have it first round. You might get it in the middle of the second round, and then you can use it at any point, or you can just, you know, use it and then get it again later on. So it's like, okay. uh, yeah, it's an interesting okay. way to use it because, like, completely without it is no good, and completely with it is no the, good the, either. The footsteps are far too loud, and they turn them down. They're so loud, it is truly a game that just uh, you are not, unless you're just like Adderall out of your mind, you're not running Can't around corners up. and just like, yeah, because you can hear somebody. It's a lot of running, processing to do. No, it's just like very footsteps are very loud. So it's very and it's good audio. So you can hear where they're coming from, how far until they get to the door, just sit there, aim. And then it's like time to kill is very quick. Not too quick, in my opinion. But like you can't fight back if you're getting scared. So No, it looks good to me. I, I'm I'm uh, I want to play uh, the, the Battle Royale. It, it's not called Blackout anymore, is it? It's it something. No, else? Warzone. Warzone. OK, yeah, I want to play that. I want to play that. Um, I always like those. And what's the Tarkov like mode called? DMZ. DMZ. Have you tried it? No, and we don't okay. know much. I played Warzone Two, which is just Warzone, just new map, new uh, like terminals in Warzone Two, and 
mm -hmm. uh, like Strike and some other like fan favorites, Dome. Yeah, I saw um, some gameplay. It looks yeah. good. But the DMZ, we don't know much about it. Nobody's played it that I know of. Um, and I hope it's like the Tarkov-esque, you know, experience. But I truly do not know. I have no idea. Okay. I'm glad that you're here. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm interested in that mode as well. Um, I, I don't know. I haven't played multiplayer COD in so long. I just don't. Nobody has. It just seems so monotonous. <laughs> like, I, don't, Nobody. I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I would... it's, it, it's not fun anymore. The, the era, I've said so many times that for me and for a lot of people, you can see it with the emergence of Battle Royale, the era of especially non-persistent lobbies where you get in and you play 10 to 15 minutes. The games are shorter than that. It's now seven to 10 minutes of gameplay. And then you, and, and, and basically it's for what? Like, to what end are you doing this? You're not mm -hmm. ranking up. There is going to be rank play later on, but you're not ranking up. You're, you're just like, what, what's the point of doing this with your friends playing the same over and over and over short form games versus like, you know, Battle Royales for me or Story or like 40 minute long Counter-Strike games. You, you have a lot more interaction and there's like a reason to go back. It feels less mind numbingly repetitive, I think. Mm -hmm. No, I agree 100. percent You know what? I've been thinking. I know Tarkov's going to add the uh, the arena mode. What mm -hmm. they really need to add is wager matches. That's they what. Need... No, exactly the same way that RuneScape. I'm gonna. If I love RuneScape, RuneScape literally has the same thing where they have um, the wilder. You have the game, right? You can play, but you can go out into the wilderness and you can PvP. It is a free for all, kind of like there are rules, but it's basically like if you want to go PvP, consider that normal Tarkov. But they have arenas where you go up and you stake. You basically find somebody, you agree to things that you bet, you both agree on the things that are wagered, you yep. go in, you play, the winner automatically gets what's wagered, and you can do that forever. It's so much fun because it's completely safe and like more fair PvP. Do you know do you know how popular it would be on Twitch if oh, you had so if you had like the top streamers playing like high stakes wager match free for alls, so let's just say, where they jump on some sort of an arena style map with t with eight other with seven other players and everybody has put up like 1.2 million mm -hmm. and like 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 rubles in game you know and I we're gonna play first <laughs> second and third and five people just lost 1.2 million and yep. like a million of its prize pool and two million of it just goes poof or whatever however they want to play that game like it could... might be a hacker's paradise but i still sure. love the concept well, well a, a hacker's paradise sure a booster's paradise shirt at like a legal account mm. trading. Right. But I think that just because like they've already taken a lot of effort to like reduce the amount of like flow of money through traders and or through the flea market and shit. I think that I would just simply be happy with um, uh, two options. Bring whatever gear you'd like. You don't lose it. It's just PVP. Maybe you lose mm. ammo. Maybe your gun gets damaged, but like you don't lose your gear. And then yeah. I would also like the opposite. Uh, give us both standardized gear, and let me see who the better PvP is when you flatten Standardi level the right. I I agree. Standardized gear is easier to do than you think in Tarkov. I mean, like like there's always a meta for the tier one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. and six armors. There's one that's the best one, is and and you just throw that oh. on everybody. Give you know AKs. You could you could have generalized kits. Use like it for weapon test. I mean, I find it hard to believe that Tarkov and I that that they get a, a normal amount of feedback on new weapons before they put them into the game, right? It's slow and stuff, but the amount and the rate that new weapons add like get added to the game, what better way to stress test the balance of that weapon and how it performs than literally getting people only using that gun in the arena so you can get you know, more data versus like waiting for somebody to find the mutant. Now we know yeah. that the entire wipe, we have to wait for us to like change the mutant because it's too strong now. Yeah, I really like the idea of staying nice here because there's testing. grenade launchers in the game. And yeah. Grenade launchers in a 1v1, like it, say you go to factory, are going to be OP. Awful, yeah. And that too, oh. like you could literally do factory 1v1 or you could do like you could make these uh the these experiences way more enjoyable to me as a player than you would if you were doing it in Call of Duty or Halo or any of the games that I grew up playing in yeah. the first place. It's but you, different. I, I saw Landmark say this, and you, you don't want to make it just factory with extra steps. Yeah. You know, like like you you can already go in and play private matches with your buddies with whatever gear you all want and set your own rules. Like, all right, nobody bring a mutant, no no tier six armor. Like you can already do that. But what I would like is the wager match thing. I just remember like sitting on the couch next to White Boy and watch him just crush wager matches and just like get all those points and be like, man, you're destroying them. <laughs> like, like, the, like I want that concept, but with Tar 
that was I don't even remember what he was winning but in those wager matches, like like what that currency was used for. But like Tarkov currency, I do understand. And it's hard to mm. come by. Like like mm. that game already has that currency to like bet and gamble with in, in, in it. So it'd be so fun. I'd like that a lot. And what if you could set the amount you could agree upon like um custom amounts, like two guys could agree to do like a 10 million ruble uh 1v1 or something. That'd be neat. Yeah, I just think that would get around a lot of the stuff that they're trying to stop. Ah, that would ruin it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it would be an issue. Like, I, I could, a rich friend you know, could bet a lot and throw the game, but yeah, I don't shame. know how to get around that. But I, I do love the idea. It's of a shame Cheetos ruined that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I'm I'm all in on Dark Tide. That's the next game. I probably will barely game. You know what I've been doing lately? Yeah. I've been <laughs> Dark Tide. All right. Yeah, yeah, so Dark Tide is a four player co op game. Think Left 4 Dead ish or Vermin Tide. Oh, is it is it Warhammer? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, and, I did see the um, yeah, yeah. So I'm super excited about that lately, and I haven't been gaming a ton. But Colin is into Fall Guys. You remember Fall Guys? Was yeah. Fall Guys is like, good, and it's getting better. It's actually dude, a lot of fun. So <laughs> Fall Guys, I thought it was fun. Like Colin never stopped playing. He just kept honing his skills to the point where my son is a Fall Guys fucking savant. He's like a bully. He wins. <laughs> all the time there's 60 people in a game he wins like every third one and uh he there's just skill-based ma- skill matchmaking in fall guys by the way there's <laughs> is there yeah yeah so he's not he's enough crushed, he's crushed he's, in every he is just <laughs> fucking smashing people and he always takes a picture of himself like the, the monitor his ipod ipods what was like a fucking cooking like baking sheet when he yeah. it. <laughs> he's just filled with photos of him smashing one guy after another just like all these wins and he sends them <laughs> to like me his friend his mom and uh uh it's hilarious so i started trolling him like i'm the one who's actually good <laughs> like if you ever need advice you know just come to me it's cool i've got this and i can barely get out of the first round like i'm not very good <laughs> But I constantly offered to give him advice, and it's how he's like, "No, Fall Guys is so hard for you." I'm like, "Not for me, nah." No. So Just because it's hard for you doesn't make it hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I'm the best Fall Guys player in the house. Don't get confused. Yeah. He's like, "What? No, you can't win." I'm magnanimous in my losses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting but... you win. No, it's a, it's a hard. I have one win ever, and I bet I played a hundred rounds. Probably around a oh, hundred on um, stream, and I got one win. It's it's. I gotta say, so they either announced that it's coming soon or whatever, but they announced that they're opening up like custom level Steam Workshop, whatever. Basically, mm-hmm. you you know you want to make your own not Steam Workshop. It's Epic, right? No, it is mm-hmm. Steam. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. They basically that you know you can make your own levels. First of all, it's got to be the greatest idea because how hard can it be? Just put a bunch of fucking hammers. It's like Halo Forge, right? Have as much yeah. fun as you want. That's cool. And then private lobbies so you can play with your friends. I think that Fall Guys is a fun game, even if you're just playing four people, because like it's just you and your friends and, you know, mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about just like backing out afterwards. Somebody always wins. So like the game idea was great. It's just uh, it's it's definitely a lot harder now. The The people that have continued to play nonstop. I played for like five, six hours. I won once and it was like a grueling victory. And I think I he gave it to me. He's like, look at this idiot. Yeah. <laughs> like got gold crowns and everything dripped out in gold and i've got like the standard bean suit i'm like first time here yeah, bean suit. <laughs> no i I'm, I'm the bean in the cowboy hat so people know i've played oh yeah <laughs> yeah people Colin know veteran. Like, a level one outfit you you would not know he's a sleeper yeah he's <laughs> such a fun, exactly he's a sleeper no one and, and he's so good like then you can see him like working strategy waiting grabbing rings at the right time he doesn't sit there like if you need to finish a game with a tail or something he's not getting a tail all game long he's just chilling and then with 15 seconds left he takes your tail and wins and he see then i wouldn't have liked to play with him because i was always the idiot running around with a tail and then it's like five four three and then someone who's actually good is like i'll relieve you of this idiot (laughs) (laughs) yeah when i was playing somebody literally just afk'd for the first 90 seconds or like 80 seconds of that game and then 10 seconds comes back he's like all right i'm time time to win like he was like what's the point of running around you know i just stressful for me (laughs) (laughs) oh i i made such an ass of myself like just missing dives through easy hoops like on stream just looking like an idiot it it was a hard game to play on stream for me because i i'm not good at games and also it has such an aura of a game that is very easy 
that when you suck at it, it's like, oh, guys, trust me, like, this guy doesn't have a lot of purchase on the ground. He's slipping, he's sliding. Like, I know it looks like I just steered him into the abyss, but no. And there's player collision, and it's very crowded. So what Mm -hmm. you intend to do is not what you get to do oftentimes, because people are pushing you around. But, uh... I don't know. Colin just figured out how to be the pusher, not the pushy. And he'll, you know, he, he grabs people and throws them to the side. He knows exactly what's up. Everything's easy to him. It's, it's pretty funny. Is that game, uh, Among Us, which was so big a couple of years ago, is that still popular? Uh, I no. I don't think so. That was really. one of those. That that was one of those games that kind of blew up because of the pandemic. It was like people, even my normal friends, uh, uh, were just like, "Hey, it's a good thing for us to just go and like backstab each other." And it's on mobile, and yeah, th- then it spawned a shit ton of other ones. I don't think many people play it right now. I have a non-gaming topic for Jericho. Yeah. So you are, in addition to being a, a streamer in the music business, mm-hmm. but the music you deal with is like electronic music mostly. Yeah, it's dance music. Yeah. Can you tell the songs apart? Because they, they all yeah, kind of go this? like a wick a wick a beep beep. Right? It's kind of the that's best. like the most boomer thing. That's like a, <laughs> like, I like can you tell one of it your about songs for you? Uh-huh. Would you be like, oh sure, I know that one. Yeah, and pretty much any song I've listened to in a while, like no yeah, way, I mean, no way. There's no way. Course. Yeah, you're gonna blow your mind when I hear like a kick and snare from like a techno song, and you're gonna be like, "There's no way it's not the same song." But like, yeah, of course. <laughs> first of all, none of our songs sound even remotely similar. They're all very unique, right? This is um, not this. This is not like looking at hamburgers and saying, "Can you close your eyes and tell them apart?" This is like uh-huh. looking at, to me, like vastly different meals and being like, "Well, can you tell?" Like, yes, I can tell you who the guy is that made it because I can mm-hmm. hear it. You know, so it's like, uh, it's it's like looking at different paintings and being like. You know, is if Van Gogh paints a clock, did he do the drippy clock? Like his clock's different from like I'm not sure a Warhol or or yeah. you know or Salvador uh, Dali. So you're thinking Dali, about. yeah, Dali. So it's like you know, I of course I can, but that's just uh, sounds a little racist, you know? Like, can you tell them apart? They all look the same. They're all the same. I guess I can tell them apart. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a great way to respond to someone having difficulty differentiating anything, being like, wow, little, little, little racist. racist. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> a, right. Wow, you can't taste no the black truffle oil on this burger? Oh, oh, you're yes. a little racist, yeah. <laughs> Woody, we, we, we glossed over your your your... your ridiculous impulse purchase you got a thirty thousand dollar motorcycle what'd you get oh yeah that was um did you get like evil can evil's bike or something what no it's it's kind of a dad bike so what happened was i went on this long trip the one where i broke my leg i did a thousand miles in a day but it really wasn't the appropriate bike for that i did that on a glorified dirt bike Mm -hmm. and i'm like i should get a touring bike if i think this is fun so i got a honda goldwing oh yeah it's it is I, I looked at all of them. I narrowed it down to two. I looked at all the Harleys, the Indians, the Hondas, et cetera, the Victories. And uh, it just seems like the Honda Goldwing is the polished sort of. Look at that. It's got you know, the big fat cases. sport bike. Look up uh, here. I, it, Zach, it is a 2022 it's got, blue Honda Goldwing. I, I am looking at a, a 2022 Honda Goldwing. The looking at your dash, it's got Apple CarPlay. It does have Apple bike. CarPlay. It looks like that looks like a good, cool cockpit right there. It looks very sporty. Uh, You're going to be like Judge Dredd. Yeah, that's but what I got. The, that's what I bought. But from and, the um, side, it is not sporty. From But from the, if you look at the are cockpit. Are you kidding? Look at that. Looks cool <laughs> to me. How many, is it a... 1800 cc it is a six cylinder bike my next biggest bike hell is yeah two. Um, it's a v6 <laughs> yeah that's that's that probably moves it does it, it goes fast and you put a passenger on i took jackie out to a steakhouse the other day I, I this is a little on the nose but basically the mission is to go to cities a few hours away and have sexcations with jackie that is what we bought this uh bike for nice and uh we're trying to do the first one on wednesday <laughs> nice. i'll let you know how it goes on thanks, the show. For, All right. thanks, thanks for telling <laughs> us about your your sexual plan you know like, i'm gonna go have sex this weekend nice. for wednesday. <laughs> well, they're, but, they're revolutionary but they're re- revolutionizing the sex life over there in, in north carolina oh my. yeah we are so, so right. that's it was like buy the bike biker we'll sex now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll go to the beach. We'll go to fuck. I think Winston Salem's our first date, and uh, um, yeah, you know, just going little vacations, you know, overnighters or something somewhere else, and and make an adventure out of it. I like so, it. So I like I like your motorcycle too. It looks real cool. Well, yeah, I like you. this one. I, I think I this know, is my I favorite of the ones you have. To I would be intimidated by it, and like 
what I like to call CQB scenarios. Yeah. <laughs> it's 800 pounds. Like I, I, yeah. when I took Jackie to the steakhouse, house, when we came back, we were in this residential neighborhood and there's um some of the roads are like unfinished. So they're just, they're not big cul-de-sac shaped like thermometers. Instead, they're just roads that end. And I practice U-turns with a passenger on it. I was kind of like proud of myself for nailing them. Yeah. Uh, I- uh, like like my bike's light enough that I can make stupid decisions and and do things poorly and just make up with it for it with a little like putting my foot down and being stronger than the bike weighs because it's not that heavy till tilt it a little you're pushing eighty pounds or something but I don't know what it feels like to push eight hundred fucking pounds that's what I yeah. cow weighs <laughs> it's like eight fifty. <laughs> Like you throw a, a a passenger with a helmet or, and some moto gear and stuff, you're threatening a thousand pounds. Like that's what yeah. it weighs. You are rolling around a thousand. What, oh, what size engine does it have, by the way? One thousand eight hundred cc. Oh, baby. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> that's, that's so cool. Eighteen thirty-eight, I think, is the number. I bet there are like. cars that have smaller engines. Sure. Here, yes. 1. What do you liter. mean? Oh, uh, yeah. One point eight liter car. Like all of like the four, some are two, smaller. Yeah, like four cylinders. How much bigger is that than your next largest engine? Double. My other one's an 890. Yeah, so a double. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool bike. No, no incremental increases for you. Double. (laughs) (laughs) It's a fun bike. And like I said, I bought it in Iowa and I immediately drove it home. I don't know. 1400 miles ish something this like is that. as the like one the of us who knows too. the least about bikes this is far and away the aesthetically uh, the coolest i like well it. i'm glad you like it um it's fun i i particularly there was a black one like 60 miles from my house and i'm like nay nay i will fly <laughs> to iowa instead really? and make a uh make a ride out of it now is that preference or do you just like uh really wanted a blue one it was straight up. Actually, Jackie liked the blue one. So I name all my bikes, right? I have a dual sport named Kinky because it likes to get dirty. Dude, I have a cool Buffy, thing. which which is a it's a really like aggressive, lethal, light and strong dirt bike. Mm-hmm. This bike's name is Sapphire. One, it's blue. Two, it's a stripper name, and it's built for three ways. Sapphire. That's the bike's name. Ah, there you go. Uh, Man, you're having a lot of fun. <laughs> i don't know what it. that is, is a great time. it's the same bike but like something honda did okay um that looks you know, very they, retro that looks cool yeah and i do I see they, it's the same engine i don't recognize every piece of it though like the seat's different i guess wheels they're solid well mostly solid are they i got a full screen oh yeah you're right yeah that looks neat um no i like your bike that's cool well that's uh <laughs> The whole thing is cool. I never stray outside of like black and red for colors for things, though. Like even the fucking chair is black and red. You know, even your gym stuff. You were going all my gym stuff is black and red. Um, I just think those are like strong colors you can't go wrong with. Those are also the Targaryen Mm -hmm. colors. Um, (laughs) black and red are great. I can totally see why you do that. But but no, I I I, like I wanted blue. I want to no. I wish that I could be like you and stray outside of those two easy <laughs> colors. You don't think I want UGA. a yellow car? Yeah, that's yeah I, that I, too. Yeah, my my, my sports teams are uh, are often black and red. Uh, Braves are blue and red, but uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, no, I, I would like to get a blue something, but I, every time I go to buy something that costs more than I, I don't know a hundred dollars, I'm like, let's get the let's get a good color. No, Kyle, you don't want to be like me. Every no. time you find some cool hats or sneakers, you realize you're in the ladies section. It's oh, no, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you do you do cr- accidentally cross dress a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think these but, things happen. <laughs> like, like, like the, I love when Michael Scott did that, and they like looked at the tag of his suit, and it was Miss. Mysterious. <laughs> it, <was> like, <laughs> it was a lady's fucking suit. The pants didn't have pockets. He's like, yeah, it's <laughs> the they have back pockets, so it's just, it, you know it's just a smooth yeah, it's, ass. It's like it's not a good look for a man, or maybe it is a good look, but it's not the look that we want. I remember that it's way too anyway. tight on his shoulders and his arms, and it makes him have birthing hips, like with the, the flare around. Yeah, shoulder pads, like like the whole thing. It was bad. It's a bad look. There's there's nothing like worse than putting on an ill fitting suit. Suits like they can either really tone you up, make you look mm-hmm. good, or they can. You know they can they can Donald Trump you and make you look like you're not as fat as you are, or they can Chris Christie you and fatten you up. Dude, Chris Christie doesn't look exactly look slim in a baseball uniform. I mean, but if you would have thrown him in some like bigger pants, tent? come on, what, like bell bottoms or something. 
like some of those bigger than what, they what were those jeans that the school shooters always wore with the the, the, the enormous bell bottoms <laughs> oh like in the night like jinko jeans jinko jeans yeah, those yeah big yeah. giant jinko yeah jinko jeans. Yeah, i hear jinko if i saw I hope those come jeans, back when i was they in, are coming back i saw I somebody wearing high them school, and nice. i saw somebody wearing jinko jeans i knew their dad beat them <laughs> usually if i saw jean co jeans they it was a kid who wore those and also wore skater shoes mm, and they'd have yeah. they'd have a number of chains hanging off the pants but we were too uh, young always for chains wallets. yeah always chains um in a lot of you... invader zim tops and and uh, yeah. bracelets so all right well that's oh a my kind God, of man that's, right there. no no He's no no hard that, that, guy, yeah, that guy's way too calm and shown. This is clear. This is not the kind of guy that would wear a Jinko jean no, traditionally. Yeah. Look at There's that no power chain. stance, though. You yeah. talked about Trump in a suit. Have you seen his butt in the Hannity interview? That's huge. Uh, what, what, I haven't. What, I've seen what, his butt on the golf course. Oh, and hard that was and that ass. was huge because or no, his tennis. Wait, wait, butt is, all right. First of all, it's my prerogative to hard scope Trump's ass. I'll do what I want to. I don't know if juicy. No, yeah, well done. Oh, what, what is happening? Lee! He's caked up. He's overflowing. <laughs> dude, he is absolutely caked up. Dude, that's, that. that's 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 my president. Like, <laughs> well done on showing this picture, by the way, Zach. Yeah, it wasn't very good. It looks like the way he's sitting because he likes to do that lean forward thing. It looks like he is like his um his shoulders are are less are narrower than his hips. Like it looks like his entire upper body is this. He and looks then Kim he Kardashian like. Can you this is such a confusing of, picture. Can you pull up a photo of Squidward eating when he eats too many Krabby looks, Patties? Yeah, that's like that's exactly like literally what, what I feel. Like. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's in the vault shoving down Krabby Patties. <laughs> no Squidward, it'll go to your thighs. <laughs> My thighs, <laughs> and then he explodes. <laughs> that's what I mean. Look at that. It looks like. Trump's torso is on top of a larger man's lower <laughs> section. It's insane. That's that's he makes he it really makes uh yeah <laughs> he does look like that. It makes uh Hannity's ass look pretty small and and yeah, dare I say beta. It's easier to surround yourself with fat people than it is to lose weight. That's especially yeah. in America. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Do you ever like there was this guy on uh, the whitewater rafting trip we went on and he was probably six foot six, six foot seven and every bit of 500 pounds, oh, no. like pair. What like, sport? It was a whitewater rafting trip. He was, he was in another boat. Thank God. I remember we were like in it that little waiting area. And then it was the him and his whole group. cohort. Yeah. It was a whitewater raft, but he treated it like a kayak. <laughs> yeah, he, was, he was playing anchor and like literally like I, I saw him and I was like, please do not have that guy be in our raft. Like he's so big. Like it's like, it turns out if he were any like larger, Jeep Wrangler. Yeah. yeah. Like if he were any larger, I imagine they would have been like, you can't go on this, but thankfully he wasn't in ours. And like the instructor who was in our little boat was like tying the things onto us. And like, he was like, yeah, some people like real, real big people. You can't get the, the, the life jacket on them, right? Because they're pear shaped. And so you tighten it on the lower pear part and then they get in the water and it shoots up because it doesn't get there. And I'm like, and he's like clearly like frustrated at someone in another boat. No one in our boat is, is that yeah. body type. Like we all can wear, you know, we're very fit. We can wear life you're all shaped enough <laughs> like hu You're all shaped enough like a human being that yes. the human being size stuff fits you. Yes. And so we're all there's good. There's a mutant in the other boat though, right? <laughs> there's a this guy this guy is enormous in the other boat and we are in I guess our like teacher cuz there's a guide in every raft. Like he, our guide was like the grand poobah, the main in charge guy. And so as they're all going, he's like we're on the cleanup crew. So in case anybody gets stuck on a rock or a rapid or something, we can go over there and I can help them out and we'll guide them out of that. And this big fat guy fell out of the boat maybe 100 yards into this trip. <laughs> like we we were still in the back we had not gone yet our guy was like all right you know stevie joe you're up next go ahead and then he would go and then the guy like right in front of us went and he's even like commentating for us he's like we're gonna hold back a little bit you know it looks like they're struggling getting congested up there little oh and he was like talking like to his guides he's like oh big jim oh big jim get that get him over that rock 
get him over. Don't you stick up on. Oh, Jesus. And then like, and like <laughs> and he's like, oh, they're not going over that one. Oh, no. And then the guy fell out and he falling out almost feels like not dramatic enough. It's like like he, he barreled into the water from the boat. Clear. <laughs> it's and, like when you watch like a skyscraper or something huge fall in slow motion. You're like, oh, yeah. there you go. Like when they drop a rock from the top of the dam and you see yeah. the giant splash. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They He falls out and immediately every they, they had just gone over the safety thing of like, all right, if somebody falls out in the rapids, you turn them towards the boat. And then you like grab onto their thing and you like just lean back into the boat and pull them. <laughs> yeah. And this boat in front of us has this big fat guy like back to the boat in the water and they're like trying to pull it up, but he's too fat and his back is arching and they can't get him back out of the water. He's wet so, now. Like, so like two <laughs> other boats, and they're like, we're like trying to catch up at this point, but like two other boats, like almost like the, uh, the, the, the national guard or the coast guard c- come around him and they like all help get this guy back in. But like the rest of the trip, we had to remain like three, 400 yards back behind this specific boat. Wow. Because because this guy at any point could cause Was he problems. alone? Was he alone? No. Or he had like friends. It was him and three other people and the guide oh, in there. See, that sucks because if he's by himself, then we can yell. But I don't want to start a whole like fight with a group of people. I could, you know, I, I, I could mock the fat man and then keep my distance. But I don't want to like, get beat up. I mean, if we, if we wanted to <laughs> lose him, we could have lost him. We could have blown right by him. But I just I, like really I feel like the ruining your trip is like my thought process. It's like it's just like if we have to slow down and wait for him. It was one of those things where like, you, like when I saw him fall out, like I felt re- I got that feeling of like, oh, no, like, come on, guy, like, please. Like, I was like embarrassed for him because, you know, he's like in the, the water amusement and park he, when they. Yeah. Make the and he's get like, out of line. Oh, like, this is what I was fearing. Now I'm too heavy to get back in the boat. Tucker, and really, like, I wasn't annoyed somebody? at all. It was it's funny looking back. But my real thought was like just a lot of empathy, like, oh, this poor big fat guy. Like, this was probably his fear today. And now he's going through it. Uh, he brought that on himself oh i was gonna ask if you'd ever seen anybody like who was too fat to go on a roller coaster or something and get removed (laughs) yes i mean not get removed but i mean we've we've i think on several occasions like there's been people that have had like have made the situation around them uncomfortable because of their sheer size and like usually it comes uh for example i live in a, in downtown LA and the one of two grocery stores, there's a Whole Foods, very nice, you know, very clean. There is a Ralph's, not nice nor clean, very much the only other grocery store. And so the creatures that you see egg, enter and exit <laughs> that are like, it's like oblivion characters on randomized. You're like, that is like, <laughs> you're like all right, I, I didn't know they made them like that. But, but, but the way that they have it to like discourage being able to get out of there without your cart is that they have like, a gate it's like a turnstile gate and i've seen on several occasions people that are like i i I think they should get the benefit of the doubt because it can definitely fit a 300 pound person if they're proportioned like Mm five eight you know they're just wide but anything more than that and we're talking like especially people who have like a bag many get stuck and because they get stuck they can't push the turnstile down so then it bounces back and they're in that Mm. awkward position where they just feel like (laughs) So they yell. They're like, ah! ah! It's like, it's like, it's like a creature being caught in a gate, and you're like, you know, this guy gotta come over and like shake it and stuff. You're just like, damn. All right. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think. I damn, I should go to up. Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, what am I gonna do? And it's the I only way in and out. There with so. a can of grease. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, grease me. There's a, there's, there's. There's people that use the, um, I flew into New York LaGuardia airport uh, over the weekend for my cousin's, uh, wedding and they have complimentary carts like for the elderly and fat people who don't want to walk the very large airport. And so they do have these on super uncomfortable looking plastic. They almost look designed like like the benches outside of like uh libraries to like be mm. uncomfortable for homeless not to sleep there yeah and like so those. but the, yeah and but so i saw like benches <laughs> yeah but i saw so many just you know like very very morbidly overweight people overflowing on this very plastic see-through plastic thing mm-hmm. and it's just like at what point 
is there are you making the conscious decision like i know it looks awful like i know it is just completely it, it, you know not made for me this is for people who have like yeah who like physically can't get anywhere and it's just like no they get out they'll like get out and walk to when they realize they can't fit in it it's like okay what the fuck yeah yeah i don't know i, I i've told the story before but i saw a lady who would not fit in i think superman the ride <laughs> and, and six flags over georgia i think it was superman um it was like a stand-up coaster you know you sit on the bike seat thing mm -hmm. and the top thing the clamshell clamps down and it wouldn't clamp down on her and they were just like i'm sorry ma'am it's it's not gonna happen and she had to like she was in the front, like the very front car, and I was one behind her, and they, they got her ass out, and she left. It was And she was like, in the front. It's a longer line to get to the front, too. Yeah. You have to wait a little bit extra longer. I don't know if she had the fast pass. I always get that thing. Um, I don't know. It, I can't imagine going to an amusement park without a fast pass. Like I can't imagine going to an amusement park anymore if you haven't done in-depth research on how to get there and min-max or stay. Like, it mm. makes me anxious when people are like, we're just going to King's Dominion and figuring it out. And I'm like, <laughs> like, like no, I don't think we should. It's a Saturday. It's Labor Day, and it's yeah. hot out. Like, I don't think we should choose any other day. But, uh, That's so true. No, I yeah. don't think we should. I'm I think we should have an well agenda in place. Because <laughs> otherwise, you're going to walk in and it'll be like what do we do first i don't know let's have a 22 minute bicker fest about it yeah. and waste time. <laughs> i want to go and check out the line at the coaster at the back all right and then we can walk back here to the front and then ride our ride it's like <laughs> shut the fuck up yeah okay, we'll get there we need to uh, go to rides i do this ride I do them the exact three or four times yeah and then move to the next one yeah I, I usually try to go uh on a day when i don't think there's gonna be a lot of traffic like a tuesday early as the, they open on a rainy day like it's oh, final rain huh yeah like, like if it's drizzling as long as it's not pouring or anything the coasters go faster <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like some up, you think? i can't argue with it I, yeah I they know. have a they have a stand-up coaster and uh, i go unconscious at the bottom of the the second loop-de-loop -loop every time it's really fun <laughs> it's like uh the one that they have called the goliath at the six flags here i want to take yep. you paramotoring now that i know that I'll... oh yeah you're gonna yeah, knock me out and kill me i'm gonna get high oh, hoping you go there. unconscious is at the, the bottom goliath of our the acro one, moves is the goliath, like the top thrill dragster in cedar point where it just <sighs> fires you out and you go straight up and right back yeah, uh no i can't remember if that's the case or not um but i but it, it it's the tallest one it's like this orange thing and they kind of built it so it goes under underground right there's a bridge etc mm -hmm. but the reason that i like it so much because you know like it's if you do get your head down you'll kind of black out at the bottom of the uh of the thing is because when you get to the top you can see with a hundred percent certainty if there's ever a wildfire because it's just you're sitting in in like the north area of la county mm -hmm. It, it, like the sun setting it's beautiful and then there's just like eight or nine fires that you can see out in the distance puffing <laughs> and you're like oh baby it's a great roller coaster <laughs> that's great fun view. makes you feel a little high yeah risk. yeah <laughs> while you're up there i like, love that's coming coasters. closer roller coasters are a nice blend of safety and and fun like it's well, not I, fun enough it's not woody is bored yes, by roller coasters look at that I imagine look at that that's a that's a pretty scary little drop and then you go underground yeah, that I looks like, like a roller ton coasters of fun. a lot. I think they're fun. I don't know that the like fun to weight ratio is good enough. Now I know Kyle no. fast passes, but I'm, my experience is like Disney <clears throat> World and stuff where it still sucks. Oh, Disney, Disney is the World worst. Had no though. experience. Disney um, is the, literally the worst, and I can and I have and I live here, and so I've had to pass and stuff. It's just simply I know people talk about it. You live here? You talking live, about Disneyland? I'm, I'm Disneyland. Sorry, I don't. Okay. You know, same thing in my head. But like you, you know, when you make it such a pilgrimage spot, and people. For better or for worse now, or it's easier to get there and whatever. Like it's mm -hmm. not necessarily like the bucket list trip. People are like, you want to go uh, again? And I, it's just they put too many people in the park. So you're right. The weight to doing anything ratio, unless it's a specific day or you have like exclusive access, is awful. You're getting in like five rides for the day. And I yeah. think that, like, what's the point? That sucks. So I think if you flags. stay in the Disney World hotels, you get fast passes all day. I'm pretty sure that's right. But yeah, that's more, more money. Like, more money to the god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kyle's like, why wouldn't you get the fast passes? Mm -hmm. The thing is, it's expensive, right? We're paying, like, 
a thousand bucks a night for these hotels. It's not like you're paying mm-hmm. an extra hundred for a good for a good time. See, Six Flags is like Six Flags is, is roller coasters anyway. Like fuck all that. Actually, they do have a bunch of kiddie shit. They've got the the right, but it's more fun. Like uh, theme parks are cool, but but roll or sorry, whichever the the amusement parks, whichever the ones with the roller coasters, mm-hmm. mostly yeah. are the ones that I want to go to. Same. I don't want to sit and you know on a log flume ride that has like a Chucky. That's you where know, we get dog. high. Exactly. We, they have yeah. one of those here, but that's where you get stoned in the in the like the tunnel of like spooky ghosts and whatever. And you got to go to can... to Cedar Point, Ohio, for the amazing. They have the park. crazy one. They have the the entire. There's not even like there's like a tiny little area where it's like ye old corn dog shop, and that is all the fucks they <laughs> give about flavor. It's all about <laughs> the roller coasters, which is what you want. It's great. I, um, it's the best you can one. go to Six Flags out, uh, here in Atlanta and just you can ride every ride two or three times and just a few hours. Like 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 it's when you've got the fast pass and the VIP bracelet shit, you not only skip to the front of the line, um, and you've only got to wait on other people who have the same shit. So there'll be like five of them. Like the coaster will run five times in five minutes. So your your line waiting is literally five minutes. You've still got to walk all the way there, but it's actually a short. They give you a shortcut. Uh, like, like it's like all right everybody else you head out that way and then come back you sir right this way yeah that's the roller coaster <laughs> right there get in it's uh, and then once you ride it once you come back and you're like want to go again you're like absolutely and you just close the clamshell down and you watch the person who actually just waited like 37 minutes or some shit go oh because <laughs> they thought they were next but no i wasted money <laughs> and now i have to go the second time it's it's the most power you can have over another human being for 45 dollars <laughs> the, the power to yeah, ruin their it. day yeah i remember it, there was a story right. in like the early 2000s i, I must have been like 10 and it was like I remember me and my friends talking about it. They had built this new roller coaster called like the boss or like some big wooden roller coaster that we were advertising about on at six Flags St. Louis. And like, there was this big story of like, Oh, this one guy is riding it all day, every day to break the record of the most times riding a wooden coat, like something like that. Mm -hmm. And I remember like all of us, like nine, 10, 11 years old, just being like, Oh, that's got to be like the coolest guy ever. And like then, <laughs> and then like as an adult thinking about it and being like, man, like so that's, that's a loud alarm bell that someone is suffering. Like someone, <laughs> someone, someone in that gentleman's life needs to ask how he's doing and, <laughs> and be a helping oh, friend on. because that time. person is miserable. <laughs> Like, if you had to write it for, like, eight hours, that would honestly be a fun record to go for. But if it's, like, two days or something, oh, if I've got to take a shit. End. Like, <laughs> weeks, what? Wow, he just kept was writing it? writing it for, like, a whole summer. Come on. He was shitting on that thing and, and, and like, like sleeping on it? <clears throat> I don't know. But I remember, oh, come on. Like, if it was weeks. I, I didn't really read the news was at it the not, time. A lot of it you, was, like, rehashed information I was getting from other 10-year-olds. Do you think that he now. has, do you think that he has, um like, brain like severe like not brain damage but like there's got to be some sort of side effects to riding a rickety thing where you're just constantly no. in vibration nah, especially wooden fine. because you're just like i bet you you're, you're, when you yeah. got you think he's getting because... brain addled from riding the coaster too much yes, i don't know it, it's a wooden coaster even the smoothest you're wooden coasters brain are addling <laughs> this is some 15th century kooky shit like i don't know it's no, 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 too hard her ovaries will fall out <laughs> Kyle, in my defense, I don't know what addling means. So, <laughs> so I can't see, he's written a lot of road war. Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's but I just don't know. Like women what? couldn't fly because they, <laughs> yeah. like some what, other anatomy what, wouldn't work. What rattles your brain? Like, what does it take to cause a little Concussions. damage? Well, okay, sure, but impacts. A, lots of little impact. If I vibrated your head with a massage gun. That's not awful. It doesn't fuck you up, but eventually it's bad for you, right? No, it's good for you. Yeah. You're very relaxed. <laughs> no, you'd be. Yeah, yeah I just. Up. Wait, how long are you going to vibrate your brain? This, this is, is a new case study. Just like I've got a Theragun and I'm just going to take it to the back of my head for a bit. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put a Theragun weeks. on your head for eight hours and see if you remember where your keys are. Well, maybe not yeah. a Theragun. <laughs> I was thinking of like one of those old time vibrators, but a Theragun is like. Oh, like a <laughs> magic wand? Yeah, like well, there's wand. no head protection on a lot of the wooden ones, so you're just. I always kind bring of my helmet. Shaken. <laughs> you always bring a helmet. <laughs> you, you, you want to talk about a way to get to button line to the theme park? Bring a helmet. <laughs> oh, they're like, bring a whoa, branded get helmet. On this. 
Yeah. <laughs> Bring a well-worn here. helmet with like 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 Disney stickers that are partially rubbed off. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> And just that, for yeah, you guys, you put a little spinny thing on the top. By the way, you know? no, it's a big dent. <laughs> Stop big the dent. There is a way to make Disney World fun. And it's not fast pass and it's not staying at the thing. Wheelchair. It's bringing a disabled child. Yes. No, okay. It's okay. Yeah. You know, we they have, have this worked called... that benefit. And, and uh, yeah. you will enter every ride through the exit line and they just put you right on. It's, <laughs> I've gone with Kitty before. Maneuver. And uh, and gotten the wheelchair uh, uh, ride. That's okay. Pretty, that's pretty sweet. A lot of ramps yeah. involved though. Make you take the long way. And I'll You're right. For that. I, I mean, I don't do it. I mean, she. You make her push herself, yourself, obviously. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. I mean, Kyle's training. obviously dragging his fake club foot behind him, so, <laughs> so he can't be bothered to do that. They yeah, never Kyle the club would be foot. That's how you tired get if in. he had to push her. We can't have that. No. 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 I I I, I like the I like Six Flags. I, think... I haven't been to a lot of other ones. Like, we went to Disney fucking land or some shit when we were in la one time me and white boy and i remember like and x jaws and, and, and kitty and i remember on the way back we drove past like whatever the cool coaster park is out there like you could see all the coasters like <laughs> like a spring stretched out and thrown in a pile and i was like oh my fucking god this exists we wrote <laughs> teacups god damn it <laughs> like we spent all day on bullshit rides like like thinking we had gone to the see, park point in tucker's column you needed to go with the plan you got to look up oh, what are the mm -hmm. rides what's my priority yep. list of rides because a lot of the so time you can go moment. oh epcot i don't give a fuck about a guy selling bad quality italian food i want to go to the no ride. you go to epcot to get hammered but you're right you're not going in there to like experience anything else it's just i i think i think yeah, I think you could have done better with the plan, but also <laughs> like even going to any of those parks, like there's not a good theme park in California. It's too busy here. It's just you need to go to Cedar Point or like mm. the off brand place where there's nothing else but the theme park. Like that's why people go there. You know? Oh, like and that's the other thing. What he's talking about the stay it, 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 when you're at Disney um, World. When, if you if you're lucky enough to come to beautiful Six Flags over Georgia, there's a motel right next door, <laughs> forty seven dollars a night. You're you're good. Ooh. You're good. You're gonna love the. I don't want some shitty room. The 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 door oh. better lead directly to my room from the oh, outside. Oh, absolutely. No, we don't make you. We don't waste your time in some big <laughs> lobby and some fancy hotels. We oh, don't good. got no fancy stairs neither. The slide works. <laughs> Dude, it sounds it it this this hotel. It sounds like there have just been a series of parades outside my room since I sat down. <laughs> just oh, uh, I can hear people. I can't imagine like, how loud I am to other people because I can hear like <laughs> normal level talking. The last time Two feet that way. I did an acro weekend, there were Mexicans singing outside my door. Just all, and they weren't half bad. What'd you do about it? <laughs> Nothing. I was, I was <laughs> and there were like four of them, but but like they were just all. Is that all? talented well, is that all they were talented singers they had the radio going and they were singing along as if they were trained at this by the pool while drinking and i'm like i darn yeah they were, do you fans? work here or like <laughs> yeah, right like is this the entertainment because english please <laughs> i know Tucker. sing in racist. english <laughs> I didn't say anything. Being, being upset about mariachi pants singing in I, I think the group the... of here fucking sing in english <laughs> <laughs> you better learn to speak american yeah <laughs> uh, Kyle, yeah, we haven't yeah, talked yeah. about iran yet and it was on your list of topics you wanted oh to cover. man was so it i the, guess the morality police good job I guess the morality police beat a young lady to death over not wearing her uh, her headscarf, hijab, or whatever it is. Um, so she wore it. She didn't wear it correctly. Yeah, there's some hair showing. The, hell. Well, the morality well, look, police took her into custody where she. What do you see? Died. Somebody with their helmet not buckled up right. Are they wearing a helmet or aren't they? Like 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 like, like that ain't gonna work. <laughs> okay, I'll tell okay. you this: you're in NASCAR. You got that bitch unbuckled. They're gonna disqualify you. Kyle, you make a strong point. point. So there she yeah. was, hijab. So the NASCAR buckled. morality police would take you in and kill you. Okay, so you know they 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 come by, they check they check out. You know her her. I would start to watch NASCAR. Yeah, if I'm going to be honest with you, I think if NASCAR <laughs> was one car was at a and as and aggressive, now taking him out to kill him. As <laughs> rock, rock, like, or Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s hijab has slipped across the most recent turn. So <laughs> he's going to be seeing a lot of hair. This. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that thing is over the top center of her head. If your screen is small, and maybe you're in a phone, 
So it's hard to there's tell. There's a morality a police. Yeah, they have like religious police there. Yeah, yeah, I think Saudi Arabia also has morality police. Yeah, Barry so they beat her to death. Um, so they beat her to death, and now I think women uh, nationwide there in Iran are protesting, uh, burning their hijabs in the street. And I've seen a couple of clips of Iranian. They're not wearing proper uniforms, but they're often referred to as like police or something. And they've got mil- okay. they've got gear like tasers and stuff. But I saw like a cop with a with like a club and a stun gun and he's like stay back Brrr. and he's like he's like using the Brrr thing and it's flashing blue and they just beat the shit out of him 30 strong <laughs> like, like, say, like you know not, like I, I i it's not like I in smoke. movies where one guy gets to keep taking two at a time and you got to see what happens in real life when 30 just people want to whoop your ass I saw, I saw them like, try to grab a woman who wasn't wearing her, her hijab like morality police like hi you too huh they grab her ass and start dragging her away. Again, Jesus. 30 people attacked that man. And I don't know if they killed him or not, but he's not awake anymore. I, I saw a similar thing. So this guy's on a motorcycle and he spots a woman either not wearing a hijab or hijab. I'm not sure. She's yeah. either not wearing it correctly or she's not wearing one at all because it's in the midst of oh this protest. Mm-hmm. And uh, he hops off his motorcycle and he hits her. Pow! Just like whacks her up on side of the head, kind of like a palm strike. And there are like 22 men nearby who aren't having it. The guy thinks he's going to go back on his motorcycle just having taught her a lesson. And nay, nay, nay. They pull him off his motorcycle. They put him down on the ground and they start like group kicking him and they yes. beat the fuck out of this guy. Yeah. And, and I don't know what happens to him. Like, they don't show them saying, "All right, he's had enough." Let him. <laughs> like that, that's that part. It's not part of the video. It, it, no, they just cut it. It never is over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, "All right, he's unconscious. Now, what do we want to do?" <laughs> no, <something> awful. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I wonder uh, if this guy's put his really up his it's asshole. Is it, it's, a, it's like, are there mass over there. mass yeah, protests there going mass on now? Protests, yeah. It would seem. Uh, and and it seems like guys and girls have had enough of this hijab thing. I saw you know what? I the think... pistol <clears throat> shooting into the crowd. He was going bang, 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 like shooting people with a handgun. Jesus Christ! Wild, crazy stuff. They're having some real what protests. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. Iran's going bonkers. I wonder if the there won't be a revolution over this, right? It It'll would. I assume down. it would be like. I assume it would be. Uh, something involving like a wow i assume it would be something like the younger more secular uh or secular like uh locations less, yeah city, right urban yeah. yeah the ones that are more like i guess i'll call it modern like forward thinking for that area are going to be the ones that are actively calling for change but if the moral police and everybody else involved is 68 and ancient to like further thinking can have directionality <sighs> what jesus what a bigot <laughs> I thought, like, forward <laughs> thinking oh i have no idea yeah you know i just whatever i mean uh, i would be interested in like what what is the actual what's the breakdown over there of people who are like yes i love religious police versus people who are like this is archaic we don't want this is it yeah. I, I don't it's know. hard to think that so the way that women have worn hijabs in iran i understand is getting more and more s- I'm going to call it slutty because it's funny. But like, it used to be you couldn't see hair at all. And then you could see a little bit in front. And now they're wearing it like almost like my headset oh, is, right? Where like you, half full, your head is showing. She's got her full brow beaming, boys. <laughs> and and the, the hijab is just sort of working its way back to where women I actually have a scared. hairstyle while wearing it. And uh, I guess the morality police put their foot down over this. They don't like the way this is trending. And the uh, population is like, you're fucking insane. Well, they did beat that woman to death. Um, I, I, I Presumably, maybe she, maybe she had asthma, and that's why she died in custody. Oh, yeah, that was your take on that other thing. The, the, I'm uh, often wrong about these things. That gentleman that the cops murdered. I don't remember oh, which one that was, but I believe you. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> which one it was either. No, it's it's hard yeah. to keep up with them. Police activity remains to be my favorite <laughs> YouTube channel in existence where they just show you show you that that raw if they do edit it they only do so t- for entertainment purposes they just make it a better story and it's just <laughs> it's just cops shooting it out all day every day and so many people like god if they tell you to get out get out don't drive towards them they'll shoot you 12 times 
Like, like I, I, you see so many people get shot on there, unless it's a woman. I've noticed that if it's a woman and she drives toward the cops, they'll usually let her go and like crash into eight more cars. But if it's ever a dude, they light him up. Mm. Like for car chases specifically? Like there's this scenario that happens a lot where the person's in a car and they won't get out and the cops have their guns out and the person wants to drive away and the cops are standing in front. And if you drive towards them, you are now like like endangering their lives. Yeah, them. you've mm. already started. We've already began the attempted murder charges or the assault with a deadly weapon charges, and like they oftentimes will just start shooting the driver over and over in those scenarios. But I've seen that it, it definitely matters, like who the person is. Hmm. I saw a lady in Georgia. She must have rammed like twelve cars. She's got a kid in the back seat, like a toddler or something. And they find they well, have to why sandwich they can't her. Shoot the yeah, they can't shoot because they can't the just light them up. <laughs> yeah, because because you couldn't see the kid well enough to make sure you hit it anyway. You gotta wait till we get the door open. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> you know, I want to wing that little fucker. We thought it was a small dog. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, no, they had to like sandwich her with like a car in front and a car in back, and like up, when they got her out, she was like. What? What'd I do? She had rammed 12 cars. They'd been beating <laughs> on the windows, begging her to stop. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> like, what are you I taking saw that me? One. She had a baby <laughs> in the car, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that. Do you, I, do you? I tried to look up what happened to her. Like, I, I, I found her name and I searched, search, like, sentencing and stuff. Maybe it hasn't happened yet because it only yeah. happened in, like, June or July. Just as slow. But. It was an outrageous example of a woman just running over. She ran one guy three times, three times, tried to stop her car by hand. The fuck? What was he thinking? He was like pushing on the hood, trying to stop her car. <laughs> Wouldn't Triple. the car like always win? It's like that man versus car bit from uh, Rick and Morty. Um <sighs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know. That that's the best channel on YouTube. That shit is awesome. There's this huge library that you, that you can go through, uh, and like sometimes it's cops being like actual heroes, saving babies that are dying, like CPR. Not on often, baby. but sometimes. Like just as many, I'd say. I'd say it's. I'd say it's more good cops than bad cops. No selection uh, on, bias on the YouTube. I, channel. I don't. I don't think so because like this channel just shows you like cop interaction. Is I, is there any like is there any like really good like I want a top ten like you know you know version of that where I where it's like top ten like uh, hostage situations number ten you know just go what what I would do then is go to the police activity channel and then go uh -huh. by like views like most views yeah most viewed because the Smart. like like one of the most viewed is like a hero rescue um there's a bunch of them. there's one where like. You know, the, the cop ties a kid's tie who, who's speeding, who's going to like something important. Um, but then there's like fucking shootouts where the, they like knock on the door. Come out of here, James. Get out here. And James opens up with an M16 from inside like it's modern warfare <laughs> and kills a cop immediately. Larry's dead and he's laying there. And then the other cops are like, what the fuck? And they're all shooting just randomly like an action movie into the building. And you can hear the guy in there. Come on! Brrr! And it's like, what have we stumbled into here? Like, like, there's tons of them like that with machine gun wielding bad men. And it's like, how did I not hear about the massacre at, <laughs> at, at on Sixth Street that I'm watching right now? How am I only now <laughs> learning that this happened? It's like some action movie shit. Like one out of ten times, I saw a crazy crackhead go after a female cop with a knife. Like the cop knocks on the door, ma'am, could you come outside? She comes outside with the knife already back and stabbing at her. And she shoots that lady and the lady's guts are out on the ground while she's crawling, still trying to stab while a, a canine unit is dragging her across the ground. And the cop goes, careful there, don't step in the intestines. <laughs> <Or something. laughs> it was, it's so hardcore. Um, and it's this cute it. female cop. And she when she, she gets stabbed a little, it's not bad, it's in the arm. But she screeches over that radio. Ah! Code! Mm -hmm. Whatever co whatever code is for like cute girl get, just got stabbed, <laughs> need some white knights. It's like, like a code <laughs> seventy seven, and every cop within fifty miles came. Like they they were there so fast. It was I'd never seen that kind of response time. The president could be down and they wouldn't have gotten there that fast. They were patching her <laughs> up and killing that other lady like as fast yeah. as they could. It was great. I bet you've seen this footage. Have you seen? It, it was on Reddit today. A Ukrainian drone hovers right over two Russians in a foxhole. And these two Russian men are like practically sleeping, nearly cuddling in this foxhole. And uh, 
you watch these drones, they drop with such precision. As I watch the bomb fall, I'm like, oh, it looks like it's a little off. It's a little off. No, they're never off. Mm -hmm. They can hit hatches and tanks. They can hit, like, I, I swear if I held my palm out, they'd hit it. They're so Probably, good at yeah. it. They should just start hitting them in the head with, like, rocks. <laughs> 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 like, to, like, 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 add some humiliation to it. Like, From Russian like colonel taken out by, an, by a lucky eight, magic eight ball today. A <laughs> Ukrainian kid play, so they they, plays COD. Yeah, when we thought about war, and, we never imagined they'd be wait. using the kill streaks on us. <laughs> they <laughs> drop this bomb in there, and immediately something flies out that I thought was a body, but no one else seemed to think it was, so I don't know. And then the two of them seem okay. Like, they're pulling the blanket off. One of the guys is kind of hugging the other, which okay. I take as a sign of distress, but I don't know. And the other guy is, like, just sort of working his legs, like, figuring it out. And he seems okay. It's a two-minute video, a two-and-a-half-minute video at first. And as it unfolds, he starts moving his leg in a weird way, like he has an extra joint above his knee. Oh, yeah. And you're like, oh, he's hurt. And the other guy who's kind of hugging him stops moving. I think yep. he's dead. It takes him, like, a minute to die. And then the first guy with the bad leg, I think he's dead, too. And the footage just ends. And it's like, God damn, war is hell. Especially if, like modern war seems unfair. You know, like mm -hmm. all war is hell. I don't mean to knock it. But if we're fighting with spears, it's at least like a battle of skills and wits and athleticism mm -hmm. and if such. If we're fighting with spears, the night before we fight with spears, I can find a hole to sleep in and know that you won't dig me out of my hole. Yeah. These guys have no where to hide. They are in a foreign no country protection. where where seemingly like the the locals might fucking kill you, but if if the Ukrainians see you from the sky, they'll just kill you? Like like, like that? Like mm -hmm. like it's like the other team has kill streaks. That's so scary. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. That's not the war that you ever want to fight. It, when I imagine weren't... war, we're on the ground and we're looking for the bad guys and it, Well, like, you know what it's you know you know like the even if you you grew up with like the fetishizing the idea of like I could go to war and like sure. I could get mm -hmm. around, right? It very much highlights the at this point in time war is 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 even more RNG in terms of like like you you are just not going to be safe at any point. You could just uh, yeah. all of a sudden be out on patrol, and it's like the thermal drone saw you. I'm sorry. Like, there's yeah. no fighting <laughs> We're not unskilled. Like, I'm sorry. What, like, what's the like counter? Or or no reckless? Yeah. You just get notified. You were spotted yeah. by a thermal drone. Yeah. You are dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It... it you have to see the footage because, you know, every once in a we've all seen so much death and carnage on the mm. Internet that we're numb mm -hmm. to it. But this one, it, it got past my numbing agent. And I was like, fuck, it just they, like you said, it's so RNG. These guys didn't do anything stupid that I mm -hmm. could see. Well, Everyone has to sleep. And in a foxhole, I mean, what, what were the choices? And fuck. Yeah. They just, and it's like you can't you can't there's no way to like train your way out of it. It's like, oh, that, you know, if that guy was the greatest sniper in global history, it wouldn't have mattered a hill of beans. It's like, yeah, yeah but you yeah. still got caught by the drone. You're done. Well, the problem it is the equipment, matter. right? Like, there's plenty of equipment that would, have, would get rid of those drones. There, there's electronic warfare that would prevent those drones from being able to operate in that area. Not, there, but if, if they if they controlled the area better, then the front wouldn't involve but, guys who are close enough to RC a drone, right? Well, I mean, you say you say that, but then also you're talking about like the the ability all it takes is like one blind spot to let the tiny drone in mm -hmm. versus yeah you know, and like the ability to cover all of that effectively israel, israel doesn't have a problem with that like 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 first world like the united states wouldn't either like like we've got all sorts of things that that shoot down incoming projectiles and uh electronic so warfare capacity, but right? no but you have to assume that, that that's assuming that's putting a lot of assumption that you're even worth the amount of tech that's going into protecting you from that like certainly not those guys right you'd have like how high up on the chain of well, they must actually not fighting so. yeah but like how high up on the chain of actually fighting do you actually get drone protection like but where Kyle brings up a good point yeah. we're in iraq now we were recently in afghanistan and that never happened to us Right, uh, so they didn't, our, our, well, our they enemies didn't, didn't really have that capacity against so, us. Like, so they, they didn't, didn't have, have that capacity. If we were in IEDs, but IEDs, look, you can learn to detect as to the best of your ability, but but at a certain point, you're left to the true randomness of I was the one that checked the pile today, you know, mm -hmm. or like I I'm it's we're driving through. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I, I think it's going to keep going for at least another year. It's going to be uh, lots of cool YouTube videos. I'm seeing lots of guys with GoPros running around. I've seen some crazy battles. Um, I also saw a Ukrainian vaporize like a dozen of his comrades today accidentally by mis uh, uh, identifying another tank. He just blew up a bunch of his buddies. That one's got to feel bad, huh? You vaporize yes. a dozen of your, Jesus your, your guys. There's nobody like double checking that kind of stuff. I remember. I guess in it's, Iraq, war. I, it's war. It's war. <laughs> it's that was Piotr's like, job. <laughs> in Iraq, the <laughs> first war, which you guys were young for, uh, friendly fire was like our biggest cause of death. It was by far the biggest cause. Like, like I, I watched a thing recently, not recent, a couple months ago, and they broke down like. They showed all the units. It made me. Um, I, I know you're. Um, you know somebody who was there. I wanted to ask like what division he was with because they're like. And then the 187th went it like this and did. They really break it down. Saddam had prepared for that trench style warfare, and we went in with those tanks with bulldozers on the front and buried hundreds of them alive. We just drove over them instead of fighting them. <sighs> I didn't know about yeah. that. Damn, it's great. It's great. Yeah, yeah. The guy I know his unit was wildly successful you know yeah just a lopsided battle they so. show like and then and then a unit of like three 13 bradley vehicles and seven show and so's like like broke off to the left but they destroyed everything they ran into so it was okay <laughs> and it was like like every time the americans would make a little mistake it'd be like but they just killed everyone and it worked out yeah. the only thing but for the bad, sixth time they didn't have tanks it was tank. the range it, like it seemed like we had a hundred mile range and they had a 50 mile range i'm making these numbers up mm -hmm. and uh we would just see them first and shoot before they could even do anything our optics were a lot better we had the thermal strategy. optics already um it was uh it was a real uh shooting gallery they killed a lot a lot of iraqis on that what do they call it, the road of death or something <laughs> yeah, I, I think of they death call it the road death death. that they blamed on the russians in call of duty they were like yeah. that <laughs> really whole entire mission is the russians doing the exact like same thing and you're like hmm I just feel like this went differently in my head. <laughs> it did. I just, Dude, mm. it's funny. The U.S. The military is these not <laughs> completely innocent, right? Like, we've done our shit. You go, it's like, how dare they attack civilians? Oh, really? Was Hiroshima a military site? Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. it was. Like, it's like, we're Tokyo in a bit of a glass a house. Fire. I think oh, Hiroshima yeah. was Goodness. a military site. Those I think damn were, Russians I think there were did that. There. They were building stuff in. Uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of them made it, though. I'm sure a lot of them made it. They were probably the workers in the picture. weapons factories. Complicit, complicit everyone. I bet when you get to <laughs> that portion of the road, bucks. when we when you get to that portion in the road we just saw, I bet there's a bit of a feeling like, all right, we get through this part home free. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's like 600 cars there. I, you, there's, you know there's a guy driving. He was like, come on. You think they're just going to blow us up like come on they're not gonna shoot us they see we're giving up and running away oh no <laughs> and they did they killed them all there's that there's that famous shot of like a human skeleton and it looks like something right out of terminator and there's the flashbacks in terminator yeah. where they show the nuclear future with the skeletons and cars hung, hanging on the steering wheels they did that we did that i guess I, I don't know like if, if i can say death. we when yeah. uga is well, number like one i can say we when we we blow up iraqis too yeah, for sure. Those are the rules. Yeah. Speaking of that, so, I'm so pumped. Before Fucking we UGA. jump, oh, before man. we jump to UGA, we're going to oh. hear from a couple of wonderful sponsors, and then we're going to talk all about sports. Uh, this episode of PKA brought to you by Better Help. So let's hear a little about their service. Life is full of twists and turns, and it's important for you to show up for yourself through it all, mental and dental. Got to take care of it all. We're very serious about everyone taking care of their physical health here on PKA and maintaining a healthy physique. But mental health is just as important, and you need to work to keep your mind in shape as well as your body. Start getting in the mental reps with the help of a professional over at BetterHelp. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people all over the world. 
It's super simple. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. And with ease, you're able to schedule weekly video or phone sessions. Video is not a requirement, by the way. You can do whatever you're comfortable with and take advantage of professional help being only a few clicks away. Invest in your mental well-being now and get started with our partner, BetterHelp. They've got a special deal for our listeners, saving 10% off your first month over at betterhelp.com slash PK. That's 10% off your first month of online therapy over at betterhelp.com slash PKA. Uh, support yourself today by heading over there right now and signing up for your first month. That's 10% off your first month of online therapy over at betterhelp, betterhelp.com slash PKA. Check them out if that is something you're interested in. Uh, this episode of PK also brought to you by Death by Gummy Bears and Wonky Weeds. Are you or a loved one sick of mediocre or even bad THC alternatives? I know I am. Well, we've got great news for you. DeathbyGummyBears.com and WonkyWeeds.com have you covered. Death by Gummy Bears and Wonky Weeds were founded by a group of passionate professionals who were sick and tired of low-quality Delta 8 and THC alternative products that are spray-coated and very often incorrectly dosed. That's why DeathbyGummyBears.com and WonkyWeeds.com had the boys in the lab cook up high-quality, powerful THC alternative products that are accurately dosed and actually taste great. Looking for a super strong 100 milligram Delta 8 gummy that'll put you on your ass? Then deathbygummybears.com is for you. Looking for a mellow, relaxing high? Then the cartridges, disposables, pre rolls, and distillates and weaker gummies over at wonkyweeds.com are more your speed. So whether you're trying to get absolutely shit housed or just have a nice, relaxing night at home, we've got the Delta 8 or THC alternative product for you. With so many satisfied customers all around the USA, American-based WonkyWeeds.com and DeathByGummyBears.com serves all states where hemp-derived THC is legal. So whether you're a current THC enjoyer or just interested in trying something new, go to WonkyWeeds.com or DeathByGummyBears.com and use code PKA20 for 20% off your order. Once again, that's WonkyWeeds.com or DeathByGummyBears.com, code PKA20 for 20% off your order. And for a limited time, for a limited time, folks, you can go to wonkyweeds.com and use promo code PKA50 PKA fifty to get 50% off the Delta 8 bar vapes, the disposable Delta 8 bar vaporizers. Those are 50% off over at wonkyweeds.com with code PKA50. And for any other goods, you'll need to check out separately and use PKA20. But if you're looking to try something, you know, don't want to jump in with, with both feet, 50% off. I think that brings them down to like a little over 10 bucks each. It's a gram of Delta 8 and nice, nice gentle high to get you in on it. So check it out. PKA 20 for anything else. PKA 50 for those Delta 8 bars. And yeah, get, get, get yourself some, some fun, high quality stuff that will get you pretty fucking high. Also, <laughs> this episode of PKA is brought to you by Lock and Load. Lock and Load is the finest comb pill in America, bar none. And that's coming from someone who has no financial interest in the product selling. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing about Lock and Load. There are people, silly people who don't know what they're saying that say, why would you want to shoot? Aggressively propulsive pearlescent white ropes across your lady. Right? They, they, I mean, but nobody says it doesn't work. They might say, yes. why do you want this? But 100% of people agree, it'll make you come a lot. That's an excellent point. People may say, why? And they can <laughs> ask that. <laughs> people may say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what's wrong with you in your life? But they will never say, I don't bust more. Because that, that just keeps on keeping on. Even the reviews, everyone says, everyone's talking about it. You're going to bust. You're going to love it. So... Check it out, lock and load, code JIZ or code PKA, and uh, save some money on that. Check out lock and load if you're still waiting. Lots of fun, and it will make you uh, come more, in my experience, in all of our experience. So <laughs> there we go. And that was it. That was it. We're good. So be sure to uh, check out lock and load, check out better help below, and check out wh wonky weeds and death by gummy bears. All right. Sorry. I, I stepped right on Kyle's super interesting topic of UGA football. <laughs> so I know everyone's really excited, so we don't even have to wait for him. Who's your what's your favorite part about UGA football? <laughs> I don't have a favorite part about I, UGA football. There's, for me, it's, it's um, hard to narrow down. <laughs> my team nc state unless i'm mistaken is undefeated as a matter of fact no one has ever won more games in that number of attempts so possibly the best team ever that's incredible yeah that's great yeah are you are you ranked is nc state ranked they are actually and by our standards it's a good ranking i'm gonna look it up but i think they're 12 12 you're right 
Damn, good for them. That is awfully high. <clears throat> Not as I high as, as Georgia, who is like over double, almost doubled up on the coaches poll of Alabama. Impressive. Yeah, Alabama is looking real beatable this year. They barely squeezed one out against Texas, I think. Um, I think it was maybe a point, and it was a low-scoring game. Uh, UGA's defense, I don't think, has given up any any points that weren't just kind of like they brought on some backup guys. Like I literally don't think they've given up very many points at all. I had those crazy stats I showed you the other day. It was absurd. Like, yeah, we it, might it, go back to press back national titles. It looks like there are. 62, 64 possible first place votes, and UGA has 59 of them. And it was I can't get yeah. into college football or college sports anymore because, and I think a large portion of it is because I didn't go to college um, mm. full time. And so I don't have that like alliance outside of what I grew up. I like used to love UNC uh, football and basketball because my whole family went there. But like now, I just find it hard to stay into in, like involved because the turnover rate of athletes, especially good ones, it's like I'm almost rooting for players to be just good enough to carry my team, but not good enough to get poached in their freshman year. And I'm like, well, that mm-hmm. generational talent is gone. Like, I mean, yeah. and so I, it's like a lot easier for me to build a um, comfortable fan base and fandom around like pro sports but i like um, it more because mm -hmm. they are still human beings they haven't become professional athlete drones yet um so they're just kids so the pressure is definitely getting to them uh, often and 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 that's a big part of the game i like Mm -hmm. that it's a different it's a different version of football um it's so much higher scoring like it is just a shootout every time yeah you can have a a, a wider kind of offense uh that's fun you know that's how you get guys like tim tebow who go on and make failures and fools themselves when they go to the the pros but win titles in in college but no i i love these stats for georgia georgia has won 18 straight regular games uh margin of victory in that stretch is 33 points um they're 21 and one in their last 22 games they've won 17 of those games by at least three store scores um just They've outscored their opponents this season 130 to 10. They thrown- <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wait, you know what's crazy? I Well, it's only been three games, or right, then, because I watched them this week, and it was like 45 nothing. And I remember sitting down, looking at the TV, going, close game, huh? And my cousin was like, yeah, I don't know why it's on. And I was like, was okay. South Car- <laughs> we played South Carolina last week, and uh, I think it was That's like, who it was, yeah. 48 like to 40 something to 7. Yeah, yeah I'm looking at it. It was 48 ball. to 7, but the first game... 49 to 3 was against the number 11 ranked team. Wow. So that, that's more impressive to me. That was like, a whooping. I think we're playing Kent State tomorrow, um, or or Saturday rather. So I'll that should be an right. absolute trouncing. Uh, I'll make sure to watch yeah. that. I, I think, yeah, but then they've like got those. a they've got to really scrounge it together because they've got Mizzou on the first of October. <laughs> and <laughs> that's you know is Mizzou, Mizzou also getting votes? No, <laughs> no, oh, okay. no, Mizzou is not looking good. They're getting votes, ever. but it's for a different kind of kind of uh they're 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 playing for worst team in the sec that's their Mm. no we will not be worse than vanderbilt we'll say absolutely not um but no i'm pretty pumped we might go back to back here with national titles it's actually you know it's looking more likely that that happens than not i guess um and then the braves are doing well i think we're going to get into the playoffs maybe as the uh the wild card i'm hoping so i haven't looked lately but it was the yankees are going to make the playoffs and i I know they're not the top team and they're, they're not the Top playoff team, either. but the I just I keep maintaining it. it's a little more interesting when the Yankees are in it. Sure, okay. Um, I I just I just want to get another shot at the um the Dodgers every year. I just want the Dodgers to lose, and I, I go Dodgers. Them. I don't give a fuck about baseball. <laughs> I, I, like I literally, it is God so it. hard. A hundred and sixty damn games a year, and I'm like, I, I I really truly can enjoy playoff baseball because. You can kind of, I feel that storyline, you know, the best of fives or mm-hmm. best of seven series and stuff. Like, I like that. And it does feel like there's stakes to it and 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 whatnot. But I just cannot get into, hey, guys, it's the 48th game of the season. It's our second game of four against the Colorado Rockies. <laughs> We're playing. Like, like, the game is made for people who, like, what have a am radio or like drive like drive <laughs> i agree a lot or like i agree anything. it's really good on the radio it's so good for passive listening that i love that part of the sport because there's mm-hmm. always a game on but i hate it as like anybody trying to be anything less than like a casual or more than a casual fan it's like that's too much 
It's no, I agree. Finesse. I agree. I, I usually start watching um, when it gets to playoff time, um, but I don't like regular season baseball. I don't like regular season anything, really. Um, MMA doesn't have a regular season. It's always You're right. It's of, always a like, thing. For blood, you know. Um, I, I, MMA, I, I, I'm going to start think. I think we shouldn't even think of it as a sport because it's a fight promotion is what we really like because mm-hmm. I don't watch a lot of Bellator, if I'm being honest. I'm a UFC fan. That's what I am. I like yeah. the concoction of Joe Rogan and Dana White and this weird thing that they're doing over there. I like the drama of and the WWE something? nature of it. Today I learned that Joe Rogan has a clause in his contract that when Dana White leaves the company, he gets to go to. Like he is, mm-hmm. I think he has the option of leaving. If Dana White leaves, like a package deal. Contract's over. Yeah. I thought that was you think he, he, you um, think he wants to leave? You think he would? I, I mean, that's what he said. Yeah, the way, the, well, Joe's the one who like explained that. He's like, oh, when he leaves, I leave. Like that, that's in my contract. Like that, no, I mean, like, Joe do you said. think do you think that Dana you think he'd like exercise that is the question? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Joe is a little tuckered out of the scene. Like he doesn't like traveling really far for events. He mm-hmm. tends to do the Vegas ones. Um, he only likes to do the big ones. If there aren't fights on the card that appeal to him, he just passes on them and lets someone else do that card. So the idea that Joe would retire and leave the sport seems I'm not sure that. I, like, I think yeah, being a UFC about, commentator is a teeny tiny platform compared to his podcast. Well, like he, he has a he has he's a the biggest broadcast on thing. the planet. All right, so Joe, so Joe started working with the UFC around UFC 11, working for free. He was like, "Like I know you can't pay me. Um, I'll come and do this gig. Could you get my friends some cool tickets and like get my hotel?" Like he worked like that for years. Um, really? he, he has a passion for MMA and, and for the UFC and, and like he, he, I think he truly thinks of himself as blessed that he gets to go and sit where he sits. Cause that's something that like, I guess money can kind of buy it, but it's so much money. It's no, 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 it's, no. It's access. It's, it is it literally on two, two fronts. You can love something and still be a part of it and whatever. And I'm sure even if he did step away, there's no way that he's going to, uh, like you, when like he the fight of the year, him. right? Well, okay. I mean, from like the sport, like, like, no. like, like he would still be into it. Like, like it's something that he likes, you know, it's something he cares about. He's still and got think, great tickets, but I don't know that he'd sit at the apron of the ringside. He's, yeah, exactly. Like, like those tickets mm. in particular being to sit. And, and not only that, after the fight's over, he's the guy who goes in there and talks to him. And it's not like, like you see how it is now. It's, he's not like, Hey, nice to meet you, man. They're like, Joe Rogan. What's up, Joe Rogan? Joe Rogan experience, <laughs> yeah. y'all. I, <laughs> I dreamed of him talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> Chael Sonnen had the best take on that ever. Joe Rogan's like, what, what does it feel like? You just took him out. You did this, that, and the other. He's like, this moment isn't about me, Joe Rogan. This is about you. I want to know how it feels to be this close to the most electrifying man in fighting <laughs> sports. How does it feel? Are you shaking in your boots standing next to Chael in Chael's <laughs> octagon in Chael's arena surrounded by Chael's fans? And how does it feel? And he's like, Joe tries to answer. Well, we don't have time for that, though. <laughs> he's, like, like, he's got this old bit and it's like he's killing it. It was so good. And he, of Dude, course, you know that he's the ever. type of guy who was in front of that mirror rehearsing this for hours. But the thing about it is he's got to pull that out of his pocket. After taking a beating, if you watch him do that speech, he's fucked up. His hair's all mussed up. He's all scraped up and sweaty, bruised under his eyes, and he's still rehearsing that thing like an actor. He's great. Yeah. He, I don't no care if he did beat those better. women up. I, say that again? I don't care if he did beat those women up well, in the hotel. I, it's my understanding it was a fair fight. Like No one accused him of bringing a weapon. That's right. So well, what's the He problem? is the weapon. Yeah, that's... Maybe they had it coming. It seems who, like they talked some shit. Who do they replace Bruce with? Like, who do they replace? They Bruce got, Walker he, still does it, right? They yeah, no, will but they? at some point, they will have to move on from it. Okay. And there's they, this and, uh, chubby and bald guy that they do the for thing. the... So there's like, a chubby bald guy that, that does his gig when he's not there. Mm-hmm. Tremendous voice. Like, he'll hit it. You won't even miss him. You, you honestly won't. Oh, okay. He doesn't do a little dance or anything and wear silly suits. But his voice is so strong. Whenever he's doing the fight night cards or whenever they're in Europe, that guy, I'm sh- I always think about that. I'm like, they offered to fly Bruce Buffer to Europe and he said <laughs> no for some reason. But he never does. He always goes to the European cards. But if they're in like some shithole part of the world that they're experimenting on some fight night card, 
here comes that chubby bald guy. Hello, <laughs> fight fans! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, this guy will take $17,000 to fly to Thailand. We know yeah. it now. Yeah, that that's how I think of when Rogan doesn't headline a card. Like, like, oh, like, oh is the top of the card Ferguson? You know, he's got the, a hundred Rogan... million dollar contract back home though. That I, and I, I bet it's hard to like fly to the UK and do a card and and then get back home to to do your scheduled show with or so and so. Even and even if you like it, like okay, here's a good example. How many of us or how many times did we get invited to do something? You know, play a game or something, and you're straight up like, well, that that's enough for me. Like I don't need to do any more of that, or like I'll I'll get the I'll get it on the next beta weekend or something. Like you, even though you love it, priorities wise, there's only so yeah. many times you need to do yeah, it. He's before like, it. And there were times yeah. when it was like, hey, Woody, we'll fly you out here. We'll let you participate in the opening of this thing. You obviously will make videos about your experience and whatever, and and we'll cover your expenses, like my hotel yeah. and my flight. And it's like this actually just costs me a lot of money. You want. What to me feels like free promotion. I know to you it feels like you bought a hotel and a flight, but I'm over here like I didn't get any money. Yeah, you, know, you think like, I wanted to visit your local Holiday Inn? You think that was right? my, oh, yeah. my bucket God. list? Like, dude, I don't want to come to Sacramento. Literally, um, you know that's cho- choosing beggars uh, type type scenario that happened for a long time. Unless um, the opening gets you something like like there was a time when if you got to the opening of COD. That would give you insight that would make your head or it was just fun channel. right you or know fun. if, if it was yeah, something yeah. you actually i did tons right. of things that i was just like oh that'll be fun oh, it's fucking good. i think yeah. i got an offer to see um what was that game like plants versus zombies something? zombies yeah. yeah and i'm like I, yeah that it's not worth it for me to come out there and see plants versus zombies open no it just, it just cost me money yeah no it was a good I cell remember, phone game I, I was gonna make that. I think it was that, was that stupid Navy SEAL movie. I can't remember the name of it, but they they like flew flew us out to L.A. and I was like, there must be. I don't understand why we got to meet these people in person. Like like phones exist. This is a fucking five and a half hour mm-hmm. flight, and they wanted me to watch the goddamn movie and at their studio on on their like private screening room. And I was I was thinking like, should I be Grace, should I be thinking, oh, it's so nice of them to do this for me, or should I be mad that they've done this to me? Yeah. Like, why don't you send me a fucking like, like, there's send me an advanced copy. You, <laughs> they they can do this thing where they send you a code and you log into a server and you get this one time pass to watch a movie and I and I mm-hmm. you get the it's like a screener thing and I've watched movies so early that the special effects weren't done and they were comical. It's like there's supposed to be an SUV spinning across a bridge and they just got like wireframe shit and no audio happening. But but I was so annoyed by that, like like having to go yeah. all the way out there. And then, was it zero dark thirty? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was. I, I chose to be gracious instead and be like, "Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity." To see this or movie. American Sniper, one of those. Oh, I would have. Ra- American Sniper would have been more money. Uh, um, zero. No, it wasn't zero dark thirty. No, 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 no. It was the um, it was the Navy Seal one. It was the one where it was um, it doesn't matter. But but it wasn't either of those. Those were those were like mainstream movies. <laughs> oh, they sent you a bullshit Navy Seal flick. I they sent you to bullshit. See a bullshit. It was Lone Survivor. No, it wasn't Lone Survivor. Act of Valor. Act of Valor. That was it. Yeah. Nah. See, I've never Act heard of that one, so it didn't take off. Not a great. Mo- you should have watched my video, and you'd have been queued in to go watch. <laughs> yes, there's a guy who falls in the water and gets caught by FPS Russia. Perhaps. Yes, there is. <laughs> there is. That does happen. I froze my ass off doing that. I knew. <laughs> I, I knew the video. I was so shivering. I need help getting undressed. <laughs> You needed help getting undressed. That's not very Russian of you. No, I couldn't get my clothes off. They were suctioned to me, and I was all—I was all cold, chivery. <laughs> Did you quickly go back to regular voice, Kyle? Like, get me the hell out of here! It's fucking freezing. <laughs> I was—I was even even regular voice, Kyle. I was like, I was like, okay, Scott. <laughs> I'm hypervent- when I get in cold water, I hyperventilate. Okay, Scott. <laughs> oh, I want to do this once. <laughs> I'm gonna go into the water. And I'm like talking him through what's gonna happen, and then I have to like hold my breath under this water. And it was the middle of winter in Georgia. Like, I know the water wasn't 30 degrees or something like that, but I bet it was fucking 45 or 50 or something. It was awful. It's just cold at yeah. that point. It was you know? so goddamn cold. <laughs> it was awful. And it was nighttime almost. Yeah, that was stupid. Yeah, I don't that like sucks. cold water. Well, cold water next sucks. time, hopefully, it's a good movie you get to go see. <laughs> <laughs> you should get your pick of the litter of of american military propaganda films <laughs> that's what it was i think it was financed by the navy i think that was a big part of it sometimes you'll watch like american military movies like that 
and you'll be like, yeah, I, I know we have our biases, but there's no way this guy was like helping deliver babies. <laughs> like, like, there's just no way this was happening. You know, Did they teach that in sniper school. It's like, I don't think so. I don't no. I saw some like funny, like post going viral of like an American soldier, like in a movie who had like just killed someone. And it was like a joke being like, America will conquer your country attack and level cities and in 20 movies make a year about how or make a movie about how it made our, their soldiers feel sad <laughs> <laughs> which is like total civ cultural domination <laughs> to win that's right you're watching make it's like they fought back and they yeah that's so good no Very we're the true. best we're the best uh the united Can't states stop, won't stop with it, like, like, like history like, uh, is Hollywood written by is the victors and Hollywood is an winning. incredibly powerful thing. And, and, and even we when write... we don't win, we have enough money to make Vietnam seem like a win sometimes. Dude, you know? every movie it's I've true. seen makes Vietnam seem like a push at, at worst. Like, yeah. I think we did okay. I'm sold on that at, at this point. I mean, KD-wise. I, I, look, I... if, look, you're only <laughs> feel the other way because you thought we were playing Dom. Okay? I don't know who has the flag, but we won TDM easily. I'm told we won every battle. Not the war necessarily, but kill confirmed. Kill. <laughs> like you kill them and then their ear pops up as like a glowing that, little rotating. If Todd had balls, that's what it would be instead of a dog tag. You'd, you'd, you'd run up and quickly like cut the ear off and like hang it on your necklace and like keep moving in one solid motion. <sighs> and there'd be, be an ear marketplace. An ear market. I like it. I like the way we're yeah, if you, if, you want, do that. if you want a new skin on your gun, it's like 500 ears. Let's go. Ah, that's a right ear. You know lefties only. What if Tarkov introduced the Ukrainians as a faction? Mm. I don't see that going well, given they're a Russian-based company. Well. Call, oh, Tarkov. Yeah, they're going to have to be kind of chill delicate about that with whole that thing. situation. Yeah, you got to... As point. a businessman in Russia, or like a Russian man who does business in Russia, you should probably not do anything... It seems at like all. every day I hear about a Putin ally, like Dead. having an accident crossing or enemy falling Any... out of a window. Like lots of falls, lots of people falling. Very confusing. Some heart attacks. A guy fell down the stairs. What I fall that? like once a year. His enemies are toppling over like the three fucking stooges. It's crazy because they they definitely. I mean, I know it's kind of uh, like a broken record at this point, but they do it in such an obvious way because like the whole point is that you know, like it's not supposed to be you yeah. know covert. It's like USA. They'll kill you quietly, and somebody's like, I just don't understand. He had a heart attack. It, you know, 27 years old, crazy. And Russia, like, yeah, he just had a heart attack from the back of his head or something. Yeah, he fell out of a building. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I fall out of so many buildings. I've never, I'm... the windows here locked. <laughs> Antoly Greshinashko fell from a great height. He fell down the stairs and died. Here's another guy who had a stroke. And wait, <laughs> did you, uh, I read that like that there's a up. ruling where if the next of kin and the owner, the family dies, the Russian state can take the funds like as that and so you know a couple oligarchs die and whoops looks like their son or daughter died too and what's what's that like all of your money belongs to the russian state that's crazy like you know let's use this to offset inflation <laughs> i had this bet going with chiz that i thought there would be a terrorist attack or surrounding the queen's funeral it just seemed like such a big moment that some maybe some awful person would do something i thought something would happen i really wanted to count when that guy rushed the coffin the other day did you see that some no. guy like so they've got the viewing of the queen bo queen's body has been going on for days i think it might be over now but there were people waiting in line for a dozen hours plus everybody pat patted david beckham on the back like he's a fucking superhero because he waited in line for the rest of the pores it's like like <laughs> wait there's old women doing the same shit fucking pat anyway not as heroically this one guy like rushed the coffin and i don't know what he was gonna do but they shut that shit down <laughs> <laughs> They were the, the the three fanciest dressed men you've ever seen in your life. Like had him on the ground wearing white gloves and like a heartbeat. Um, the the British always have like silly ceremonial garb that they wear, but mm. they bring out the goofy shit when a queen dies. Apparently, because this guy looks like he's a tenth prestige. <laughs> this guy over here is wearing the traditional like Bobby cop like like hat that's shaped like a penis. And then Colonel Mustard's over here with a mustache that won't quit and like ruffles on his shoulders. It's absurd. They, they, they've got these guys in like 
one of them's wearing like a black tunic with red trim and the other one's wearing like red with black trim like it's like well, the Targaryens you... or something up there it's it was so weird to see have you seen the uh have you seen like what the people who fuck with the um what do you call them the the default like big hat guys at Buckingham Palace yeah or like oh, just yeah, anything yeah, yeah, yeah. that get the... And they will just smack the shit out of yeah. you. Like they're like, we are here to guard things, and you know, just because we look a little silly doesn't mean we're not here to. The outfits fuck shit do up. take away from their. They thing. do. Like, you think that they're cosplaying, and they're like, no, these the are real rifles, soldiers. They're however. doing big stuff. Pull me back I, the other way. <laughs> I hear you, but the, it's a tourist attraction. The whole place is a tourist attraction, mm -hmm. and they seem like employees you could take pictures with, mm. and they allow it a little. But then respectful photos may be taken. I, I just feel like you get a little too close and suddenly they're spazzing at you, screaming at you, embarrassing you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> damn. This dude just wanted to break it down, do a little robot style stuff, and dude hauled off and decked him. <laughs> he was just dancing. Damn. All right. Well, I don't maybe there's some more context. Maybe that was like his fourth different dance number. He did the <laughs> he did the cabbage patch, the worm, the Charles. He's doing the lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing the twist. <laughs> <laughs> and like dance number eight, and, and dude had just had enough. I don't know. That, is is that a desired job position, do you think? Like, or is that I like, wonder how much they get paid. I wonder if it's like fuck. Jesus. That's a see now. That's a hard, hearty mug that you just heard hit the floor. That's solid, a solid uh -huh. death by gummies, but stainless owned, steel. Owned somehow, I don't know how. I don't know how they buy those. I'm. I, I guess they're on the website, or maybe only we get them. I'm not sure. I would like that more. If oh, if it was them. exclusive to us. Yeah, yeah. I don't want anyone else to have one. The average pay in the rural guard is about thirty-eight, thirty-six grand a year. Okay, so that's like a punishment job. That's like when you wanted to be a cop, but no, you no, didn't no, no. test quite right. It's thirty six grand a year in the Royal Guard. So assuming you probably get board, lodging, food, and health care and that's stuff. That's worse. Before. Where are they lodging you? At like a barracks full of weird no, hats? Jericho <laughs> Tucker brings up a good point. Like sometimes you see military pay and you're like, they make 30 grand a year? That's awful. And it's like, oh, well, they pay for all your expenses. It's so like it's you 30 net grand thirty grand, which is like the equivalent of having London. like a hundred grand a year salary and living in a like a, a normal yeah. So it's just they live in London, okay? Like like I would imagine that living there is akin to living somewhere like L.A. where everything's a lot more. Zach expensive. says they live in Buckingham. Is that not in London? Yeah, <laughs> no, they know. say yeah, uh, they say they live lavishly in Buckingham. Lavishly. Oh. Oh, luxurious living conditions at the Buckingham Palace. Aha. So they live lavishly in the palace and they make money on top of that. I'm going to look. Well, at... you don't want to, like, it's not oh, medieval times. I'm going to need a 401k. <laughs> I mean, okay, retire, okay. I can just live in a castle somewhere. Touche. But I guess I'm saying <laughs> they live in a castle lavishly. And, okay. Uh, so they're, they're just... like cops in a fairyland. All right. I, wonder I, how I would many... love to speak to one and yeah. be like, dude, is this like, the job that you always wanted or is are you actively trying to get out of here right now wink wink like would you rather be a cop would you rather be like a real security guard like this is such an in-between weird fucking made-up thing yeah do. yeah because right. nobody's got it you're not like even if the entirety of the buckingham palace is being threatened immediately the people around the the police with mp5s that are standing around buckingham palace are the ones that are going to be doing anything that it mean, like you you have I've a seen those guards with with rifles with the SA80s yeah. or whatever they yeah, are. Yeah, they have like they have like some r like real actual, you know, military grade weaponry and then they have the showmanship guards that I'm not saying are not trained to kick ass. I'm just I'd saying like to see that, a sword fight. Like Yeah, like I what are you somebody doing with that would thing? show up. I wish somebody would show up want to start a beef with King Charles and pull out a, a sword. And start approaching, and the and, and and then these guys have to pull their swords out to to do some business. That would be, well, that would make my, that would make Game of Thrones worth being bad. That that would fix that if I got to see something like that, a real sword fight. I've never seen a real sword fight. I don't think I would want to. I saw a guy uh, attack some British guy the other day with like a little hand axe, and the British guy seemingly had a hand axe too, and they had a little hand axe fight in the street, and that was gruesome. I wonder what a real sword fight would look like. What? Here's my 
And I like did an see actual that. Like an actual sword fight. fight. But like, sword fight. Right. what kind of sword would you... Here's my take on it. I think the side of the sword is not that useful. I think the tip of the sword is what wins a sword fight. Like fencing. So with that, like fencing. But fencing's are... Uh, those foils are a little flexible to do real damage. Well, no, but like so, if you have a rapier versus having like a broad sword, you know, who wins in this regard? Is it, It's like a... Yeah. Like, I think what you want is a mobile agile sword where you can poke with it i think like, it depends um, on the meta needle. right like isn't there going to okay. be like it's isn't it going to be like usc right you're gonna have strikers you're gonna have like grapplers can i have a have... spear and a shield instead yeah see i'm no, we just need to go back to gladiatorial because that beats combat. a sword every time i want to see people f- i, I, I have like the, you know i, I, I have would the idea run. that it would that be would be one. option a over any sort of like uh, uh armed coward combat. No, Coward I would engage. Sure. There's pride on the line. <laughs> no, I would run <laughs> so goddamn fast. Um, or a bow. I'll do that. Would you drop your sword, your spear and short sword? It's way too heavy to run shield. with. I'm leaving that shit behind. I might yeah. try to like sling the shield onto my back so they can't shoot me in the back as effectively as I run. But I, I am running. I think before I run, I'm going to analyze my opponent. Can I easily win? Can I win a foot race? No. Like I need to know. I need to know these oh, things before well, I can't win a foot race. That's a problem. Right. But, I'm but, not built for speed, Kyle. I'm not either. <laughs> yeah. I'm not either. No, I, I don't want to have a sword fight though. They look gruesome. Every I saw two chicks fight last night, and they're doing that thing where like we're holding it. It's like a hockey fight where left hands are used to like secure the other person and pull them in. The hair. And right yeah. hands are delivering the punishment, but mm. one of them has a knife. And the other one doesn't. And the one who doesn't have a knife doesn't seem like she minds. And so she's just getting stabbed in the face over and over. And I'm like, why is nobody stepping in and stopping this murder? She stabbed her so many times. Ugh. Yeah. Website stabbed like or cut. Best fighting swords. Wow, they're yeah. all over the place. Some that are ancient giant. Egypt. Nobody knows. I think, yeah, I feel like uh, Tucker's right. Just looking at scanning through this article, um, it depends. It's whatever on the, the meta. The yeah. Answer. Yeah. There are some people who do this uh, sort of combat with like blunted weapons on YouTube. And that, and then they, they ask that guy these exact questions and he, he'll break it down how like spear and shield beat sword. I think it might be, but he's like, but two guys with swords. And like, like, he, like they've done it over and over with guys who are trained with less than lethal spears and swords and shields and stuff. And the same thing pretty much happens all the time when you take certain weapons against certain other weapons. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, rock, paper, scissors almost. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a lot like that. That's why RPG games are so good you know, when you've got that, that that sort of aspect going on. Can't wait for that. I, I need a new game to play. I've been watching all the uh, a lot of gameplay trailers. I, I do like the idea of using that Xbox with mouse and keyboard, though. I'm hoping, but, t- but, but Tucker has spoiled it now by telling me it's going to feel I'm like I'm sorry. Shit. Yeah, it's just not going to do it for you. That's a shame. Not the way you want it to, which really sucks, but... Mm-mm. No, I want a new game though. Um, I saw that uh, GTA Six, all their, all those assets leaked. got leaked. Yeah, and they're making a huge deal out of it. And to me, it's, it's like, the biggest leak in the in the history of video games, not in the history. Can can you pause there and explain to me why? So I saw a little bit of the leak, and it was like a person walking around, and and I couldn't tell that the graphics were revolutionary. There was print all over the screen. I'm like, this is a leak that tells me nothing about this game. Uh, what am I missing? Well, you did not watch all okay. of the content. I mean, there's like 20 different little clips and stuff. I don't Are know. Are you up to speed on it? Like, did, did was it um, interesting to you? It was interesting enough to me. Um, but I am gonna be honest with you. Like, I just looked into it at pretty like face level. So, uh, ironically enough, Trevor T. Martin and texted me and was like, uh, it was like you see the leaks, and I was like, why? Like, oh, okay, maybe he's trying to confirm it. The reason is it that, that it got leaked is their Slack channel got hacked or fished, rather. An employee had their Slack channel fished, and then they went into the Slack channel and took all the developmental videos and stuff. <clears throat> it's not going to look good because it is an alpha build, so it has none of the polishing, right? You're just looking at framework. But what was cool mm-hmm. is that there's videos of, like, the entire engagement with, like, you walking into a burger joint and then robbing it, then, like, how that works, going out, taking heat, hiding, like... There's uh, animation pickup drop down. It's not that like the video itself is like, look at the next gen GTA. It's that, look, you can see the framework for a lot of what's coming. And it, yeah, it spoils the surprise, but like it's certainly made predictably. Everybody who saw it, they're like, we're waiting eight years for this pile of shit. Like, 
we've played alpha <clears throat> builds of games. They like they're not gonna look good. And I thought this looked pretty good, so I felt like it got undue hate. Yeah, I okay. felt the exact same way. I didn't understand. On one hand, I don't understand. I... Kyle, we lost your audio right after I don't understand. I know you hate that. Um, yeah, I, I, so I'm not a Grand Theft Auto guy. I just didn't understand mm. like, why it was interesting. I even still don't get it. You're like, oh, it showed him like a pickup animation. And I'm like, that's interesting to people. I mean, uh, it's not. I I don't think it's necessarily that. Like, I'm not sitting there drooling over the pickup animation, but I'm also mm-hmm. not doing the same with Call of Duty. But you know, people care about Call of Duty's pickup animation or something <clears> like <throat> that to a level. So I think it's more exciting that, like, hey, this little thing that we know was in development. Like, usually we'd wait and then we'd get like a trailer and we'd see rendered footage of what they want to show us that gives us no idea of like how what is a day what is like you walking around the city feel like and it gave right. us more info into like what's the city didn't look it, like and didn't i see a female protagonist like, yeah there's a fe- we know there's a female protagonist at the very that's minimum huge now time. that's the that's the only thing where i'm like okay now this is different because they're switching it, back and forth i think that there's confirmation well yeah the ability to do anything like that is is, is kind of new because correct me if i'm wrong but you're always like their guy they pick you your guy i remember people being like do i have to be black on the last one like like, like, like there was a huge thing about that and so the ability to have like multiple that there's multiple pr- protagonists or like different sexes, like that's all new stuff. But I don't see it as this big loss. Like that statement from Rockstar was like, we are devastated that this has happened and 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 what and this beautiful thing has been released and you know it now. And it's like, dude, nobody fucking cares. Like, like mm. did you think that you were gonna be like, look, and we were all gonna like, oh my god, like like I no, guess I think we were, but they, it's, that hasn't gone away. Everybody's no, gonna it's love like it spoiling it though. Like you, like there. I think that they, there's no way that they can react any other way than saying they're devastated, right? Like they've had, they had the project files. I don't the, understand like, why you know. game features are spoilers. You know, like, like it's not like they told me um, who the bad guy is and how the story ends necessarily. But it gave you already. It has helped shape people's opinions of the game, and they've seen what is far and beyond not what anybody well, would like to show stupid people off. if they're judging alpha footage. But yeah, but if they're like, oh, be... great. If they're saying the graphics are bad, like, like, dude, that's... I saw so many other developers backing Rockstar up and being like, this is what our game looked like in alpha. This is what our game looked like in alpha. And showing you all these beautiful games that we know now looking like garbage or like incomprehensible stick figures in, a, in an ocean of polygons, stuff like that. Yeah, it's uh, it'd be a lot like um, having you know having some. You got a crush on this girl, and she comes to over and sees your room. Your room looks like it's pretty nice, but it's like not good looking, and you're gonna okay. be like embarrassed about right. it, right? You know, it's okay. not that you're not like you're, you got a good thing going, but I just think that they were like, why couldn't we just you wait a little bit? We'll clean the place up; it'll look way better. Like just, That's but funny. now you've got this idea. Yeah, I want to know. know. But do we know anything about the release date? uh 2024 or some shit like that i don't know if there's a hard release date uh or like even like a general year but that's what i think just given looking at this it's not going to be next year it's so long between games so yeah long between so long when did it come out is is it already seven years old something like more than that uh eight yeah 2013 right it's too long because it needs to come out quick enough that people are like the same generation of gamers. They've been supporting it so much, though, and changing it that that, that it kind of has done that. It's had Dude. this like multiple life thing. Um, Rockstar. Hmm. I'm gonna probably get this wrong. Somebody can hard check this, but and, and it's gonna maybe sound like I'm talking about my ass, but I'm pretty sure that Rockstar made more money on microtransaction shark cards than they ever made off of the hard original sales of any games. Like something like a billion dollars in revenue over shark cards, and it's like, well, if you're making revenue that is like twice the revenue of a red dead redemption just off of your existing content selling fake money in gta mm-hmm. why are you instead you're not exactly waking up every morning like fuck we gotta hurry up on this one like they're like making money hand over fist so i think that allows you time to not feel pressured and rushing it and maybe that's kind of like another reason why they reacted that way they're like well we're not gonna hurry it up like yeah we're making well, I'm not, money i'm not thirsting for it like like i i have for some reason, I wasn't into GTA Five at all. I just had lost my interest in that type of game. I don't get it anymore. Um, maybe if I played the like online thing where everybody's running around role playing, I see people being cops. That looks a lot of fun. Yeah. A, yeah. a better example for that for and what I'm talking about is like Half Life Three. Like people were pining for Half Life Three, 
at a time when the people who played Half-Life 2, I think I have my versions right, are like not even gamers anymore. Like I played this at 16 years old. Now I'm 30. They're barely even gamers. Like what is Half-Life 3 isn't going to sell like you think because these people are like raising children. I feel like GTA might be making that mistake. That no. It's, it's, it's oh, literally, no. no. It's huge. No? It's okay. huge. Yeah. It's it's like the only game where, I mean, I think they said that they were going to try and rein it in a little bit, but like it, the fact still stands that if you want a game where you can go in with your friends and like 25 other people and blow shit up and then it's basically for what Fortnite is doing, right? You can do races in GTA, role play in GTA. You can do custom maps, TDM. Like whatever, it's like its own it's little micro game product. to create too. I, it's a it meta. Cost a quarter first. billion dollars to produce yeah. or something. Like it was yeah. some absurd cost to produce that game. So it's hugely profitable. And I know that it's, yeah. it's still very pop. I see it on Twitch a lot. I never watch because I just don't give a everyone. Shit. It feels like I'm the only one arguing to reinvest this game. I know it cost a quarter million to make, but I'm looking at eight hundred million yearly over the course of the last nine years is seventy two. Seven hundred seven point two billion, right? Mm -hmm. Plus the oh. sales, so we're at yeah. thirteen billion dollars. Um, that I think I did right, right? So we're at thirteen billion dollars in sales for a quarter billion investment, and everyone is like, "Dude, just let it ride." I'm like, "No, no, no literally, roll the every dice again, do it again." But they are doing that. What do you mean? Like you're literally okay. like rocks. You got a decade though. Like, but re remember this, okay? All right, they built the, it took years to get to GTA 5, okay, mm -hmm. in the first place. And that game came out on PlayStation 3, right? <laughs> it came out two generations of, of, of consoles ago. So now it's like to build a game in your head that you know is going to take five plus years of development, and you're trying to consistently keep up with the next gen tech. So you're always like, hey, is our platform robust enough to keep doing that? Is the game engine going to be able to handle that? Like, it's a lot more than just uh, it's a lot more than just throwing money at the problem when you're actively mm -hmm. fighting against tech advancements and time like that. Because Unreal oh. Engine five didn't exist. It was like Unreal Engine three back then, and you're like, <sighs> yeah. So I don't, I don't know. know. And I, I don't know the answer to that. But. Like I, I accept your argument that it's hard. I just can't line up with it's not worth okay. it. Okay. Well, no, no, it's not that it's not worth it. Okay. Same thing. You're a you're a uh, you're a, a sys tech guy. Like you. Sure. Uh, why do why does Call of Duty have server problems on launch day? Just buy more servers. Well, you know, yeah, that doesn't work, right? Like, right. Like there's can't scalability just more... stuff and yeah, yeah. Like it. Sometimes I do this to imagine it. Imagine you have two computers you need to connect them. It's one line, right? Simple as that. Imagine you have three connect computers and you need to connect them. Well, now you have like a triangle, right? It's kind of feasible. Let's do four. Well, it's not a square anymore because now some computers are two jumps away. So it's a square with kind of an X in the middle. Mm -hmm. Now do five, do 10. How many lines does it take to connect 10 computers all to each other directly? Like it, it's getting really complicated. Ten and factorial. you take this problem and you scale it like to a larger level. And it's like, oh, it's not just a matter of throwing more computers at it because the lines of communication get too crossed and too numerous and it doesn't scale literally. You know, six computers don't do twice as much as three. You have a problem that's not that. So now you need to do it in a more clever way. That's why you can't always just throw more money in it. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you for that explanation. Yeah. And, huh. and, but, and I think the game dev is equally similar. Like you can have more people developing assets. You can have more people working on individual stuff. But at a certain point, you're only able to churn out as much new content on your existing platform. You can't rewrite the entire existing platform and then update it in secret. That's what Counter-Strike has been doing in general with Source and Source 2. And it's like, you know, there's not a flip. They're not just going to flip a switch. It's like slowly you see pits and bits and pieces get added to it. So like, I don't know. It's just hard to think of the spaghetti code being patched together with more billions of dollars to <laughs> fix it. Yeah, I don't know. I, there's still the little part of me that's like, but, but the money. A, yeah, this is a 13 billion dollar product. It's worth making another one to get. What is it? 26 times your return? Jesus I, yeah, Christ! Yeah, it seems to that. be the. I wonder if it's the most profitable game ever. Is it? Right. It, it, you, if you mm. strangle that. Oh no, no, no! I, there's been those little, uh, like ridiculous, like tiny games that just did bonkers. Well, yeah, you just I, say I Among Minecraft Us would head. win, or Minecraft. Yeah. yeah. Or what's the one where you bounce the ball around with the fucking cars? 
with what? cars yeah, oh you know, rocket like, league rocket league yeah oh well yeah, rocket yeah. league's not anywhere near that but like the but you know like, there i just don't think it game. costs much to make I, I don't know that game was actually something else it was called like super rocket turbo cars or something and then they just like were like well that didn't get super popular and then like three years later it came out with rocket league i'm one step away from the guy who owns rocket league like uh do you remember heather who used to be yep. on the used to do our stuff her i think brother-in-law owns the company that made wow psionics yeah 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 i met him he was i met him at a wedding like uh, having to do with heather's family and uh he was just showing me like the stuff he was working on at the the, before rocket league that company was much smaller and uh he was doing good like mobile platform games at a time when everyone else was doing flappy bird and you know he shows me this thing that's like spaceships rocking her and i was like holy shit i didn't know an ipad could even do this but Turn out Rocket League was his big hit. But I uh, ambitious dude. Yeah. There's a game coming out called the Callisto Protocol. And uh, I started watching the uh, the trailer for it. And I was like, man, this looks just like Dead Space to me. It is, yeah. Well, it's and actually that, the spiritual successor. Yeah. It's absolutely is. I don't know if this is Dead Space two or three. Uh those were both kind of abominations. I've seen the lead guy talk about how shitty it was making those games and how much interference there was. How they wanted to like, oh, we need co-op now. And he's, he's like, this is a horror game. The idea of having a buddy with you like ruins the no co-op. Woody, Woody and I played that game co-op. It was dreadful. It was, um, yeah, you can't play that game. It? I don't remember. If we finished it, it was an act of labor. It was a labor. I think that we like finished it the same way that you finish anything else that you're just like, all right, we got it done. Let's get out. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. We're like, 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 right. There's six hours left of this game. Let's just hammer it down. It was awful. I think that even had like we were releasing videos like dude, with that content. Yeah. And eventually I just put up like a four hour video. <laughs> I think so. I remember getting out. stuck in that part where we were um like like flying through space and avoiding space garbage. And, and like Woody would you're make a good it through. Gamer, and I think you're better than me, but for some reason that thing wasn't your cup of tea. I hit that space garbage like <laughs> eight, nine, ten times in a row, and we're recording, and I'm just like, I'm getting mad. <laughs> yeah, you're like, we're wasting time. <laughs> it's like, I think it's like, embarrassed, right? Like, is that why you were mad? Like, you did, like, people I just want to get you know? on with it, and it's like, oh, okay. it's not even like, it's almost like I would get so deep into it, and then I get hit by. You're, you're like, you're flying real fast through space junk, and you just got to avoid it like this. In the from a first port person or maybe a third person. No, it's standpoint. a third person weird camera. So you're like trying to like judge depth too. I hit a lot of shit. I hit a lot of shit uh, for sure. I hated that. But this game, the Callisto Protocol, absolutely is a is a successor. It has the stomp. It has like um, how the uh, the the HUD is in, is somewhat built into the player's back and their suit. It has a similar suit. The weapons look similar. Uh, I mentioned the stomp. There's even those like. I don't know what you call them. There's little interactive moments where you get like sort of taken by the game and go do like a scripted thing. I saw the character getting going like down a drain and he's he's yeah. he's like sitting on his ass going through the being going down this like water slide type thing and he has to shoot. There was a similar thing in Dead Space where like this tentacle comes out and grabs you by the foot out of nowhere and upends you and you're like, what the fuck? And you have to really awkwardly shoot the tentacle three times maybe before it drags you across the floor and kills you. And it was, I, there's only one instance like that in the whole game. It, it, I saw him talk about how laborious it was to like code that and like make that work like weeks and weeks of time. They tried to take it away from me, but I wanted <laughs> it. I wanted it. And we did it and it's right back into this game. So I'm psyched about this. I'm definitely gonna get Callisto protocol as soon as it comes out. I didn't see the release date, but it looks like exactly what I like. I, well, that's cool. That's cool. I'm for me that game is Borderlands. Like, yeah, it's had a couple misses, but I remember the initial one so fondly. If they came out with a new Borderlands, I would give it attention. You I know, I tried to stream Borderlands with Harley and uh, somebody else, right? I don't know. Yeah. Oh my god. It, it. I was like, uh, they were like, Harley's on stream with Harley, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll stream with Harley. And I was like, but we got to come up with a game that Harley can play. And that that I can also play, and uh, and and like we settled on Borderlands Two somehow. Whichever one was the good one, we we took a poll. We were like twenty minutes into that game, and I felt so uncomfortable with how bad the game was that I was just like, 
like ants in my pants wanting to get out of my chair and do I, it felt laborious like i'd rather like do work i'd rather like write a report or something or like learn about you ever been forced to learn about something you're not interested in like like now <laughs> as adults we learn about what we're interested in it's like right, well, i'm right. gonna learn about vikings that's cool uh -huh. they used to make us learn about shit we didn't care about that's dreadful that's what it feels like playing that game and i'm i'm like like 10 more minutes guys 10 more minutes just let you know <laughs> just let you know no i fucking hate it <laughs> Don't tell me about settings. They're all on. Yep. Yep. Nope. Nope. I just fucking hate it. Nope. Another, a better gun ain't going to fix it, guys. We're going to play poker. Harley, what I'm like, you know, takes a while to get into. Like it, it, you said like 20 minutes into it, I hated it. Yeah. That tracks because, <laughs> yeah, like your character hasn't really started to like feel his oats yet. You haven't invested your tokens Fair. into more abilities and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll be honest. I could imagine a world where my gun was as cool as it could be and the enemies died super fast and I still didn't care. Like sure. I just what I hadn't I've been playing games like Tarkov where mm. like even poker has this similar thing where it's like, well, we lose. That was real money. <laughs> like yeah. they took my that guy has my money now and he's being polite about it, but we both know he's happier because he's got my he's stolen my money now. Like and I play games like Tarkov and Rust and stuff, and then I go to something like that, and there's just no stakes. It's like we we're saying with Tucker earlier, like, why would I play team deathmatch and call of duty unless i'm being paid to play team deathmatch and call of duty i'd never do that for fun it doesn't look fun the experience you talked about playing a game and really wishing you weren't in it that's how fallout went for me i was playing fallout and i just walked and walked and walked to places i didn't really care about a story i couldn't pay attention to to dialogue that required more attention than i had at the moment and i was streaming too so when you stream i watched you yeah, you helped. You guided it. Didn't help though. I tried were, a little. I, you, you know, were a little I, I was high. so stoned. <laughs> you, they were so stoned. Yeah. At the end, you you're like, "What? Well, yeah, I really sorry. I gave you all bad directions, and I'm really high." <laughs> yeah, I think I was ended. trying to get you to the part where you like, like the girl gives you the rifle and teaches you how to shoot the bottles, and, and mm. I wanted to get like, get you that rifle and then get out of Good Springs and go to Prim and like like just get that done because you run into npcs you meet you see all these crucified people you learn about the legion which is all these assholes wearing hockey gear pretending like they're uh caesar's legion you get the story moving along but somehow i was so stone stoned that like i don't know I we were fighting lizards and shit a lot of time traveling not <laughs> seeming to get anywhere and and oh that's right uh, i got lost i went the wrong way yeah it, it yeah so it was a rough initial experience and then if you're like me, I have this like anxiety of trying to put on a show. I'm live sure. streaming, right? So the whole chat is just telling me that they're not happy with what's happening. And then that is part of my gaming experience. See, that game yeah. is so beloved and it's 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 got this re it'd be like Tarkov, right? If you just if someone had played Call of Duty before and they're like, oh, jump into Tarkov. Oh, I need to set everything up. No, nah, I don't set anything up. I can get in there. All right, you're in a match now. Fuck. All right, what do I Oh, you're dead. What are you doing? I'm trying to watch some fun here. <laughs> All right, now you're gonna need a new loadout. How do I do that, dude? You're wasting a lot of time here healing. Come on, and then you're like <laughs> getting, you're feeling the pressure, and you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And Fallout's like that. Like before I start a new fall, I just started a new Fallout build. Like like, I spent three hours modding it before I began the playthrough. Then I spent like twenty minutes, I'll call it, researching how I wanted to put those special points, what slots I wanted them in. And then there's a whole plan, like what to do as far as that's super after important. That. Don't you get more points later on to like compensate? So, like, I mean, just so there might be a intelligence perk. and strength. And you wanted to do 10 9, but you fouled up and did 9 10. Along yeah. the way, can't you just put it where you would have? You totally, um, it depends. Uh, if it was like one away, that ain't a big deal. But like, let's say you made your strength three and you decide you want to be able to beat people up. Well, the perk that lets you like knock people out with one punch, you have to be seven strength for that. It's like, oh, well, we're just fucked. We're, we got seven levels to even of just wasting strength. Meanwhile, there's a perk over here with like nine points in it, and we really should be accessing the perks that that gives us um, access to. Down on the bottom, on the the perks are stronger. It's and they're, and they're better. So you plan ahead, and the builds have names. It's just like any other RPG. We're like, oh, I want to be a samurai. Well, you can. So you're gonna need the the perk that actually gives you a samurai helmet. That'll be strength ten. Like you need to know those mm. things going in. So yeah, that's a terrible game to play. What I'll call raw, because <laughs> dude, like before, I know the game inside out. I've got that a thousand, two thousand hours, and I don't start a playthrough without watching some videos. <laughs>
Uh, so it's just us. Have you been lifting lately? Are you still in the gym? Yeah. 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 I finally got it cooled off in there. I'm so happy. I was scared wiring that motherfucking um, air conditioner. I didn't want to do it by myself, but uh -huh. someone wanted $1,200 for the install alone after I'd already purchased the thing. And I don't mm -hmm. remember what it cost. I like to forget little things like that. But I don't know, $800 to $1,200 itself. <laughs> and I right. was like, dude, you're not charging me. I, I lied to him in the text message. I was like, I just found a master electrician who works for $50. Can you believe it? I can't imagine it will take dozens and dozens of hours at that rate. And he's like, he just wrote back, good luck. <laughs> and I went, All right, let's order some tools. <laughs> and I like spite installed an air conditioner. But, nice. uh, but, but no, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm much happier now. It's cooled off in there. I haven't bothered with the rubber floor. Um, okay. I just wanted to like get moving because the rubber floor requires me to like rent a truck and then walk. I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I, I got to get them here. Oh, they Amazon delivered. delivered mine, but uh, oh, see, I want to do um the, the what is it called? The tractor um uh, supply horse. store. At the tractor, tractor supply store, they're like considerably cheaper. Those stall mat mats are, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they caught wind that lots of guys were building their home gyms using stall mats, so they got a new stall mat that's made for gyms at the tractor supply store, and those are really good. But degassing them, which makes them not stinky. You know, it takes a couple days and a scrub and everything. And it's just laborious. They're so heavy, as you know. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think I'm just going to skip it. I'm only here for nine more fucking months. And then I'm okay. going somewhere else. I, uh, yeah, I bought like a higher level rubber mat. And it's because it, it's yeah, not, you like, yours is a garage gym. So presumably any of that gassing, if you don't do it perfectly, will go outdoors. Mine would go into the master bedroom. So that would suck. More, yeah. Right. You, and like, I'm told those the horse stall mats, which is level lower than you're talking about, can kind of have like give off that odor indefinitely. You know, mm. like that room always smells a little bit like horse. Stall Everyone mat. says to use that. There's a special cleaner. It's like Mean Green or something. Or uh -huh. anyway, I've heard of it. They they're all you about that stuff. And and like they're they're like yeah, use the hose and then let it soak. And and the sun shining on it's a big deal. It, it's read, they're yeah. what it is is they use recycled tires. And so they um whatever that petroleum or whatever that's like locked into the rubber has to like leach out or something. Take it's a, it's a pretty it. powerful smell that you won't want to work out. I like sometimes I throw up in the gym anyway. I don't need something like Goodness. that going on. What the hell? But I feel I like that's lifted. not doing it right, you know. But I know you're doing it all right. My, all my all my all my favorite YouTubers say that I I should be throwing up. <laughs> They're like if you're not puking, <laughs> you're not doing it right. Yeah. yeah. So I. I lifted on like a Thursday and then I went and got the motorcycle we talked about earlier. And then I got the surgery on my nose and I can't lift for two weeks. So it's been like two weeks already Yeah, and it'll be whatever, three more days before I can lift again. So I haven't yeah. done anything. How's the uh, wound looking? Better. A lot better. I think a it's going to heal okay. Away. Mm, there's still some redness under it, but the, um, you can see the, the scar like that's there yeah. is really well attached and mild. So like on either side of the cut, you're like, oh, it's still a little raw there. Maybe the stitches. What do you have? Face it. cancer. Yeah, it fa I, you're looking at a cancer survivor, Tucker. So to a duo of us. Yeah, uh, honor us, please. I'm uh -huh. sorry. Um, <laughs> you bought our bracelets. Uh, you know, I remember. <laughs> man, whatever happened to all of those in a landfill somewhere? <laughs> so <laughs> they killed uh, Turtles Nation. The I line. mentioned last show Jackie's going to see a plastic surgeon. Well, she saw him uh, not for the surgery, but for like a pre-surgery consult, and she brought pictures of me. She's like, "Hey, here's my husband. You want to look at him again? You know, like five more days into the Good, healing." I'm glad she did that. Yeah, it was cool of her. And uh, uh, again, the plastic surgeon is like, "This is going to be fine." That kind of nose really because skin. we'll pay you some money just to get <laughs> yeah. around in there, really. And he says that he's like, yeah, hey, you know, if it doesn't heal right, you can come to me, but you won't have to. Yeah, yeah it's kind of good. so he's looked at my pictures twice now and said it'd be cool. Have you talked to anybody about like a scar cream to to put on it afterwards? Yeah, actually, so they sold a scar cream for a hundred bucks and they sent her home free with it, or free included with the twenty five thousand dollars surgery she's getting. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you got to throw some little things in here and there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so do you I remember the name it. of it? Is it a prescription or is it? I don't, I could text Jackie what the name of it is. I'm just yeah. curious. Like, like, like I've always used Mederma, uh, which uh -huh. is over the counter stuff. Um, and, uh, like, like, 
I know that I've recommended it to Taylor. He used it for some scars he had, and I've always used it with like scars that I would get. And it really works. It takes a lot of the red out. You have to use it every fucking day, though. It's yeah. like part of your routine now. So I'm using something else that the that my surgeon gave me until the stitches come out, which is Monday. And then I switch over to something you're talking about. It's some sort of like medical grade silicone. I don't know. Oh, cool. So uh, she hasn't written back yet. She hasn't read it yet. But uh, in any case, yeah, they did give me some scar cream to use post Monday. I, uh, and, I saw that a new season of 60 Days In came out. And uh, and it was like $25 or get a seven day trial with something called Friendly without an I. F-R-N-D-L-Y, some app. And I, I grabbed it. Her. What it fr- friendly is, it's like old people cable. It's like it's, it's like basic cable for $9 oh. a month. It's got like the History Channel and like the fucking, it's what my dad watches because uh-huh. there's no internet where he lives. And uh, and I'm like, oh, fucking don't forget, cancel at the end of the month. All right, go. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's, hap- it's filmed during the pandemic here, local to me in, 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 in Georgia. And uh, like, I'm like, I see those kind of cop cars all the fucking time. This is where I go when they get me, I guess. It is so bad. You, really? First of all, they, 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 they've got that familiar cast of crews. They've got overweight white woman who thinks she's tough because of this. They've got um, muscled up Spanish guy who borderline cries when he gets mad and is way too aggressive for the jail that he's been put in. <laughs> like, he's the problem now. And, like, 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 and, and so they get in there and they're like, oh, first things first. 14 day quarantine and everybody goes into two man cells for the next 14 days, 23 hours in one hour, 23 hours in one hour out. And they are all going crazy. And two of them have quit like a day in because it's like all the other prisoners are losing their shit. They're kicking doors all night long and then sleeping all day long. So, and and then the other ones take uh, like meds. So they're so doped up. They can sleep through the noise. So this lady who's like trying not to be a morphine addict anymore is like just taking it and going crazy, crying in there. It's awful. It's the worst season that I've ever seen. I'm glad that I didn't pay for it. I can't wait to cancel <laughs> friendly. It's terrible. They're just in. I'm sure at some point they get out of quarantine. Yeah, Because the whole point is the interaction with the, the interaction. They get an hour a day. And guess, guess, guess who they interact with each other. Cause they immediately were like, did this. He's like, the signal is I've got a headache. And this guy's like, you had any headaches yet, man? And he's like, yeah, I get headaches all the time. You know how it be? Oh, yeah? You ain't having a headache right now? Nah, not right now. Like, like, they're like, hey, guys, okay, you can just, you get it. You both know, they go on with this for so long that I'm like, Jesus, fuck. But yeah, we know. So now they're just buddies now. It's a terrible fucking show. And I ran out of things to watch. So I had to break down and watch the new Game of Thrones. And it's, it's not that bad. Okay. I watched, uh, I think I'm three episodes in, um, Matt, uh, Smith, you know, the guy that played uh, Dr. Who I like him anyway. And he's a mm-hmm. main character. He's, uh, he's like the brother of the King and, um, kind of does things his own way. He, they try to make him the funny guy. Um, I think he's funny, but he also, you know, castrates people in the streets. So he's a little scary in the streets, okay. in the streets. Um, he's a pretty hardcore fella. And, uh, then this little blonde girl is kind of the other main character. And I, I'm okay with that. I like her a lot. I think that, I think that like we're fast forwarding in time already three episodes in and several years have passed. So I think they're about to recast her with a, an older actress, but the little kid did a great job acting. And, uh, so far I've liked it. I just feel like they had this little battle that involves dragons and battleships and stuff. And I'm just like, this seems like a minor league thing. Who, who's our bad guy here? Like, I don't even remember what his name was. He doesn't even have a real name. He's just the crab feeder or something. He's got like a video game title. Um, I, I, I just feel like the events are a little small right now, but I'm only three episodes in. I like that. doesn't look like that. We made fun of the helmet, right? That right. had the bat wings. Uh, now that I've watched the show, that's like his silly helmet that he wears when he's jousting. I think it's supposed to be silly. Because mm. they're kind of doing some silly jousting, which he takes way too seriously. I forget almost how Game of Thrones was propelled by the Ned Stark season. Mm. You know that it was his performance, Sean Bean, I think, yeah. that uh, that really made season one so great. In season two, you're like, what are they even going to do? And I know Tyrion. What was his name? The the actor Littlefoot. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> a little bit. And, <laughs> and uh, whoever played Joffrey carried the next season or so. But it's like if that first season didn't have Sean Bean in it, I'm not sure Game of Thrones would have been recognized as the show it was. I think, look, this is good. Um, this is doing bonkers views. Um, okay. It, it, it's 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 going to be it's not going to end anytime soon they're going to do their thing because it's incredibly successful again they're moving f- time forward um the the lannister that we met is this guy named jason lannister i recognize the actor but i wouldn't know his name i think maybe he was in 300 or something like that but uh i liked him immediately and they're framing him as such a douchebag but i'm just like nah that's cool he's <laughs> bragging but he's bragging about some real shit he's like he meets um, the main character and he's like, my name's Jason Lannister. I'm from Casterly Rock. I, I own it. You know, it's, <laughs> and, and, and they're there for like a big hunt. And he's like, yeah, this is fine hunting land. Believe me, a kingly forest. The best hunting, of course, is Casterly, Casterly Rock in our wood. <laughs> and like, like every time something comes up, he brags about a thing he has, but it'll be like, well, you know, I do, of course, have the most gold in existence. That would be, you know, I own it. You know, because I'm I'm me, and he's tra- he's <laughs> trying to like be nice to this girl, and she's just not having it. And I'm like, you know, I think I think she'd swoon for the gold. I, I think I, I am. I want to suck Jason Lannister's dick. He's got a twin brother. I'll let them both get on board if I could be part of that stuff. It, it's it seems like he's a cool character, and I hope there's more of him. I guess I like the show. I guess I like the show. Uh, I don't love it, but I like it, and I'm gonna continue to watch it. I didn't watch all there was available. I think there's four or five episodes or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's lots of dragons um there's lots of there's i've seen some people get burnt alive um again saw a man get castrated randomly wasn't prepared for it and uh there's been a lot of like bitching and moaning about how much it sucks to be a girl and a woman but i'm okay with that too because it kind of does in this time there's a part where a does king it? needs a new wife and they're <laughs> like it? a king needs a new wife and they're like ah i'm making up a name Jana, she'd be perfect and they go they break it down the bloodline is this the 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 father has that she's beautiful and he's like and then the king goes she's 12 she's 12 <laughs> and the guy goes she'll mature my grace <laughs> <laughs> and and, he, and so he meets her and she's this cute little 12 year old girl and she's like you know I, i'll give you good airs my lord and i'll be faithful blah 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 and he's like is that what your father told you to say he's like He's like, what did your mother tell you? She's like, that I wouldn't have to bed you until I was 14. And he's like, even him, he's like, <laughs> like, like even the man who lives in these times is like, fuck, this is too much. <laughs> like, but everybody's like, no, my lord, take the child. <laughs> like, like everybody's like, that's the right thing to do. And they're, what he does. Him. they're shaming him for not wanting to marry the child. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I like it. I like the show. I like the little girl. Little girl's kind of a badass. Um, you know, she's got her own dragon. This they all the have dragons. Um, no, she the twelve year old has no like cool factor. She's just uh, a, a a womb a prop. But yeah. our main character, who's the princess, there. Um, I'm getting into a little bit of like light spoilers here, but the whole issue is that the king doesn't have a son. He needs an heir, mm. and who are we gonna pick for the heir? The king's brother, of course. Once he's like, hey, either you make a son or it's me. And the king is like, either I make a son or my daughter, whichever one is convenient at the moment. And his daughter's left floating there in the middle, like, am I the queen or not? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, it's it's pretty awkward as far as that goes. But it's fun. I do I like see it. why it's tough to be a girl now that you're laying it out like that. But it, there's a, a, my knee jerk reaction was name a time in history when being a beautiful woman was hard. I mean, it depends on your version of hard. I, look, it's never been harder to be pretty than it was to be ugly. I, oh, I guess there's sometimes, but 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 not as a you know a rule. In you know, general, right? like, if you're ugly, it is going to be harder than if you're pretty. Yeah, in general. But, uh, and, and I think there's even a discussion in the episode, one of the episodes where where someone tells the girl. I think Jason Lannister tells her, "Everybody would kill to be you." She's like, "Not if they, not if they could be me." And I'm thinking, like, "You're a pretty." Yes, you rode here on a dragon. <laughs> like, like yeah. you're hanging out with this. The richest man in the world is wooing you right now, and you are telling him to shove it up his ass. And like, like this is your day. 
like it, it, it's a little hard to feel sorry for her that she mm -hmm. can't cement her reign because it seems like being a princess is pretty sick yeah so yeah i'm having a hard time like feeling like there's any like real threat or scary thing in this universe that we can't handle because when the chips are down we're all everybody's a badass that, what about and everybody has a dragon lord of the rings is out now too right i won't watch that one <sighs> Because it doesn't have the Cimarilla Million lore? Oh, no. I'm just racist. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's a bunch of things. It's, it's a not bunch Little of Mermaid. It's... It, it doesn't look good to me. I have no problem with the Mermaid. I'll probably it's... watch Little Mermaid. No, I, I have I a bigger like... issue with the Mermaid. I don't know. Like, if Winnie the Pooh came back as a brown bear, I'd be like, he had a very distinctive look. It was part well, of the Smokey whole thing. That's Smokey the Bear's... <laughs> you know, yeah, you start corning in on the the fire business, then I'm gonna call foul. That's a I don't that's a know. yellow man taking a brown man's job. If fucking Kevin Spacey played Muhammad Ali, I'd be like, no, we have to uh, pay some sort of homage as to what this character is supposed to look like. Mel Gibson's gonna play Martin Luther King next year. You saw that, right? <laughs> right? I did see that. Yeah. Uh, look, I, look I, I I don't mind there being black dwarves and 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 like fantasy yeah, me characters too. Me too. in there. Yeah. But what's weirder is when there's only one. Like, are we to you're believe right, that it's just one guy and the entire Hobbit Shire is like, you're like, why'd you just throw one guy in? Like, he doesn't have a family. There's nobody else. It's just because like in reality, if he were truly this aberration, this dark elf, everyone be, would would in a non-offensive way be like, tell me, sir, what land do you come from where there's dark as ebony? <laughs> like, 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 they would just be curious, right? And he'd be like, ah. Yeah. I come from the dark aisles of the West Side. <laughs> like, like he would. It's all my, all my folk are dark of skin. Like I'd love that. If you told me that, I'd be like, cool. But when there's just one random black dwarf like hanging out or something, I'm just like, where's his people? Did they like rescue him from? Like, like or were the black elves and the white dwarves at, at war with one another, and then they rescued a black one? I, like, tell me the story. Because I do notice that that person's skin is darker than everyone else's, and they live under the fucking ground. Yeah, I guess something about the... The mermaid should be green anyway. Yeah. I I don't know why she should be green. I don't care what color she should be green. For some reason. Because it's all... Saying she's a fish. Her, algae, her bottom she's half just algae. algae. She should have some of those weird little critters attached to her, like naval area, <laughs> like, like the like lamp, lamprey eels on her. Yeah, like STD, like 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 little group. The real things mermaid is her. Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. I need me some like octopus centric man. You know, remember in like, the lighthouse hmm. that were that uh, that 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 mermaid that he was fucking with that weird. Uh, that, that, that that's a great movie. No, I guess I just the lighthouse. I, I watched time, the last five minutes of that movie yeah. by accident. Oh, you should we should watch the first ninety five or whatever came before. I know it's fan. I know it's really really good. It's I pretty just, wild. Not, it's, it's not my type of movie. I'm sorry. The four by three black and white. It's just it's, it's good, not for everybody. But it's I'll not say for this: me. if you want like a weird, like find the best scene of it, it's Willem Dafoe going on this soliloquy, this rant where where like he's like drunk and mad and like the and Robert Pattinson's kind of sitting down looking up at him while he paces back and forth and he, he's just I can't duplicate it, but it's like a sea shanty mixed with a rant that's just unhinged about crazy shit. And it's really fucking good. I like the movie, but it being four by three in black and white is it takes a minute to get buckled into that. Yeah. Why would they make that decision? Artistic, why, why? You know, it's like an artistic decision. I don't get mad at when people do different aspect ratios or frame rates, right? Like it didn't, they shoot, uh the hobbit, hobbit and like 30 48 and, yeah 48, 48 instead of 24 like and like yeah that did look jarring right the cinematic fps and stuff but like I, I don't care that much it's not it's not a big deal um but that specifically it just makes it a little bit harder for me to get into it because it's like actively taking it's not an enhancement quality it's a purposeful like degradation of the film that you're shooting yeah. it on yeah I yeah hmm. oh but um what was I going to say other than, oh, I won't watch Lord of the Rings, though. I just won't. Um, I don't think it's going to be very good. Like, the fan reception seems bad. It seems like it's a story about, I, I keep seeing the black dwarf queen and an angry black woman. Her face is always, like, real mean in the camera. Does the they, queen I, have a beard? No, um, not really. No. And then and then I keep seeing, like, Gladriel all mean-faced all the time. And it's like, it just seems like it's about a bunch of angry women 
and and then there's that one little munchkin faced guy and uh, and so i guess i'm just not interested in what they're selling and the fan reception seems to be mixed at best so i'm really hoping they fail that'd be cool they <sighs> spent all that money i'm watching stranger things i'm on season two right now and i heard season three was good so we'll get there okay so I watched season one like when it mm-hmm. came out, and then I got arrested. So I didn't. I I felt like weed was a key component to that show being amazing because I was blown away by season one. It truly is some of the best TV there's ever been. Season one of Game of Thrones, uh, Stranger Things. Okay, but then I heard about how bad two was. I heard it was real bad, and then um, uh, I watched the uh, like the last episode recently, season of season four, because it was just on in the room. And it this looked like is was, Stranger Things is up yeah, to four now. Yeah, like, oh, okay. yeah. Um, and so I tried not to like pay too much attention, but just glancing at it, it looked really fucking cool, like crazy special effects and stuff. Maybe it's four and... that's good. Like I heard it got good. I heard better. I heard four better is calls. good. Yeah, I heard two is bad. I heard two was bad. Also, we're just whatever one or two episodes in now, so I can't say. I want to ask uh, some MMA questions. So mm. the um. Oliveira is about to lose his title, right? He's about to face that um, Islam fellow, Khabib. So, in a way, he Andrew. already lost his title because he lost, he missed weight. True, but let's pretend like that's not because the ESPN likes to. Because he won the fight. Okay, sure. Yeah, um, I, I mean, he's not walking away with the belt. The other man is when they when they fight on sat- Saturday or whenever it is. I, so I was one of those people who believed that Charles Oliveira. Oliveira? was um kind of only champ because Khabib left. Like, you know, he won the vacant belt and was one of the weaker record champs to have. Yeah. And then he just starts kicking ass. And every time I'm like, well, now he's going to go against a real fighter like Gaethje wins. Now he's going to go against a real fighter like Poirier wins, beats him too. And it's like, well, fuck. And he chokes somebody else out too. Uh, he, he's he been, yeah. he takes so much damage when he fights. Like he, get, he gets knocked down by punches in every one of those fights. And then he gets back up and knocks them down and either TKOs them or chokes them the fuck out. And it's like, this is such a reckless style that a guy like Islam, who's going to wrestle fuck him and smash him, it, it just seems so easy for him to beat this guy. I, I don't know what the odds are, what the line is or whatever, but I would happily bet even money if somebody wanted to, that Islam is going to take that belt, like 100% in my yes. opinion. I, don't, I, don't, I just can't imagine it going the other way. How good is his opponent? Because I mix his opponent up with the other dude with the bad mouth, the Chimaya. Yeah, or this is Khabib's boy. This is the one that Khabib has been screaming. Yes. Like, put, like, like, give my guy a chance. Put him in there. Your belt is fake. Get, put him in there. Like, 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 he's been he's been like chanting this guy's name forever. Um, so this We're is his about boy. to find out. When is the fight? It's soon, right? Oh, I get them mixed up sometimes. The multiple cards, but he's twenty two and one. Islam is. It's October twenty second. So. Oh, a month away. Yeah. Uh, not as so soon I, as I thought. Dude, you know the fight I'm looking forward to? Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva. I think Jake it might Paul be. Jake Paul KOs him. Uh, Anderson Silva, I shook that man's hands at a PUBG event when we played together. Such a nice guy, but they felt like, you know, when you just like, you're like, man, I don't know if you got it in you, like the fight in you anymore because you fought so much kind of feel. Uh, but also, Jake, like, I, I don't know. Like it's Have gonna you seen be Jake match. in person? I've seen Jake fight, and I'm like not paid, by the way, of course. But like, is it going to be an interesting fight for sure? But I don't think that it's going to be the I, bastion of good fights in general. No, I was curious if you possibly like met both of them at one I time. Have, and like, I, ha- I have met Jake, but like in 2016. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a lot bigger now. Yeah, I know. I met enough. Logan around the same time, and he was very big. I don't know which one of them is bigger in real life, but Logan is a big, big dude. I think I mean, I'm sure he's bigger now. They're both on fucking steroids and like, like <laughs> working with professional trainers, right? So they're fucking huge. Uh, I think he KOs Anderson. I think Anderson's old and, and way past his prime. And I think that Jake has plenty of power. And Anderson likes to get cute. Like, like he's done it so many times. He's going to get caught eventually. Round after round after round, he's going to get caught. And I feel it, like- it's just as likely that he gets knocked down Three times in a row, and the ref stops it. That could, that mm-hmm. could, that's just as likely. Not, not talking about you necessarily, but people, I think, misunder, misinterpret the way Anderson Silva gets cute. So, here's the score for those of you who don't watch a lot of fighting. He's a counterpuncher. 
right? So what he does is he sits there. He waits for you to throw, which opens up a window for him to, you know, your defense is gone. And he takes advantage of that. He's a counter puncher. He loves to do that. So how does he not look like a boring chump while waiting for you to move, right? How does he make like, I'm in a situation where my style of fighting requires you to throw punches at me. How do I get that to happen? Well, I dance, I fucking mock you. I stand outside your range and I put my hands down. I, I do you know this bullshit. That's how I convince the judges and the audience that I'm not just standing here waiting for you to make mistakes. I despised Anderson Silva throughout. As long as I was a fan, I've always hated Anderson Silva. I've, I've always thought, I can't remember which fight it was, but I just remember knowing that I had wasted money to pay for Anderson Silva to dance. And I think, I think, I think it was the fight where Dana even said it afterwards. He's like, that was horse shit. That was Damian Maya. Maybe it was so bad. And, yeah. and that, that like poisoned him in my mind. And then you had Chael out there like talking so much shit and Chael went out, beat him five fucking rounds in a row and then four. lost. <laughs> oh yeah. That's it happened in the fourth. I thought he went, five. Uh, he won four rounds and lost in the fifth. That's oh, why I argued he only won. Four. Yeah. Chael likes to say he won all five. <laughs> oh, I, 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 he I, lost in the fifth so he didn't win that one okay i, I follow of course of course of course. jail's like this is well he was winning the fifth so he he's like it. listen i won four rounds he won one if i had any idea that had i tapped i would have lost the fight i wouldn't have done that there's just a misunderstanding of the rules Chales just lays it out there like I'm he was up for he was up for what y'all call that i'll tell you what Y'all call that a fight when I, when I go in there and I beat him up for five rounds in a row? The other guy wraps his legs around my neck for 30 seconds and you say he's the winner? I don't think so. I'm the champion. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> no, you just described how you lost. <laughs> <laughs> and then he buys a belt at the gift yeah. store in a yeah. casino and starts carrying it around like the champ. Doesn't give a fuck. Dude, uh, all right. So when I, I we had this substitute teacher when I was in middle school, this mm -hmm. fucking loser. He brought his WWE championship belt to show mm. us because he thought it was cool. And and look, I wasn't the coolest 11-year-old in, sure. in the school or anything, but I knew that this guy was a loser and he would always be a loser and that there were probably no, no one there who was even close to as much of a loser as this guy was because he was trying to impress 12 year olds with his belt he bought off the internet and i still think back on that as like perhaps the most pathetic lamest thing i've ever like, actually seen happen because he was like yeah and it was expensive like i'm like maybe 1200 dollars or something that took to me at that age it was mind-blowing money that you'd that is like, still yeah. mind-blowing money for a wwe it was yeah that's huge I, whatever it was it was expensive and is that the one from 2000? Why are they so ugly, though? Like, <laughs> I don't understand. Every fighting belt, I'm like, gross. Like, That's what are we not, doing here? I remember I his being agree. cooler than that, but uh, maybe it wasn't. But I do remember him bragging about it and all of us being like, See, you bought it? Like, yeah. Like, told us how much. That's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> We're more impressed that you acquired so much money. <laughs> kind of surprised you'd waste it on that, though. Have you right. seen the the modern UFC belt is kind of neat to me. I don't know. It, <laughs> I don't know if Zach can find a picture of the modern UFC belts, but I like it a lot. Every time you beat someone, you get like their flag on your belt. Like you've taken that country too. You beat a Nigerian, you beat an American, you beat a Brazilian, and before long, you've got this like collection of uh, I don't know trophies on your yeah. belt from all the countries you've defeated. There was a on the on the last fight night card. There were two bad cuts. And one of them in particular, you could see um, the artery. Skull. You could oh. see his artery. Um, his his whole forehead area, like right here, is just bl blown up. And you could see the uh, don't show the wound. I was afraid you were about to. It's so <laughs> bad. Um, but you can see like a bluish, like blood artery thing that goes like north to south under this guy's fucking face because his face exploded from a knee. And then um, that Asian guy took a um, an elbow to the eyebrow Ugh. and it, it cut his eyebrow in a way that is you could throw a cigar in the gaping wound gaping the, wound it looks like a one of them won their Those fight so though. bad Ugh. what which one won the fight was it the the black guy or the asian guy i forget they both well they were in different fights 
right like, like separate events but and i we believe both they the both lost to to tko because of the cuts i think the fights got it ended i know the the asian oh. guy like they ended that fight like they stopped that fight i think the black guy was a worse cut because I, he's the one you can see the blood vet, the the artery or whatever it is it's I'm probably so wrong. Nasty. I was under the impression that some guy came back and won even with that cut. Uh, maybe I'm wrong too. I just I, mm. I I didn't watch that fight. I didn't want to watch it because I like I got I think I got in the second round. The the cut happens in the third on the Asian guy, and I was like, wait, what am I doing? I know what's coming. I, <laughs> I don't want to see it. And I just turned it off. I didn't I didn't watch the fight because I'd already seen the cut and it's so bad. It cuts don't bother me a ton. The broken <laughs> leg, like Weidman had and, and created yeah. yeah like uh on either he was on both sides of that that's when rough they step on it when they break their that... leg and then they like put their weight on it because they don't know it's broken yet and then yep. it like it Aww. like folds underneath them I like laffy it. taffy connor yeah. almost did that did connor did. bend he did he, bent. he, he put he a bent. step back and it went like that and then he was like oh yeah and he fell i've seen much first. worse bends like like i think weidman like full-on like laffy yeah. taffy his fucking leg anderson too i think anderson's just bent anyway um, but but yeah, if I remember that it was Laffy Taffy as they were putting it back in place to stand on real nasty break, like full on break, um, disgusting. And then they step on it and, and seeing that, uh, I've seen that in basketball too. And, but the worst I think that I've seen is when people are on that goddamn leg press machine and they get their fucking, uh, knees hyperextended and it folds them in half. Like, Ooh. like every time I accidentally open one of those videos up, I pause it right before I have to like see that again. And it's like stuff like that keeps me off leg press machines. I have no interest in buying one. Shit ain't happening. <laughs> like oh, it's such it makes a me so thing. uncomfortable. To yeah. Think do you do. squat much? Do you, do you do squats? No. Yeah, I squat, but like, I'm not going heavy. I've never put more than maybe 250 pounds on. Like, like I'm not interested I... in, in dancing around with a bunch of weight. It's scary to me. I squat lighter than that. Even at like 135, I, I back pain starts to creep in. I do body oh. weight squats lately. Uh, maybe my where, where does it hurt wrong. your back? Lower center. Oh, uh, okay. I wear a belt um because <laughs> I felt like my, my form wasn't good enough. It's better with it. Okay. And I, I don't know if it is. I wear a belt because I feel like it it keeps me from hurting myself, even if I am like bad form. I throw the mirror on the side so I can like I've recorded myself a lot to like try to like, go back and be like, eh. And uh, I of course use the Titan uh, squat bar, um, which kind of oh. roll, kind of rolls it back further down your back, and kind of, and then you've got the help the, the handles here that you can kind of roll it forward or back Maybe more. Because my problem is, I work really hard to press out through like the center of my feet and my heels. Yeah. Because my natural instinct is to press up through my balls of my feet. And yeah. That implies a bad form, and I I don't know. I, I do them barefoot on a towel. Um, oh. I, I I don't know. I, I saw somebody. Not it's wrong. It's not how I do it. Yeah, I, I watched some YouTube video. I don't know. Um, so I, I do them barefoot. I do um, um, deadlifts barefoot too. And uh, I don't know. It feels good to me. I, I, feel, I, I don't know if it would feel better with shoes. I just do what the man on YouTube tells me to do. But um, yeah, I don't mm. think you need to do them anyway. Your legs are huge. Like, what are you? I, I, we've legs. already said this. Like, 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 this is you're, you're so bad at RPG games that you've maxed out your leg skill, and instead, and, and you're still fucking squatting. Diminishing over returns there. Yeah. instead of like <laughs> that. You should have by now. You should have gotten one of those headgear things to do like neck exercises and build like a big ass like crazy yeah. neck. Like, uh. stop the legs entirely. Like, you <laughs> literally stop. They're huge. They look. I great. haven't missed a. Oh, leg day. Well, I miss it now because of the nose. I'm not supposed to lift anything. But yeah. after I broke my leg, I never skip leg day again. I'm fucking wrapping lead on my cast and just doing leg day because I was no, trying I to would... prevent the atrophy and yeah. Minimize well, that, see, it. that's different. That, that that that's that's a whole different thing. Having having one calf bigger than the other. I don't know what they could do, but I, that jogging would be weird. Like you might be, you might hurt right. your back because your left calf is stronger than your right calf. It'll bounce back. I went to the oh, uh, yeah, sure. orthopedic surgeon yesterday for the leg. Yeah. And um, mixed news, really. Like he's like, all right, Woody, here's what we got. Uh, the soft tissue stuff coming back fine. Looks good. Your range of motion looks good. Your strength looks good. Your muscles look good. It's cool. Still hurts a little bit, but like minor and no more than it's supposed to. So soft tissue, cool. The broken bone hasn't moved at all that implies to me that the thing is healing there's fibrous tissue whatever but the x-ray this shit still looks broken he's like i was sort of hoping it would be like you'd see gray on the x-ray where it's filling in and mineralizing yeah and he's like not much 
And I'm like, let me see. Show me the x-ray from four weeks ago. Dr. Woody's going to take a look at this thing himself. Perhaps for... a trained eye would yeah, be beneficial I... to the case. Maybe you're not looking carefully enough. So so <laughs> sure enough, we put the two next to each other, and it's like, fuck. It... If I didn't know it, I'd say they were the same picture. I didn't so see any time. More more milk. Yeah, so I asked him. I'm like, it down. I put it specifically. I'm like, when can I start doing cool shit again? Like, I want to ride my dirt bike. I want to jump shit. Like, I want to make bad decisions. And uh, he's like, well, there's two things we're looking for. One, these are your PT exercises. When you do them pain-free, that's a positive indicator. Mm -hmm. And like four weeks more on this bone healing. So okay. that's kind of what we're looking at. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever ask them? I always ask my doctor this. I'll be like, okay, okay. Are there any like experimental or dangerous options that like... Like, let's say I had to go stop an asteroid from hitting Earth this H weekend, and we needed to, like, knock this right out. What will we do then? Like, I That's, always uh, ask that. I throw that hypothetical out there, and they'll be like, well, if it were an asteroid, <laughs> like, yeah, like six miles wide, like, an, like a planet killer. And I'm oh, the well, we'd want to hit you up with some anti-inflammatories right away. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's get those coming. How much are those? Oh, like $65. Oh no! I better take two then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I like where your head is. I'm not sure my doctor's cool enough for this line of questioning. Yeah, but, he uh, won't yuck it up and riff with you or anything. It won't be funny, but he'll he might give you some better drugs. Yeah, I I mean he did stress that I take fish oil and vitamin D, not calcium. That's the one I would have guessed, but yeah. those were the things that were important to him. So I do, but I didn't ask him like you did. I wish I had. You know. Yeah, I bet I bet Derek's probably got a doctor who. Got all sorts of fucking like beakers bubbling away with something that made, <laughs> your bones would grow back. So, you'd have negroid bones. That's what <laughs> that. What, that's not, no. That's what it says on my chart. I've got a I, when I when I get okay. scanned when I get scanned. They've got a they, they got Caucasian and negroid written at the top of the chart because because there's a different bone density standard for 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 the two, and uh, and, and and my bone density goes into the negroid ranges. I'm That's, very proud yeah. of that. Yeah, it increased I, I over time. It went up by like a significant amount. T increases your bone density, yeah. right? And, and you had T. And it's it's racist to hear, but somehow not racist because it's factual. But the normal T levels for black men are higher than white men, which are higher still than Asian men. Mm -hmm. This is just average T levels. If you, if you look into this, you'll see that that's true. Yeah. And it's I, I don't, everything makes me feel racist when I'm like, yeah. That, that kind of tracks, doesn't it? Are you shocked to hear that the ranking goes black, white, or Asian? Is it, is of it, if testosterone you think of it like, is it, if you just think of it as an athletic performance enhancer, like, like maybe is it even fair anymore? Should we separate maybe, <laughs> maybe? I'm not sure how you would do that though. Mm. Mm. Keep make them it, equal, of to course. To make it fair. Separate but equal. Yeah. We're on to something. <laughs> that's got a ring to it right <laughs> i've heard that before somewhere yeah i mean it, what could be no. more fair i i think what 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 i'm looking forward to is tucker the, pretending to have audio just, issues just what? <laughs> are you, what are you guys talking about uh, <laughs> uh, i think uh i think a lot of uh uh sports stars are on steroids i think there's a ton of like design you're insane if use. you're not you're insane literally the 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 question of which steroid is better because you know there's there's limitations to what you're allowed actually the real question is like um here's what we are testing for do anything else but that and like you'll catch every now and then you'll hear somebody like oh i tested positive for this one thing and i was getting ringworm like uh steroids or what whatever and it's like no like when you when you don't care but like Right. When you watch Dude, we talk about a this? thing that lowers your estrogen level so you don't get man boobs. Yeah. That has nothing to do with ringworm. Yeah, and it's like, okay. But when you when you listen to Derek talk about this, like like there are it's not even like trying to find a needle in a haystack. It's like needing to find a needle in a haystack, but thinking you were looking for a fucking cat. It's like it's like you don't they don't know what to look for with some of these things. These got there's so much money involved that these that someone can get together in a in a laboratory and create a new chemical, a new compound that nobody knows about. And they'd be like, look, it's just you and fucking A Rod and like four <laughs> other people. Y'all know each other, right? <laughs> like 
Y'all are the people on, on Compound J, all right? <laughs> Don't fuck this up. <laughs> and I, I mean, you know, yeah. like, 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 I feel like and that's just what happens. Oftentimes, these designer super drugs are not the best ones. Like, oh, like for if, sure not. No. If if they could take anything, they'd take like tea and they, trenbolone or something, right? Something. It, you'd be they'd start get with caught tea. doing that. So they're taking the best drug that passes the test, not the best drug. Yeah, like like um, part of the Icarus thing, um, um, they were using um, these mouth that's Russian, rinses. That's the Russian doping stuff, right? Yeah, that's where they uncovered all the Russian doping stuff. One of the things they were doing so that the compound was in and out of their system, but still giving them like tremendous effects, is they they were using um, something called oxandrolone, um, okay. which has huge strength b- bonuses, healing stuff, um, and no real side effects. Sounds like a perfect steroid, right? So, but, but it's de- pretty, pretty fucking detectable. So, but what they would do is uh, they would have these mouth rinses of, of the stuff. They would gargle it and spit it out. And it's just sublingually in their, in their bloodstream. They get, they get some effects, obviously not as much as if you just popped a pill or swallowed it, but they're getting effects that can't be caught. Right. And and they're getting, they're coming way stronger. They're healing way faster. They're just better. Yeah. You're that's just looking thing, for 1%. That, and that's it was a cocktail. It wasn't just, it wasn't just ex Andrew alone. I'm going to need a hundred percent. No, I well, can't I mean, be competitive. I'm going to need compound V. To- I don't know why you're not already on some juices and sauces, Woody. You're already this like fucking should be. I break like every three weeks, dude. You're 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 already pretty fucking big. You, look, I think you can get bigger, but like there's there are genetic limitations. To my understanding, there's there are these like genetic caps on our RPG characters for how muscular we can be. We just ha- all have different body types, right? You see some guys that are just skinny for life. Some guys that were just always just, man, he'll get fat if he fucks up for a minute. Like, they're just people who are built different genetically. You're getting close to about as much muscle as you're genetically going to be able to hold. But a testosterone injection is just an override. It's just, <laughs> like, you, you just hear yeah. the, eh, 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 and your body goes, oh, we need a lot more muscle. And somebody goes, <laughs> how much? All of it. And they just like, pull the floodgates, and then your fucking muscle fibers all have two hammers fucking doing crack cocaine and Adderall and they're just making m- as much muscle fiber as they can making you extra fucking strong if you, let's say you bench press for like 220 right now for 15 reps a month good. later so let's go six eight weeks later you would add 30 pounds to that number and do it the same reps easy easy like that's conservative <sighs> And if you really went hardcore, you could make it 50. Like, like no problem. Like, like, not even hardcore. Like, you just treated it seriously. You'd put 50. If you'd like eight more. I just want to be able to lift again. <laughs> the, the That's the other yeah. thing. You won't lose muscle if you don't lift. Now you can just take some time off and, and, and your body's like, whoa, he, why did he build all that muscle? We're, we don't need all that. And it's just like throwing it away. Like, it's just, just shoveling it out the back. It's, it's waste product now. But with some testosterone, your body's like, we'll be hanging on to that. We'll be hanging <laughs> on to that. Let's burn some fat. Because it feels like now, like just as I approach like my PRs, like I was, I hit one PR in like a stupid exercise. I don't know, tricep pushdowns, but I was like sort of getting back after the broken leg, and then the nose comes and I drop for, I don't lift anything for two weeks. You, you would I'll hit all new PRs. Work back it again. It, it, yeah. it would be, it would be, and it'd be interesting because like the way I did it as I started off as like untrained and low T, and for you and for you to start off, your T's probably okay. Or maybe even good. can't be that high. I'm almost fifty. But it can't be that bad. You're like libido is fine, and you're muscular, right? There's mm. there's there's no way to like beat that with hard work ethic. <laughs> you just That's can't. genetics, right there. Yeah, it, it's it's hormones. So like you're 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 okay, but if you were what's the word? super super physiological <laughs> or like bordering <laughs> on it, if you were like capped out for what like a man can and should be, and that right? Was if it was back to like Jesus Christ, you'd, ex- you'd explode so crazy fast. It'd be you'd you'd be buying new equipment in in, in two months. You'd be like, I'm gonna burn right through this equipment. Okay, but the weights, yeah. You'd, you'd you'd be like, I'm gonna need more stuff. I'm, I don't have <laughs> enough. I don't know. I don't have enough shit to lift. <laughs> that sounds outrageous. Maybe dumbbells. My my heaviest dumbbell is 65. Yeah. I could see no, no. It, I mean, it's it's coming at some point. You know, at some point, you're gonna want to like dial that in perfectly to be the, the 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 ideal version of you spiritually and emotionally and all that stuff. So like, why not get a little head start on it? See, I, like I said, my girlfriend's birthday is not for like a month and a half, two months. I'm buying the Xbox tomorrow. Okay, 
now I get to play Xbox for an extra month and a half. Like, like, like <laughs> not losing any points here. Genius. Get your Xbox so started. Smart. Uh, I don't know. I can't wait till we get TRT Woody. I can't wait. <laughs> it's fucking fucking Uber Woody. I can't wait for it, y'all. I hope he doesn't tell any of us, and we just see him start just fucking <laughs> just get, just bulk up. <laughs> <laughs> like we just see him fucking getting those shirts. Like, wait, are those shirts getting smaller? Or are you just getting bigger? Both. <laughs> <laughs> you got a problem with that? <laughs> yeah, I'm all raging. They're all Again. all the shirts are blue and tight. <laughs> Suddenly, I think uh, the fucking tank tops, the stringers are my cup of tea. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. should, mm-hmm. What? What? This is just what guys wear. It's what I wear now. Starting fights at gas stations and shit. Mm. No, I never had any issue with that. Everybody always says that whenever I talk to someone who doesn't. I don't know, know much about it. They, they think that steroids or TRT in general, I guess, is going to make you more aggressive or a piece of shit, really. That's what they mean when they say aggressive is a piece of shit. They don't mean that like... I thought they meant short-tempered. Like, I literally thought that... Yeah, yeah sure. like But, but yeah. short-tempered is a piece of shit to me as well. Like someone okay. who's going to yell at Olive Garden, that's a piece of shit, okay? It's breadsticks and salad, dude. Chill out. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, but, but like if you're yelling at Olive Garden, you're a piece of shit. There's no call for that. So I imagine some guy, you know... I think I, I've talked to people about it. And they're like, oh, don't people like that go into roid rages? And I'm just like, I think before the roid rages, they were already going into regular rages. Yeah. So the answer is, yeah, some the people underlying. do. Yeah. Yeah. It Maybe makes some the other regular drugs ragers into scarier people. <laughs> like, like Derek's videos always make trenbolone seem like insane that it messes right, with different. your head. Guys turn gay. Guys turn aggressive. Guys turn like, like weird psychological. You ever put happen. on so much mass you wanted to suck a cock? <laughs> Try trembling on, bitch. That's like no, really the stories he tells. <laughs> I don't get that one. That one's weird. Making the dudes gay or whatever. I have heard about it like really blowing their hormones out of posi- make them crazy, making people like crazy, crazy. So like that, but that libidos even... go so wild. Like gay is like a thing, and or just like, oh my god, I totally wanted to fuck this fat woman on a bus. My understanding of trenbolone as a compound, I, I've watched a lot of those YouTube videos. Maybe I'm getting things mixed up here, but it is that it was never meant for humans. That it is a horse steroid. Mm-hmm. That and the only way people are getting it is are one of the ways is by taking the pellets that they normally inject into into horses. These time released horse steroid pellets, and like I don't know doing something to them to make an injectable compound that they are then injecting into themselves via, you know, a fucking syringe. Maybe also like people are just good enough chemists that they don't need that pellet to begin with. And they're just cooking it up. I don't know, but that's where it came from. I'm almost positive. I think it's a fucking horse steroid. Not only that, hey, a, one that's meant to be like a time released. Let's like, not get crazy. Injectable. That's what they said about ketamine. And you know, that's, that's now Woody's on it. And, you know, do you know this about Woody? Woody's on, Woody's going, uh, Woody's on the ketamine now. Yeah, what, nice. What what is like a going on like fucking weekend bang trips on his new motorcycle? Going, <laughs> yeah, and like, just like going into a ketamine? K-hole. He's just like clutching the blanket for 40 minutes at a time. <gasps> Dude, no. K-hole's a pretty good. T- I, I I've tried a couple drugs now. K-hole's got to be my favorite. You are that is a very interesting uh that is a very interesting take because it is for very much a hit or miss for almost everybody that that does it. I didn't expect to hear that. Like, what would be a people's negative experience? I think that mo- the vast majority of people who who recreationally try ketamine, the only people that take ketamine regularly don't have a problem with being in a K-hole sometimes because that's just the natural progression of that drug. Um, the people that accidentally try ketamine or do ketamine or end up in a K-hole, stop doing ketamine. They that is the It's like being in sleep paralysis prison. Like, why? It's like, to me... Yeah, by nightmare. the way, Woody, what we mean by K-hole is like a bad experience where, where you're like having no, no when you're no. K'd out when you're K'd out and you're just like yeah. you're you're we're not talking you're feeling wiggly. We're like you're incapable of functioning as a human because you're sitting oh, there. Maybe you want that lost. Though. It's like uh yeah. If you have an experience, that's that, kind of pretty fun. I'm not gonna yeah. say lost, but like you're uh it's just, it's like I don't know. Just the uh I in my head, I a lot of times run into people who are you know, in the midst of their ketamine journey at a, you know, warehouse party at a club or someplace like that. And they are you know tucked away now, in the right? corner. 
that they like yeah. they they just prescribe it. I was blown away when Woody was like, "So I ordered some ketamine last week and got fucked." I was like, "Wait, <laughs> what? Where are these people?" Like you said at a warehouse party, and that was the part that like here's Boy. my ketamine experience. I'm in a bed. It's a happy place. I've got my scented candles going. I've got the binaural music. It goes goes clickety click. You'd probably like it. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, usually, there's some like motivational, thought provoking speech during the first seven minutes. You're most right. lucid, sort of entering the K hole part. And I have a weighted blanket on me. And then I just like go for the ride. How much ketamine are you taking? I. Uh, 400 i think is it is are we f- to you? 400 grams yeah i could look at it it's in the i other mean 400 room. i mean 400 milligrams so 0.4 grams i guess so yeah i mean i mean like i i mean is you, that yes, a little bit to you or i don't lot? i don't I, you know i'm gonna be oh, honest okay. the only time i've ever seen ketamine was not weighed in anything specific outside of uh-huh. in the bag but like i mean yeah like you're using it the way that people are prescribing it in a medical situation that has a lot of positives mm-hmm. but just like you know you you're doing it that way it's like saying like you can take some shrooms and have a positive effect but if you do there is a amount of shrooms you will take where you are lost in the sauce and that is the same with ketamine you may not be taking enough to get there or maybe you are and your experience is very nice um and there are some people that love it as well i'm not trying to yeah, say that, that you're weird that for k-hole this, but... you describe where you're like incapable of fun i'm like this with my hands like crisscross yeah. on my chest and the weighted blanket you, uh, yeah, and i you're feel in a space like i'm like that flying in clouds oh, yeah and, and i just go with it like everything yeah. is happy yeah. and i remind myself that like shoot the difference between of. yeah like your marriage is good you have no debt everything is fine let's sort out like you know like th- these are the thoughts let's that fly. Through my head. <laughs> let's yeah fly. let's yeah. fly you know and it's like all right oh, now man, I'm on a cool. slippery yeah. well lubricated ride i said i was going to do it but uh, I, I just drug my feet. I did Google, and there, there's a place that does like the drips near me. But I, I want like, I just want to like be able to administer. I want to be at home. I don't want to go somewhere and do an IV thing. I want to be at home, like in a comfortable chair, uh, yeah. watching like, I don't know, Nightmare on Elm, Elm Street or something, and 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 get going. <laughs> I don't know about that risky. one. Gonna... Mandy, right? that one. Oh, Mandy. Yeah. Dude, I, I wish I could get you the audio track I listened to. It would be boring, I think, without. I think it's some Guns and Roses. But the the opening like speech that comes to it, like about how yeah. people use their time effectively mm-hmm. and what the meaning of life is, like just sets the rest of the K hole in the right direction. That just yeah. seems a little heavier than I want to like get into it's, on uh, Tuesday it, night. It is a it is a uh, <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I think just like everything, you can administer a little bit or a lot. And I think ketamine to me is a lot like. You know, you can have a, a light marijuana experience or you can do dabs and ketamine turns to dabs very quickly. And uh, you have to really take care like Woody is to set up a good environment. I also don't like the drug, so I'm not a good person. But I have a lot of friends that recreationally have you like or do. Uh, yeah, love it. It's my favorite. Love that. Uh, but like, yeah, but, me but too. like, yeah. So but like understanding that uh, ketamine is a whole different beast. So it's I mean. But it's also very proven to be good, dude. It's so difficult to describe the effects of drugs. Like you're like, oh, I like I like acid, but ketamine's a whole different beast. And if I'm listening, I'm like, what's Ow. it like? You uh, know, it, and to me, know, it, I'm in a happy place. I feel really like there's some joy involved. I feel like none of my thoughts are encumbered by second guessing. That they're all could, great ideas. Could you enjoy this drug? when you're not alone though because because that's what i want i want a drug that i can i can have fun whether i'm alone or not and and with acid it's like i'm so giggly Mm -hmm. that like it's that it's that it's that laughter that feels really good when like when it's like inappropriate to laugh like at a funeral or in court or something but you've got that like giggly laugh like that it's that like you're already on the verge of cracking up Mm -hmm. so that all somebody has to do is like make a silly face or like remind you of a thing, or they'll often be like a running joke when you got a bunch of guys hanging out or something, and then they'll just be like, "At least he didn't shit his pants," and then you'll just like lose your shit and like 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 actually just start laughing so hard. I that's my favorite part about acid was that was my funny. mushroom experience. I, I've told the story so many times. One of my friends brought a lousy camp chair by the campfire, and we just couldn't get over it. It, it was mm-hmm. this tall. It was it was eight <laughs> inches tall and and like you know six by six inches to sit on, and we just mocked that chair for being inferior to ours all night long. Everyone had a blast about it. 
sober us would not have found it that funny. No. But like you said, it's that just such a good time. Everyone was enjoying each other's company. That was my mushroom experience. My ketamine experience is more of a solitary journey of joy and introspection in a positive way. Okay. That sounds interesting, but not what I like. I really like something that's I love acid that that it just being so giggly. And I like seeing something I mm-hmm. everybody just always made drug like cartoons made like marijuana and like alcohol always seem like you're going to see pink elephants and shit. And, and, and every time I would like do one of these things, I, I'd be so underwhelmed until I took a whole bunch of acid and I actually saw some shit wiggle. Yeah. And, and you're like, like, wow, finally. it's like it's like the it's like a cartoon. That's a thing. Even about then, it's ketamine. not like a cartoon. It's just like, all right, like, all right. That is there, ketamine but now it's will not underwhelm you. You will absolutely feel like waves of motion and pulsation, and like mm. you're flying on a magic. Ooh, I got carpet. a new one for you. If, and if, if, it won't disappoint. Carry on. Have you considered doing a sensory deprivation tank in conjunction? <laughs> oh my god! That'd in conjunction, fun. that's the, I'm a little scared to mix them, but I hear you're. I want to. Uh, I want to do so. I think I watched a YouTube video about the guy who invented acid, and that's what he was doing. He was taking huge doses and going into a sensory deprivation tank. Um, I wanted to go go there last time I was in um, out there with the Taylor, the Super Bowl party when I was a Taylor. I was uh-huh. like, dude, let's just take a bunch of edibles and get in there. And he was just completely against it. And so we never went. Nobody wanted to do it but me. But like, I would love to do that. They're cheap. Like it's 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 I don't know, fifty dollars or something like that for an hour. I'd want to be in there for at least an hour. But you just completely floating, no in, in that salt water, completely blacked out with the earmuffs on. I'm sure you could throw some music in if you wanted to and just go. That would That's, be wild. The ketamine trip is about an hour long. And then after that, it's it's toned down a ton. Yeah. And I find that to be the right length. So it's not like you want to drive Oof. after an hour. Yeah. But there's a great hour and then an hour of like, eh, I should hold the handrail when I go down the stairs. Yeah, acid is definitely one where you're like, you're buckling in for the rest of tonight, all and 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 that means till morning. Like like this is twelve hours that we're not going to be right, uh, uh, and and then we're going to go want to well, go to sleep well after that. So yep. okay, we're all done with our day. Like oh, you need to go somewhere? Oh, no, no, nope, not anymore. <laughs> you're getting you're everything right delivered, here. and you're hoping nobody asks you a serious question. You might want to turn your phone off, but yep. uh, it's a really good time. It's a really good time. We should wrap. Mm-hmm. Oh. Tucker, anything you want to pimp? Uh, you know, continue. If you guys like music, check out my record label, Night Mode. Um, we just got uh, some music in Counter Strike, and uh, it's been going really well. So, still doing that. Well, that's cool. Thanks. All right, PKA six fourteen.